in the Oregon, it depends how you want to play. If you want to play aggressive, you can take Maru, Yink. Of course, it's not banned, it's Dokkabi, because if some people roam, so you can like call for your team and your open triggers will get in for faster. In my opinion, Ose is so good because she is really good on almost every plant on Oregon. It will be so easier to plant with her shields. If you want to play slow, you can just bring, as usual, the hard witcher like Tamai or Ace. The best pick for me on Oregon would be actually Twitch, because people play a lot Fenrir, Goyo, Mira. I think it's a, a good upgrade to, to deny all that stuff. All equipment you need on Oregon actually has one set of claymores, flashes, smokes, or grenades. Flash are really, really strong. The MPs, you you have to bring them to open the world. You can flash pit, you can flash top white, you can flash close trophy. That's easy, like, except if they have warden, but it's the game. <laughs> the main spawn is actually pretty fast to enter the map. Spawn uh, street, but watch out, a lot of players are spawn peeking, garage, main door, and master door. If you like attack the basement, for me, two guys need to spawn on main and then go through the master bedroom. Two guys spawn from small tower, so they will work together in pair. One will drone for, for, for his teammate. Easiest spawn, I think, would be to spawn small tower to get three people rushing into the green window with someone baiting on the kids to put pressure on the on the vert. The last one could uh, cut white or push Zulu to get the cover from server. Those are my first century chips on Oregon. Hmm. In pack grenade, I'm gonna go for Melus. Um, Rook. In 
une pack, une pack, une pack. Coyo. Euh, non, Coyo, as no more in packs. <rire> ah non, pourri. Euh... Maestro. Oh, Echo. Oui. Echo. Echo. Uh... Let's go. H. Euh... IQ oh. <rire> oh. Nice Let's go Goyo mmh. euh... Doc euh, Fender euh... Melusi <rire> Oh là 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 Let's go No Euh... <rire> 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 IQ Non, IQ est serré de l'heure, maybe... Euh... Sledge <rire> Oh là 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 <rire> J'ai pas de robot là <rire> Warden. Oh là 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 Let's go <rire> Let's go Skies I was playing a lot on Counter-Strike and I was studying in university and they came to us and said maybe you want to try to compete in our first Moscow tournament of Rainbow Six Siege with your Counter-Strike roster. I met a group of people on DayZ who switched over to Siege and were like, you should get Siege, you should get Siege. I was playing only for, for fun at the beginning and then uh, my friend uh, Blaz and he said, hey, I'm being paid. Rainbow Six Siege. I was like, no, you're kidding. He sent me the proof, and I was like, how? And uh, there is the confinement because of the COVID, so I start playing more uh, Rainbow Six as a like the co competitive part, and then uh, I played the French League. I was inspired to play in the top level when I used to watch uh, the Brazilian League back in the days. There was players like Nesk, Gohan, Astro. These guys motivated me to like buy a PC and just like play Siege on PC. There is not one thing that made me became a, a pro player. It's like a, an everything. The atmosphere, the game as well. Like just everything made me, made me feel like I need to be a pro player. I think my big moment before becoming pro was uh, Challenger League. We beat uh, Mkurs and in Challenger League, we beat them like that was a big, big, big opponent. And I was so happy to beat them, like it was really a big, big moment. I wanted so much to be poor at this moment. Uh, I think right now there's a lot of stuff for new players to like training their map knowledge. I think if you want to become a pro these days, you have to watch a lot of VODs, rewatching and rewatching the same VOD, you are gonna understand like how how the meta is being played. Don't be able to like give in so easily. I was in Challenger League for like five seasons, right? Like I failed a lot. Never stop the grinds. Always like uh, watching VODs of pro team, watching your VOD to see your mistakes. Grind the game first of all, get good people around you. Always have a good uh, mentality in a team or work ethic. As long as you have like the determination and the passion to carry on, you should always trust your gut and back yourself in those situations. If I remember correctly, it's uh, Sky who was telling to Jack to run out because he was uh, playing in uh, the second floor of the big tower. He was just baiting them for, for Jack to run out and uh, he could get both of them, but he got only one. And actually now they're f***ed, like they, they lost a breacher. They have to rotate, so now we have like the advantage. We still have the top and stuff, so 
Like we knew that they had like just one, just one breacher, and we knew that like they like they can't open anything. Just like they, they opened the main at the beginning with the the ace, so we knew that they had or like to come on the top or to come like dining. So like that's why we were waiting them. They just pushed with the Osa. The Osa was like kind of like against us since we can't really kill the guy. And I think I I just shook the the one v two. I like I just picked and I should I should not have picked. We choked the map. It's okay. There is like uh, three or uh, three maps remaining. So let's just focus on the next map, and we will talk about it uh, after the match. Mm, like we knew that, like every time on attack, they were like baiting outside with like Brava and stuff like Twitch and stuff like this. So we knew that we just had to wait them and like. We know that we are better in gunfight, so we just wait them and play together, like in cross and stuff like this. Yeah, we wanted to make them waste their time. We knew they love to to take CC control when they push uh, on border, so I just I was just there wasting time, and then we fall back when we get a kill or, or one minute and stuff. Like if we see like one minute, I just drop from T1 like just to waste time. Ah, I got killed like a... Uh... <laughs> 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 the timing. So now they have top, but like we still have C4s. And they have only like 50 minutes, 50 sec. But it's kind of like free for us. Yeah, we just, we just gave them space. I think we, we had uh, like we had the Valkyrie cam like on the I don't know we had, yeah we had the Valkyrie cam I think on like office that's why like we we asked him to flank and that's where like we win the round. Yeah, and one one of the reasons why we are uh, leaving top floor is that I can uh, I can flank with Oryx on the hatches, so it's okay if we let them have top floor control. <laughs> yeah, that was part of the like plan at the beginning. We just ask like we know how they play, we know what to do. Just just do our basic stuff and we will win. Así ahora, Gladius, si es que termina consiguiendo el doblete, ahora son tres, son cuatro con la de Indra, si solamente va a quedar del otro lado Maxi. Consigue el doble, consigue el triple, cuidado con Paxi. No Jugada del sueño. Getting oh. angle is seemingly possible. Citizen. Nice. Citizen looked like he was in trouble. Kino dies to dream. Mowed down, but there's Spoid breaching oh. in. Making no prison. Not again. How does he get it done? What does Spoid have to do to find all these openings? Goodness gracious. And it's a team effort as well. Down to just and high count. It's one, two to go in this retake situation. Daha off of the defuse. Once again, not it, but now dead. Zeta for the Nitrosol. He's going for the counter defuse instead. Could have tried to throw that out. And high count should spot him. Double tap, headshot on the second. Uh, smoke and fire and brimstone and everything else you could possibly throw at him, but he's still in one piece. He's got to be careful about this long angle, though, going back towards the full. Has always looked away. We'll round through. Find Shiko. Finds the second as well. Always is going absolutely nuclear. Vai vir o drop agora. Olha a bala. Consegue deitar. Loira na marcação. Tem jogador dando cover. Loira chega. Triple kill dele. Hornetão no plant. Stay vai marcando. A bala do Loira pega. É 3v1 agora. Recarregando. Stamp é o último jogador vivo. Ele tenta buscar e cai. Ace do Loira pra ganhar o jogo. Here comes the retake from the side of Exo. Now Skies, he's able to win out one engagement. They get the back end of Rykos as well, but Deadshot, oh, he doesn't make the connection. Skies going for the rebuy. They're all lined up, and Alice is piece away from him. Looking for the feet, coming for the single player. Waits, lets the time tick. Bibu's playing this expertly. The second feeds themselves in. The Hashomi fire the four, there's three. 
everybody and welcome back to Blast Star 6 EU League. We're happy for you to join us today because it is one full of action as is always but today is special in a few ways because it is the final one of our group stage and we get to decide our six teams that move on to the playoffs starting tomorrow. The Manchester Major is looming and we're so close to it less than a month until we start off with our event. But hello, welcome to the show. I'm Elosh, your host for today with me on the analyst desk as always. Freshbian are on the show. It. I did, did I did, did pull it. it off. You have to give me credit. Yep. We will give you credit. Well done, Milos. Well done. We Thank know you're a great host. Strong already. start to the day. Welcome back as well. Yeah. Thank you. It's been 374 days since I've been on the UL broadcast. Not that anybody's counting, of course, but I'm back. And it feels, as always, like home. And no home is complete without the entire family. That includes our production team and, of course, you on here. Who's the mom and who's the kid after the two of us then? It doesn't matter. We're all equals in this. All right. Okay, daddy. <laughs> All right, you said it, not me. Anyways, with our hellos out of the way, we need to talk about Manchester because the major is coming up and it is official. The event is sold out. Ladies, gentlemen, enemies, the Manchester major is sold out. I am told that if we pray hard enough, then some people will be able to dig more spaces inside of the arena. I'm... I'm really hoping that it's possible because I know there's some of you out there, whether in the UK or not, that would like to join and just watch all of the teams in their full action. But we're going to have to hope that some spaces are found. But as we know, the event is sold out. It's our first one in the UK also ever since Leicester yeah. in 2016. It's been a long time. The UK community has been, uh, has been begging for a major for a very, very, very long time. We finally got one. And of course, great news, we sell it out. Of course we do. Hopefully our chants are better than, uh, I think that's what everyone's relying on, is that our chanting game for the crowd is going to be better than everybody else's. So, fingers crossed. I think it will be hard to beat that side <laughs> one. Huh? Absolutely. But I think they can be the best out of everybody else. That's for sure. We'll have to see once we get to it. Because we'll be watching some of the best teams in the world, and actually exactly the best teams in the world, let's see the ones that actually already qualified to the event. Because for those that did not watch over the weekend, because they were busy with other stuff, I understand we're here to fill you in because eight have made it so far to Manchester. Three from Brazil, E1, FaZe, and Furia. Three from North American, M80, Beast Coast, and Dark Zero. One from Japan and Scars. And our very own Talon from Korea with Fabian making it to Manchester. How does it feel to go to the UK? 
Well, I'm excited for the team mostly. Uh -huh. uh, for myself personally, I don't care so much. I just want to compete, you know, that's just the way it works. And just being able to go there and show up with a new Korean way of playing, well, it's European way in <laughs> Korea, it's going to be exciting to see what we can actually produce. Very nearly bottled it. I'm about to. <laughs> so close. I'm just going to say, very nearly. You Honestly. must be, like, I could see a few less hairs on your head there, Fabian. I was screaming. If we move through to the other teams, I think there's some interesting teams coming into that. E1 from, you know, Brazil. Yeah, a team that you might not have expected to be going to the major, of upset the, you know, the echelon of Brazil. Beast Coast, by the same token, in North America. Players that were just dropped, discarded yep. from their teams. You know, Gaveni, Gunnar, Hot and Cold have built a super team in NA. Um, and then, and they yeah, look really good. And they look really good as well. Um, you know, alongside a few regular faces, Fury are obviously the world champions for w 7 m roster. Mm -hmm. Scar's top of Japan, you know, forever. And I suppose even in Korea, you know, you won't say it, Fabian, but I think I can say it is that from the, you know, international standpoint, PSG talent qualifying, upsetting D plus and Fear X is a monumental achievement. So this is the only time I'm ever going to say it. Congratulations. Thank you, you did, very much. You did a good job, Fabian. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's surprising that the two big teams were kind of dismantled in, what, two months? So I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> That's why I'm the greatest person in the <laughs> game. Ever so rising. humble, I would say, and plant the blame directly on you, Fresh. But yeah. from our international zones, we want to focus up on EU League because we, of course, have to qualify teams. But first, we have to go through our playoffs. And this fight for playoffs already has BDS locked in at number one. They move forward. We'll talk about that format in just a sec. But Fnatic, G2, and Ents are fighting for those last two spots, Fabian. Yeah. Those three teams are the ones that have a chance. G2 doesn't have anything in their own hands right now. They are complete. They're not even playing today. Absolutely. So their chances are completely in the hands of the other team. Ents, they need to win. Be it in overtime, be it in regulation, does not matter. They just need to get there and get that win. Fnatic, they need one round. That's it. Is it that close? It is that close. They need one round to just get past. And that's if Enz wins their game. So the first one has a lot to say today. It could be done and dusted. And I will say, obviously, you know, we've separated out into three formats here. Mm -hmm. Why is the top two so important? Well, because of the way that our bracket will work as we head into it. We'll of course keep you updated as we go through every single game. But the top two teams, will at minimum have two best of yep. three matches to qualify to the major, and that's also to the major phase two. So you want to be in the playoffs, but you want to be top two ideally. If you're in the playoffs, you've got to play through a best of three before you get to that stage. If you go down to the LCQs, which VP and Wilder already confirmed, and one of Fnatic G2RLs will join them, if you go to the LCQs, you will be basically, and actually it'll be the open qualifier playoffs, then the LCQs. If you qualify through that, You'll be going to the major, but it will be in the phase one of the major yeah. as well. So it's already a big disadvantage. You need to be in the playoffs. So even if you don't make it to the playoffs, there is still a big fight to be had in the open quality yep. and in the LCQs, the last chance qualifiers for the region. But we move on for a schedule for today. Here are the matches. We promise you four best of ones every day. We delivered Ents versus ITB into the breach is up first. Virtus Pro versus Wild is after BDS versus Fnatic, and then finally Secret versus Wolves. Now, some games are worth more than others when it comes to that fight for the playoffs. Fabian, is there one that really shines to you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's going to be the Ents versus Into the Breach game. That's going to be the big one. Mm -hmm. Can Ents do it on the rookie season, bringing in five rookie players, rookie staff, and making playoffs? That would be incredible of a story, especially with how rough of a start of the stage they had. Yep. They look completely lost. And now they stand in a chance to go to the major. Very impressed with the, the upswing from them. The other huge story for me is the game four, which is Secret against Wolves. Now these two are fighting out for top two, but it's also very likely going to be a prequel for a major qualification spot because whoever loses this game is very likely to finish in third. Yep. And then if you finish in third, you'll be obviously seeded to play against the second when we get into the bracket. But if you get that top two, you get two shots at the, at the major, and that's the main thing. And more or less, it will, unless a miracle happens in the ITB game, it will be a straight shootout between those two teams for the top two. So all we're saying is you got to stick around for every single game today, yep. especially that last one. So you, you can't just stop after game number one because every single match has impact, except for one. But we'll get yeah. to that when we do. But that last game that we have will matter as to who gets the second spot because we already know that BDS are locked in as number one in EU. Yes, There's one place you actually don't want to be either. And that is in the fourth or fifth space. Yeah. Because do you know who you to get to play against in your second game if you go fourth or fifth? Oh. A BDS that looks absolutely unstoppable. Yep. So you want to get that third seed. 
or, yep. which sounds funny, you want to get that sixth seed because you will have a much easier way to the major if you do, because BDS, they are just looking insane. So it's it's not an end of a group stage with us without us talking about who's really showing up. And we wanted to make something different out of it, right? Like a show. We wanted to see if we could build the best team right now in EUL just off of this group stage, who would it be? It's, I assume it's a question that everybody gets that kind of is part of the talent crew here mm -hmm. in Rainbow Six. And we want to continue that with four players tomorrow and tease it today with only one. You'll have to excuse us for it, but you'll have to tune in for tomorrow's pre-show to know the whole thing. So you two, if I'm not mistaken, please correct me if I'm wrong, agreed on something. Yes, And we agreed did. on yes. one player because yeah. you both have to choose. So who is it? Yeah, so it's our combined all-star team, I think, you know, is, is what we're going to be. Yep. And we agree, don't we? He's gonna I mean, anything. yeah, you counted it down in the green room and we had the decision. Should we do it again? You can do it again. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Use us. Yeah. Who else? Why? I mean, why why not would be the better question. He's been dominating Europe in a way, in his own way for a very long time. Yeah, sure, Eminem, they didn't really win any tournaments. They made it far. But now when he's come to BDS, it's like, there is something else that's activated within him. It's consistency, first of all. That was something I think he lacked previously. And just now, he just looks like a complete demon. He, what, what is there to stop him? He hits all the shots. He's just doing good on everything that he's doing. Fabian's passed him on the eyeball test. I'm also going to pass him on the statistical test. Absolute freak of nature. He's sitting yeah. basically every single metric that you would track, he's sitting top of them or in the top three, top four. He's literally by far and away the best player in this league. And it's by a distance as well. I, I wanted him for G2 twice. When I was a player and when I was coach. I wanted him for Fresh and Friends as well, but... Yeah, but yeah. Fresh and Friends, unfortunately, is the <laughs> no, same but like, come see, But he yeah. is the most coveted player probably in the world. Yeah. And, you know, if we're being honest with ourselves. There are teams in NA that certainly will have looked at him as well. Oh, for sure. Um, so. All of the European teams have looked at him. Even a French team decided to change to English. Probably or mainly him. because yeah. of him, but also Solo Top as well. It's actually incredible because when you think BDS, you think Shaiko and Yuzus is even a step above that. It is incredible yeah. that the talent that we have here in Europe and we hope to see big improvement of, of course, Manchester. Though, from this point on, we are focused on game number one for today. Into the Breach will be playing a huge, huge game against Ents. And this game has a lot riding on it. We mentioned it a few minutes ago, but there is a possibility for ENDS to make it through, but what is their win condition to make it to playoffs? I mean, they just need to be the team that they are. That's the thing, right? Because we've seen two completely different. It's been sunshine on one side and yeah. the moon on the other. And we need that to not be the case. They need to show up with confidence. And today, nerves might play a part in it because they are these rookies we've spoken about. Yeah, there's of course pressure on it because the stakes are, they need to win. Yep. Yep. Doesn't matter if it's a regulation win or if it is an overtime win, as long as they pick up two points or more, they will make the playoffs. Obviously, you want to pick up three points because you can get closer and higher up the table, but they need to win. Because that's the situation, it creates a lot of pressure yep. for them. It's not a known situation for them. I think, like, as you say, we've seen an inconsistent Ents where at the start of this year, they were good, but towards the back end, uh, start of the year, start of the stage, they were good, but towards the back end, they did struggle a little bit. Sorry. I'm going back. <laughs> the start of the stage, they struggled. And towards the back end of the stage, they really come out of their shell. And they actually started playing really well and picking up results. And if we focus on one player, the, the player that was on your screen for just a moment there live, Skies. Yeah, I picked out Skies because what I want to highlight with him is his performance in the first games where he looked kind of lost. In the first four, four games for the team, but for Sky specifically, the first three, you can see all of his numbers there are just slightly below. Skies was a player we were looking at for many teams to join. We have heard rumors of pretty much every French team to join. Mm -hmm. I even looked for him when I coached G2. If he was a future replacement for one of those players. But he has really come out of his shell. He's just started performing on every single metric, and he has that confidence back. You could see it so clearly that they were lacking imagination and sort of finding them, them their own groove in things. And just now it's looking completely different. But since you both have coached, you've seen players developing from one level to the mm. next. What do you think was this kind of X factor that clicked in Skies? Was it coaching? Was it him kind of finding his groove that he needed to shake it off? What do you think, Fresh? I think there was a lot of people that thought when, especially when he was inside tier two, he called a lot. He was a very aggressive player, but he was also play a very flexible player that would basically play on any role within his team. Ultimately, he was more or less like the super player of tier two. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of people were looking at him. 
Yeah, and I think the biggest reason for them is that they've started going back onto their basics. Mm -hmm. They're playing as a team, they're going aggressive together, and that's all you really need because team play trumps all the depth of strats and all of that stuff. It just does. But both of these teams, in many ways, are kind of under underdogs here in EU. If we're looking at the start of 2024, sorry. Yeah, the both the cheese kick in for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side, it's ITB. Yeah, so on the side of ITB, obviously we've seen a little bit of an underdog story coming in from them. The whole of last year, Fabian, yeah. was utterly crap. Well, it oh, wasn't crap, they, they brought it back at the back end. Painting it nicely. Yeah, um, they, but they've advanced this year. Yeah. They were in a conversation just one week ago, or six days ago when we was on, on Tuesday, on the Tuesday show, where we're talking about them potentially making top two in yeah. that game against Secret. They fell short in that. There's still a world, by the way, where they make top two, and I'll just go through it now. They would have to win 7-0, 7-1, and we'll talk about it if they do that, how they make top two afterwards. But their progression to even be in that conversation, incredible. Yeah, how did they even make it here? Because if we look at the start of stage one, we're just thinking the macro of EOL. Yeah. You wouldn't have imagined ITB are one game away from potentially being second out of groups. I wouldn't have imagined them being close, that close to the second spot. However, I would have imagined them to be a solid mid-table team because yeah. I think that the recruitment of players and also just giving Kenny some time, that Kangaroo Kenny, their coach, give him some time to develop players. He's worked for such a long time in tier two mm -hmm. and he's developed EOL player after EOL player. Now he gets given the reins of a team. He can develop that entire team and he's so good at it. Now it needs to go to that final level. Can they take the absolute next step? Because they've definitely found the basics, both theory-wise, team play-wise, and just gun skill. Can they find the next step is the question. So it's clear that this, is, this ITB is a long-term project. Yeah. Putting Kenny at the helm of it as the coach has helped them get to this level. But what do they need to break that kind of thin layer that is above them against them? Just a little bit of consistency. I think, you know, we've seen inconsistency from ITB. We've actually got a few stats that we'd yep. like to pull up and show you, right. which is that despite the fact that they're sitting in the third position, ITB have got inconsistent stats all over the place. And really here, the graphic that I wanted to show you was they are the best team in the league at entry. 58% at entry by far and away. It's 4% above uh, the next best team. It's high up, but can they convert that into round wins? Well, seemingly no, sixth best team. And their attacking win rate and defensive win rate, there's nothing necessarily statistically wise that you would shout home about. However, they are still getting the job done in yep. terms of results, which shows that there's a lot of substance, there's a lot of potential, but also a lot of inconsistency. Yeah, I mean, all their games are super tight, right? <laughs> Except for BDS and Wild Game, every game that they've played so far this stage has ended on round 12. One game has rounded, ended on round yeah. 11. So it's super, super tight games that they are managing to close out, which is the important part, right? Three points, that's honestly all that matters. But can they find the next step here where they cement themselves as a team? I mean, it's up to them to prove. I think that they have definitely gone above our expectations for them this mm. stage. So honestly, they should be happy with that. But for next stage, they will just keep impressing us, I think. So when games are so close and you have a match that is so tight, yeah. and this one with a lot on the line, maybe the map will have to play a bigger role in it. And let's talk about that in our map ban phase because it is all set. Final decision will be on ends. They'll ban out Skyscraper and leave us with Clubhouse, where it's ITB that start off on defense. Stats-wise, numbers-wise, Yeah, crash this was a play. relatively, I suppose, easy one to predict because both teams have big selections of permabans. It, you know, if we look at ITB, they don't like Cafe, they don't like Oregon. If we look at Ents, they don't like Banks, they don't like Consular, they don't like Skyscraper. So that leaves you with a very small pool of maps to go to. Both teams banned away each other's favorite map, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and that left us either going to Chalet or Clubhouse, which ends banned Chalet quite early on in the veto. So Clubhouse is the middle of the road map that both teams like, and both teams have played twice this stage. Yeah, it would have been rough if ends banned Clubhouse and went on to Skyscraper, just simply for that they need these two points. Mm -hmm. If you get on attack first on Skyscraper and you have a bit of a rough time, yeah. it kind of will fall apart. I mean, it, it will. If you go 5-1 down and then you have to turn it around, that's going to be rough. Clubhouse, I think it was more of a chicken race. Which team would ban Skyscraper last? Yes. And then it ended up being Ants. So let's make it clear for everybody before we go into game. ITB, to make it to second spot, they need to get those three points. So regulation win will give them more space just in case for later games. Whereas Ents on their side need a win either in regulation or in overtime. Those two points will give them clear above G2. And with that said, let's say hello to our casters, our good friends joining us. Hello, 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 XR Troika and Demo, lads, lads, lads. How are we doing today? <laughs> Hello, Milos. It's, uh, it's fantastic to have you back on the broadcast here. Great to be working with you once again. Demo, how are you feeling today? 
No, it's good to see Milos back. Uh, it's, it's not it's the same, same thing. Well, time, well, doesn't it? Did we don't come care on, about man. you. You know what? It's Milos' day. It's Milos' <laughs> day. You've <laughs> had your go for all okay, these weeks. Okay. It's Milos' turn. So give him the credits. His desk. Demo, give him demo. respect. Give it him is, respect. Demo, I, with, with all due respect, it is not my desk. It is our desk. And I think it's time for <laughs> you to get it casted. I cannot wait to get into this matchup. Oli, Demo, take it away, gents. Milos, fresh and Fabian, thank you so much. I nearly went for the fave for the fresh being then, but I mean when they morph himself into one person, like who are we to say anything? It's yeah. easy yeah. to forget yeah. about at that point. Let's hop ourselves into the game then. I think the desk have done a fantastic job at the start of the show in terms of laying out all of the stakes for the evening because every single one of these games tonight demo matters in some way and it might not even be that it matters to the teams that are playing in the game the most because of course we do have g2 who don't play this week so they're going to be watching pretty much every game here eagerly tonight to find out which way they're going to go yeah, that's how it works with, with G2. They just, they, they've they done all they can. So they will remain on 11 points. That's not going to change today. It's just, is everyone else going to be able to overtake them? Maybe fall below. Of course, we know for G2, there is still that possibility that if Ents go in and win their game, which um, is what, what we're seeing now against ITB. But that means G2 have to go through uh, the open quals, which I'll be honest, I don't think really anyone expected. Certainly not me. No, absolutely not. And the open quals are not really anywhere that anybody wants to be. The importance of qualifying straight into phase two of the major really can't be overstated. Um, and obviously that battle starts right here and now. Ents versus Into the Breach. Certainly one of the mo all the games tonight are important, but we're starting off with one of the most important games. No doubt about it. We've got a Maverick and a Ying band coming in. Ents going to remove the Fenrir as well see where this last ban heads onto before we get ourselves stuck straight into clubhouse ah, pretty standard i think with the tobaro ban coming in very strong operator uh just great kit great guns especially whenever you look at every bomb site on clubhouse you know being able to freeze off the hatches to allow your kid to come in or maybe somebody come impact trick them um, obviously, then you look towards the top floor, being able to stall out all of the reinforced walls up there. Yeah, very strong ban. Um, and it, honestly, I'm a bit surprised to see, you know, teams, you know, still ban Maverick, because I said before, I think the last time we cast it, Ollie, Maverick, you know, being able to open up the wall and doing that Maverick trick, it's, it's a lot more dangerous than what it used to be. You know, it's quite easy now. If you know a team's going to go for the Maverick, you just have the C4 lineup, it'll drop right onto his lap and just blow him up. I'm surprised yeah. that teams are still banning it. Definitely with the addition of the, the lineup feature for Defender Gadgets. So we talk primarily about the C4 being used there, but it can be used for, for any throwable Defender Gadget. Um, but of course, getting that accurate C4 toss, um, you know, all you need is a Maverick line and you can you can sneak that C4 right on through it. So it, it is certainly something to bear in mind, but it feeling, uh, feeling like it warrants a ban here. We are just in a, a brief technical pause. I could hear the players leaving the lobby as the final ban had come through. So I guess they were just trying to get the bans done um, and then get one of these players to restart their game or system and get them uh, get them back into the lobby and ready and raring to go. So we haven't seen any action yet. Don't worry, we're not going to miss anything. Um, we haven't started this matchup just as of yet, but there are a couple of things that we need to get right before we head on into it. Obviously, Demo, we've got the bands, we've got the map. We know that we've got Ents going up against Into the Breach here. Ents, for me, a team that certainly have, have warmed up to the season or, or the stage, yeah, yeah. should we say. Um, you know, the start was, was very, I think it was probably a big undertaking for them. You know, let's be honest, this is a team of players that are coming in and it was, it was a bit of an 11th hour team that was sort of put together and put into EU League. And they're going up against, you know, the likes of BDS, G2, you know, all these big names that they've seen and watched over the years. And I think it took them a while to adjust to that. But in recent weeks, they've done all right. Yeah, I mean, look, we knew them as Team Valor. You know, this this up and coming T2 team who was winning all the competitions. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, Ints come in, they get a spot in EUL and they go and pick, you know, obviously they were, it's the best team that you could have probably picked up rather than trying to build, you know, a team out of players who are FAs. 
um, you just went and chose the team. Like, I know for a fact, guys, you know, the guys in the S, they mention it. This guy was a hot topic for a lot of teams. You know, he was really the one that everyone wanted to try and get in next. Um, but Sky's turned him down because he wanted to stick with their side. You know, he wanted to do it with the team. And, you know, they get to the stage. And, they, and yeah, they've really surprised me. You know, I thought Ents, they were really going to struggle just because they don't have the experience. They don't compared to, you know, players and teams that have been cemented in this league for years now. That's going to be such a difficult undertaking, you know, for, for this young side to come in. But no, they've, they've really impressed me. You know, a lot of them obviously have CL experience, but Ollie, we know there's a big jump between CL and EUL. We know that for a fact. So yeah, I've been pleasantly surprised and they, they still have a, a good chance here uh, to try and get them into that top six. Absolutely. And, you know, it doesn't really matter how you play at the start of the stage. It all matters how you finish the stage. Um, and, and that, you know, is, is sort of being demonstrated right here from Ents. Obviously, currently sitting in seventh place. So they're really looking for some points out of the game here tonight. Um, there's there's no danger that they're going to drop down and, and be in and around, you know, the Virtus Pro wild level just due to sheer point differential at the moment. But they have got their eyes on that. Uh, well, it's, it would be a, a, a temporary fourth place spot, um, depending on, of course, how the rest of the games tonight do go. But certainly uh, not one to uh, want to start a, a broadcast with a tech delay. So we do apologize mm -hmm. for that. And I'm sure that these two teams are not, not too pleased about it either. Um, obviously having a warm up scrim prior to this, getting themselves ready and in the right frame of mind to jump on into the server. Um, it can be a little bit frustrating. So uh, I'm sure they're all doing the best to try and uh, keep high spirits. But of course, they can't. I'm not even sure if they can talk at this time demo, which is mental. But the game, because the game hasn't even started, but it I, is, of course, a tech pause. And you I don't can't think really, I've. You can't see anyone talking. I've never seen Oscar speak in my life. <laughs> never once. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that guy just has no emotions. Like, I've been watching him throughout the whole stage. Anytime they went around, you wouldn't think it. You'd just think it was just normal. Uh, look, I want to have a chat about ITB uh, and kind of what has happened for them during this stage. Again, similar to Ents, I think they've surprised me. You know, I know the players. I know who, you know, Kangaroo Kenny went for. It makes sense. Um, but, you know, doing it, it, you know, on the day is a completely different story. Everyone knows that. And if you actually look at the, the statistics for this side, I do feel as though uh, the games that they have won has been down to individuals playing absolutely out of their skin. I think th that that is where you can look at probably Azur and Creed's because if you look at their stats, Azur's on a 1.18, Creed's on a 1.11. Both of those players in the top 10 players of this stage. Then if you look at Kendra and Oscar, both in 0.88 ratings, they are in the bottom 10 players of this stage. So there is a massive gap between the team in terms of who's playing well and who's playing bad. And I think the reason why they're in a position where they can still get top two is because these individuals have really outshined some players who maybe haven't been playing at their best. You know, that's where this team is. It, it, they need to try and, I think, get that consistency where everyone's playing on the same page. Because right now, it does feel as though if Azur and Kreese aren't going to show up, the other three just aren't doing enough in this stage so far for me. And that's, that's really what it comes down to. It has to be that team performance. As you say, if you find a team that's got a big gulf between top and bottom, you know, performing player, you are going to have a team that gets stuck in the middle of the pack. Uh, and, and you kind of get the feeling that that's where ITB could be or, you know, potentially are at the moment, the fourth out of nine teams. So it's uh, it's pretty middle for all uh, all things considered. I think we're going to th throw to a very short break. Um, it seems like we need a bit more time to get this technical pause fixed. Um, so to save us yapping our gums, we are going to cut to a very short break. But as soon as the game is ready, we will be back. Don't go anywhere. Next, Kevin, is new map. A lot of the map is taking control of areas where you need to make burp, like buff, ramp, and sledge. A uh, massive one on Night Haven. Out the hard breachers, so thermite, ace, keep on, uh, so you can open other walls, and then you can choose from whatever place you want to entry from. Yink is really good. If she is not banned, you need to be peeking almost every every map and every point. For defense, a lot of mirror. A lot of Bandit, Cade, Info Denial, so Mute, Mozzie. Solace is a massive one because there is so many corners on that map. I would spawn Helipad. You are very fast into the map. 
I think it's called priority. Four guys will spawn there, and two guys will go to the top floor, and two guys will go outside main, and they work in pairs and clear the room. For me, it's like the best option, so you can refrag each other or you can drone for each other. You don't have many spawn peaks towards helipad, only one window in storage, so it's very easy to go into the map and not die. But kitchen is like, if you have a good kitchen set up, it is difficult to attack. And not many people play it, so it is like one that you can whip out if needed. For me, basement is uh, really good. You can put a lot of roamers above. When attackers waste a lot of time so on top floor, they don't have uh, a lot of drones in the end of the round. They don't have a lot of time to do vertical to clear all the angles. A lot of people like like to extend on like fountain meeting with like reception players to try and deny the entries. They're playing top floor heavy. You can just ignore them and just go directly for the bomb site through like the reception door because if they have a lot of people top floor, that's what they want you to push. So making sure you know where they're extending and how heavy they are in certain positions can really help you base your attack from which area you're going from. Those were my first entry tips for Night Haven. Hopefully they see you well. It's uh, Alemao, the AGL from uh, G2 Esports. Mm, I'm gonna go for G2 entry. I think it's do okay. Uh, to support Flex uh, on Virtus Pro, it's uh, Shepard. Mm, I'm gonna go for ITB entry, it's Noah. Um, the AGL from ITB is Kendo. Uh, the entry for uh, ITB is Creed. Um, IGL from Virtus Pro is, um, say, uh, Dan. The entry for VP is Pasha. Oh, no, no. <laughs> um, the entry from, from VP is uh, Dan. I need to find the IGL now from VP, so. I don't think it's joystick. It's maybe, I think, I, I think it's maybe uh, always. Uh, I would say uh, the agent from, from VP is uh, joystick. Oh, fury. It's not, it's not Shepard, it's Pasha. Yeah. Um, the support flex uh, for G2 is uh, Virtue. And the last one for ITV, I think it's... Uh, wait, wait a second. Kenny is the AGL, Chris the entry. We still have like Noah maybe, but I don't think. Yeah, I'm gonna try it, but I don't think, yeah. I'm not sure. That's correct? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna start with Team Secret. Uh, name contains an A, Savage. Uh, name uh, contains an A with Wolf is uh, the shot. French or British player in, uh, in Wolves. I'm, I'm gonna say Mugli. For French player. Uh, names contain an A for Hans uh, Jax. Me. <laughs> Mais Jax, you lose, man. Coach uh, from Hans. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> you lose. I'm so stupid. everybody welcome back thank you so much for bearing with us during that short break we were just getting the players back into the lobby ready to get underway with game one tonight here in our final play day can you believe it's the final play day demo of eul stage one i can because i knew this was scheduled to be the final play day whenever they, they announced the dates so no <laughs> whenever I'm whenever they asked you to work the final play day you, you I, thought i, I, knew, actually, I, I knew it was it this now. day yeah, yeah. <laughs> it still feels like it's come around fairly quick yeah, well, I think whenever you go through you know, two play days every week, it's, it's pretty quick, isn't it? You know, four Get weeks in the it. making, and, and that's it, yeah. But uh, here we are, Manchester, around the corner. We will be, of course, sending teams through uh, in the in the coming weeks, of course, all to see who will be representing Europe over there. We know already America, they've, they've got their three teams already locked in. Brazil as well. Japan, Korea. It's all starting to come together. It really is. Our game has come together now. I'm going to be kicking things off. Round one down in Church and Arsenal. We've got Ents versus Into the Breach. There's two teams tonight fighting both for clean 3-0 wins. Five seconds to go. 
and there's even more that we could look into as well when we start thinking about round differential and all of that sort of good stuff so we're expecting to see some very clean siege here tonight i mean not that we don't expect to see that every night but i think we can be uh we can almost be a, a touch more critical tonight demo of the teams that we have got playing and uh, and see just how they want to try and face up to the challenge that is ahead of them quite an extended roam here from into the breach kicking things off considering that this is a basement defense they are going to start to chew through some of that attacking utility right from the get-go forcing the ace to open up that wall into cctv yeah and this is something itv have shown on clubhouse they, they, they like a roam they're not afraid to go out there and see if they can combat against the attackers waste some utility but more importantly waste time you know timing of course is the is the big factor the attackers always need to work against is the best trend for the defense the worst nightmare for the attackers sometimes as they're having a couple of issues there with the drone now he will sort of get pressured in towards that construction but now it's just friends it's just go through the motions do your basics try all to get the drone work done but have they drone noah i don't think they have all and it's gonna be a freebie for him look at noah's patience there as well he waits until the perfect moment wasn't going to leave anything to chance there immediately can hop himself over the balcony and start to think about getting back to sight but look at the maze that has been set up for him down here he's had kenny there with the kiba barriers and noah he's framing up for another here he might just not get the line of sight there i got baited i must admit the x-ray vision it is going to be a player that's just outside but He's still going to get a chance here. And look at the patience showing through once again. Gets a good couple of points of damage in. Almost lands the finishing blow. Somebody shut him down. He's getting away with murder up here. Oh, they think he's in lounge, but they don't know that Noah has already taken the rotate. Azox, is he ready for it? No, he's not. And Noah, how is he going unchecked? How are they allowing him to do this? I just don't know where the drone work is from Ents. And look, they're just trying to walk into sight. How's this going to work? ITB still have everything up in the middle of the bomb site. Hatch is shut. That's an easy one to get the kills onto that diffuser carrier. Another one joins him as well. And Jack's all by himself. Ents, they've just decided to ignore the roam game and just try and walk into sight. And they've been punished for it. We nearly saw a razor bloom kill there as well from the thorn. It's not often that you get one of those coming out. Jack's moved over from the kitchen window and he's going to try and challenge onto kitchen corridor but it's noah it has been a noah round through and through it would only be fitting that he finds the final kill and there it is he picked up three kills in that round and barely got shot at every single one was beautiful his timing he was the perfect rat play of round and it just made an absolute mockery of the drone work from ends just a poor round from Ents. It really is. And it almost seemed as though they just completely lost their heads and, and just tried to rush into sight. Yeah, you know, I don't know if we're watching the Siege or Game of Thrones, Ollie. Defenders, protect your bombs well, from being I mean, by attack. Exactly. It, it, who dares wins, isn't it? I was more referring to everyone's losing their heads. Oh, everyone also <laughs> lost their heads. But also, who dares wins? I mean, there was a, there was a few headshots. That wasn't a headshot. Was this a headshot? I think it was. No, that wasn't a headshot either. Okay, Jack's got one. <laughs> the final one was as well, but it was the timing for me from Noah. You know, when you dealt when when you when you're given the task of clearing out the top floor of Clubhouse when you're attacking onto the basement, you've got options. Option number one, clear the roam. Get drones set up, get some pre-place, and start to dismantle that roam and, and maintain the flanks. We didn't even have a flank drone at the top of red stairs there from Ents. And there was already people dead. There was nobody watching the flank coming back up red. Either they didn't expect it or there just wasn't somebody in a position to put a drone there. I don't know what it was. But you've got you've got to do a little bit better than that. You know, if you do get torn apart, the advantage of, of an attacker of losing a few bodies is you've got people to watch drones. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like there was nobody from Ents that was able to do that or no drones in position to be watched at least. And it certainly did cost them. Yeah. See now how this next round plays out, of course. As, you know, Ents are hoping to see if they can just completely scratch off that first round because it was a poorly played round and see if they can focus on getting this round over the board. But that's not a good start, Noah. Oh, we've just we've just there talked about him the, the entire match it looks like Ollie, because he's done a, another great bit of play there with the bandit stopping those selma charges going off 
in goes the Flores drone to remove them, even though they do have the Thatcher, but just to make sure that he's not banned at tricking. And finally, they will get the wall open. But at what cost? You know, they've wasted now a decent amount of utility. You struck your banned the charges that really it shouldn't have been that. A couple of Flores drones, a Selma, two Thatchers. It's a lot. Selmas. And look at Noah. No one's oh gonna find Lord. himself. Another here. He's not slowing down at all. That C4 is surely gonna hit. No, a little bit too shallow. And Rykos eventually shuts Noah down. Naku in a great spot here. Other oh. excuse you. What a fantastic shot he's been able to pick. And not only that, he's got himself back to sight as well. Make that rotation almost under the nose of Skies right there. And look at the issue now for Entz. How are they going to deal with these mirror windows? What do they actually have? Oh, they have nothing. They, they have nothing whatsoever. Skies is going to have to use his last drone to open up the Lodgy hatch. And they had a buck on the board. They had a think on the board that could open up hatches. Everything is just going wrong right now for Mintz. They're just not doing their basics right. And it's Clubhouse we're talking about here. If there's a map to get the basics right on, it certainly is Club. Jax. Gonna get his drone into logistics here. Look at Oscar's position though. Big disadvantage here when you're short on time and man count as an attacker. You can't always think and go to deal with the guy that's down below. And in this instance, it's gonna be Oscar. He's gonna be locked into the Helos device there on Solace. Couple of kills will come through though. That C4 really needs to do something, but no gets shot out midair. And Kenny eventually goes for the swing. It leaves a heck of a lot to do for Oscar, and this plant is going down on a solid surface. He's looking to make that rotation up these main stairs. We're going to fluff the shot there onto Rykos. Hence, things weren't looking favorable for them at all, but they've done a really good job of salvaging that round. I mean, ITB have just gave that round away to them. I have no idea in what universe you allow Ents just to do that. Why are they all individually peeking one by one and giving just these free kills to Ents? The Azami should just be playing passive and flag, waiting for his teammate to then get hit in closet, and then he swings off his contact. Why is he already showing himself in a position where he can't get refragged? I, I don't understand what, what Azur was doing there. Oscar didn't have an impact or anything like that. I don't know if he needed to be downstairs. If they just played the men on site and just reinforced each other, oh, I think they probably would have won that a lot easier. Round three we go. ITB choosing to switch sides. Not fancy in the gym defense again. They're going to stick to a rotation and take us to CCTV. Keep us secured. That's yeah, one of the exciting things true. about this Ents roster is that, you know, they do make a few mistakes. A lot of the, a lot of teams do, you know, it's it, it's part and parcel of playing Siege. A lot of the mistakes that teams make are often forced errors, you know, from your opponent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. nice to see them yeah. be able to, mm. to clutch it out when it matters. You know, it's, yeah, it's not ideal opening the hatch with the Flores drone, but if that's what you've got, that's what you've got to do. And, and they made a really good job of that round with the tools that they had left. Let's see if they can try and chain that into something here. They're going to be bringing the Monty to try and assist clearing out this garage hold. It's going to be Azza up there at the moment. The bottom of garage isn't fully reinforced though. And that's a bit of a problem. I mean, it's something that we actually see a lot more common these days, Ollie, is where... Teams will rather use those reinforcements to try and reinforce, you know, construction side, for example, because really that those bottom garage walls, it doesn't give you all too much that you wouldn't already have had before as an attacker. Um, you know, it just gives you a way in, but usually that's kind of checked by, uh, look at the position that Kenny's in right now, just playing right beside the single window. It can check that walk in, you know, very easily. Um, so it doesn't give a whole lot away to the attacker. I think teams would much rather have that kind of reinforcement over towards bedroom side and try and have a bit more of a foothold over there. But uh, they will get the wall opened eventually after some issues there dealing with the bandit to certainly band that has been a, a bit of an issue for us, but it's good to see that this round they have had no issues with it whatsoever. And that priority of getting that main breach open um, has done its job. It now creates that divide. The players in garage, they're locked away from the rest of their team. And this is where the Monty can have a field day. There's nowhere to go. You're gonna have a Monty just pressuring them from the other angle. How will the defense uh, go against this? As they're just trying to get a line up there, you can't see it in the spectator, but we know that he's making good use of that. Gets a good couple of points of damage in there. Sky's gonna kick things off. 
Monty is just able to sneak by that keeper barricade and it's almost a deadlock right now. We see the Toxic Babe canister coming in there as well and all it's going to do is burn the time but there's also the Capital Fireball. How is Azza still alive? Takes the Monty out but immediately traded out by Nakey but Creed's he's on the roam inside a bar. He's able to get a great shot through stock wall there and possibly rotate himself back to site as well. Sky's now left to try and pick up the pieces inside of the garage and will be able to take that control. He does have the diffuser, so Entz could look to start to try and get a plant down here. Oh, the only issue is, is they may be forced into having to jump through the single window, but no, he does have an extra vermic, so he can open up that garage wall and allow him to walk through and into that plant spot, like you mentioned, but oh, maybe a jump up could come in from Creed's here. He is positioned towards construction, a quick jump, and you can catch the players as they will be on towards that top rafter. Franco's trying to hold down and cover that cross for their team. Nako will now go below and see if he can maybe push up Red Stairs to try and put pressure onto that smoke. He will use the last toxic babe. Skies had to go deep and he will get shot down as the angle is being held by Oscar. Noah wins his engagement, wins two of them with a shotgun. Noah just can't be stopped. Noah's on a heater tonight, isn't he? Clearly had a very good day of warm up and good day of practice, getting himself in the right frame of mind and He's landing a lot of shots here tonight. Great end there from Into the Breach. They did such a good job of spreading out that utility. You think to Azza on the catwalk, I was convinced that he was a dead man walking. You've got a Monty pushing you. You've got Capital at the door. You've got fire on one side and a Monty on other. Quite literally a rock and a hot place, not a hard place. A real difficult situation and somehow manages to get away with it. And obviously it was because of the support from the rest of the team. It was because of the smoke canisters coming through. He got the impact out there nice and early, which we're also able to chip the Monty down and made the smoke even more devastating. Real great round from Into the Breach. And now they can take us back down to the basement where we think back to round number one. It was it was all about no, we didn't really see this side defense tested at all demo. Mm. Ten seconds remaining. No, it was a, a very poor round from Entz. Just completely Five capitulated it before the round even really got into its midway point. Attackers are moving out. It's actually not a bad adaptation there from, from Azur bringing in the, the cap can because all that's going to do for him Whoa, is maybe boss. bait Entz into, you know, kind of seeing this setup again. And they could try and go for a dirt rush. And, you know, little things like that could just leave it open. Uh, and they've actually almost baited them in for the dirt rush because they haven't even reinforced it. You know, players might see that and think, oh, dirt's off, let's rush down. And oh, bang, two cat gun traps, dead man. You know, stuff like that. That's that's creative from ITV. I like to see that. Creeds, know that there's an impact there. And well, I mean, that's a freebie if ever I saw it. Jax has heard the barricade get ripped down. He's heard the impact go off, but he's just not in a position to do anything about it because he's got his back directly to the breach. And that right there is why you ban your Solace. I mean, Solace assists in that nature, um, but it isn't the be all and end all. Kreese is going to get that kill most times, regardless of operator. But another good opening pick here for Into the Breach. Yeah, it uh, takes out the ace. Good news is for Ents, though. They have their banner, they have the buck, so still plenty of forms of their hard breach still remaining. Oh, that was close from Noah. Almost catch him on with the C4. Would have been the Grim. Great operator to take down, Ollie. We talk about that battle for blue a lot of the time. Grim just excels in that. Being able to ping out anyone in behind the boiler and that generator. There's a great thing to have. And he is still alive. You know, Falcon's always a dead man. He's not dead yet, but he's very close to being so. Azur. Picking up the camp cam traps, is he? You know, he's placing down even more, it looks like. Is that he's doubling down. Trap? He's doubling oh, down. My word. It's fine. That's it. He's put all of his eggs in one basket. He's got three cap cans on that door. I'm not. In, I didn't actually get to see where the other couple got placed. I would imagine somewhere upstairs, but it's two just the two on the oh, yeah, uh, on the dirt door. Did he pick them up and put them back down again or something? What's? Maybe he's just baiting. Maybe maybe he didn't. Maybe he placed him, took him off, and then thought that the, you know drone might not see or I don't know. There's. Capcom players can do funny and wonderful things. And it's, it's awful when you think that you've been droned and then you don't want to replace it and all sorts of stuff going on there. We're currently in the util exchange here to get this hatch dealt with, but a nicely timed impact EMP is going to see it 
that the hatch will get opened at least a little bit. And Oscar, try as he might with the Cade Electric Claw, isn't going to be able to get anything done. Now we're going to see the value out of Naku and those bees. As we are approaching that 30 second mark, he's got a great ping there over onto Creed's. Looks to try and follow it up a little bit as well, but nobody knows that we've got a close player on the breach. That close player being Kenny. He's able to find himself one, can go prone and look for another here. We're looking for into the breach, really to try and hold on. Three versus one now. Azox just going to start pushing short into Moto, but Noah is going to finish things off there and then. A desperate attempt at an execute there from Ents, but they just didn't quite have enough information or any real work done on the site. It certainly looked as though they were heading for that kind of church state. That's what they wanted to go for. Uh, church is easy to go for if you have the Grim. You know, you can clear out blue. It then allows the motor players to drop in. But the one thing that Ents were missing was the triple wall on church. Completely shut, electrified. That is where they slipped up. And you have to look at the setup that ITB went for. Obviously, they're going to go, you know, for that roam and see if they can pick off some utility, which, I mean, look at Solus, killed the ace. You know, a key operator for opening up that triple wall is gone. But like I mentioned, there's still enough hard breach um, that, you know, Ent should be able to deal with that. But then they have such an issue with getting open that kitchen hatch, using so many Habana pellets, having to burn free factors because the Cade is there as well. And then it gets to, you know, the, the 32nd mark where they have to try and go for that push. They, they flood the bees in, but nobody realized that, hey, we need to open up that triple wall. I think Thatcher over towards blue, whereas we need it, um, you know, Thatcher rotating down towards main stairs to open up uh, that wall alongside the Habana. I don't even know if Habana had any pellets Habana left, but they just didn't have enough the in the bank to get through that triple wall. And that is because ITB just set up such, such a nuisance of a lineup. They had the rumors who gets this opening kill. They then had, you know, the, the Cade going crazy on the tricks. And then just ends up nothing left in the site. And then look, look at the freedom you can have as, as a defender. Whenever that triple wall's closed, you can swing on the moto as much as you want. Attackers. You know, there, there's there's no threat whatsoever playing aggro there. Three one as we enter round number five. Ten seconds to insertion. We are going to see the gym and bedroom defense attempted again here. This is the only round so far that ends have been successful in. And to be honest, if ITB had played it a little bit differently and not given so many one versus ones, it may have been a slightly different result. Really trying to keep control of that top floor this time for Into the Breach and not go for those swings, but Creed's look at him go. Great timing there on that jump out. Jax hasn't even managed to place the Claymore. He's mid animation at that point. And another round and another opening pick going to into the breach so far. I believe that is every single round that we've seen so far. All five rounds, opening pick for into the breach. This a stat that, that Jack pointed out on the desk is how good their opening uh, engagements are. You know, the best in the league and ITV, they're showing that again and again and again. And ends, especially whenever you're looking at Clubhouse, a map which is going to be dealing with a lot of utility, to lose an attacker, once again, your ace right off the rip again, you're just going to Nobody lose because that. of that of that stat line. If you don't get the opening pick and you cannot keep your utility-based operators alive, you will lose Clubhouse. There's no way around that. I'm going to self-correct myself. We can't do Sky's Dirty. You got the opening pick in round number three. But it's still very impressive so far from Into the Breach that they've been that successful in that opening. They are going to now try and disrupt a little bit. They've got the book below. Bit of a C4 coming through as well. That isn't going to deal the finishing blow. Azza getting himself into some hot water here, but Creed's is on the prowl. He's going to move himself into stock here. Kenny? Freebie from Naku. Naku just entirely looking the other way. Where are the drones, guys? Where's the information? You could hear a drone on that kill cam, but you certainly couldn't see one. Rykos, he's now trying to get himself below and maybe look to try and deal with some of those players, but Ents, they need to start finding some answers here. Yeah, and Kreez is playing extremely well, playing very passive. Will Rykos try and go for the pick, but he's too late. Azox gets a little eliminated before that happens. Oh, Kenny. Where's that? Hold on, Kenny's not supposed to be doing those kills. That's why they brought the young ones in. <laughs> well, Kenny's certainly got it in him. He's shown that multiple times. He's showing it here again today. 
You know it's a poor do when the toxic babes are getting used inside a CCTV and all you can hear and see are impact grenades and everything getting thrown at you. You know that your location has been given up and you know that you've got a very tough time ahead of you if you're Rykos. 17 seconds left and really what left. is he able to do here? He's going to start getting people jumping outside. Great snapshot yeah, onto Kenny. It's not going to do anything to win the round, but you've got to call him as you see him. As a, he's going to finish things off there. Rykos got his exit, but that was all ends we're going to get inside of that round. And we even get a smile out of Oscar there, Demo. Never, never, never would I think I'd see the day that he'd be smiling. Honestly, ITB just at the moment, they're, they're playing Clubhouse very well. You know, they, they know what, what they need to do just to be a nuisance to the attackers. But again, Ents losing that opening engagement, losing the ace. You're going to be cooked Defender from the get-go if you're losing, you know, players attack. like your ace. You can't get those walls opened and ITB can just sit so happily and holding on to one doorway. That's really a lot of the kills. If you look at ITB, a lot of the kills that they've had have just been from sitting in very safe positions and just peeking up and getting kills. I haven't once seen Ents put the pressure on ITB where ITB have had to panic. You know, I don't think that's happened. Really, the only time no. you would say is maybe the Azami where the multi walks up and then the the uh, capital flames out the catwalk but even still azami then 180s and, and hit fire that look like onto the multi so that it doesn't that doesn't even matter either so yeah ents just are not doing enough to make itb feel uncomfortable itb are just this is their map they, they look so happy on it they look comfortable on it i just don't see this going any other way again but another itb win they just look that good right now in the defense Well, we've got one more round of Into the Breach on the defense before we see how that translates onto the attack as well. It's going to be the same story here. We've got Azza playing in this catwalk position. He has got the Kiba barricades. I wondered if they would adjust and bring a Wamai to assist and help those Capital Firebolts from doing as much damage as they did last time because Azza did get a little bit fortunate last time, it has to be said. But instead, they've opted for the other route. They've opted for the dock route. So, well, you can cap towers, but we've got a pistol that's got quite a bit of health in. And we are going to try and keep each other alive in that way. So, a very important role here for Kenny's. Pretty much going to have to try and pocket Azza through any of those fire arrows that get sent on in. Don't stage yet, friends. Which is a good start. It certainly was around that they had no real issues with opening up that main breach, but it does seem to be just a little bit slower than what it was last time. We're waiting for Rykos to get in below with the impacts and will now open up below Oscar, but he's still going to firm it. He's still going to firm the bandit trick. Oscar, nerves of steel. Gamma red cape. My oh. word, that is, that's a big play, Ollie. Well, if we look, we can see that Oscar got juiced up at a brilliant moment there. He's just losing the last of that health, bo health boost there from Kenny on the dock. He's going to return to full HP, but look at how much value Kenny is getting out of this now. He's also been able to juice Noah right up as well. So the dock working out beautifully there and enabling Oscar to keep that wall closed. You look at where we are in the round now. There's a minute left. Oh, unfortunate there for Creed. I thought he was going to maybe get away with a kill on Skies there. He will instead be taken out. It's forced Ents into a full switch up. They're not yeah, going to be able yeah. to get that main breach open now. They've got one exothermic. They're too scared of the bandit trick. They're going to try and switch things up. They're going to try and go for a construction take. But again, you look at what they've got to get through. There's a C4, there's a Toxic Babe canister, and there's only 40 seconds left on the clock. And with no control of garage, it makes this take very difficult. Yeah, the catwalk player can now just try and hold that, that long angle. They may, they might try and use the multi, just try and block up the door. That could work for them, but it's going to be difficult. The diffuser is in the hands of Skies at the moment. Nobody moving for Ents. They're going to try and see if they can burn out all of the denial that ITB have, but they have their own utility. They're going to try and fire out, and this is where the exit will come in for Ents. Rykos is going to pick a kill there over onto Noah, but Azza is in position for two. Oscar will find one. Azox, he's caught downstairs, and, well, the site players are going on an absolute tear here. Azox is likely going to come to blows here with Azza, just playing at the bottom of that oil pit, but time will do the rest. Brilliant adaptation there from Into the Breach, recognizing that the main push hadn't worked. It was a full rotate from Ents, and they were more than ready to collect it. 
I'm surprised that Oscar didn't try and Bandit Trick the single wall. You know, whenever he kind of swung construction, he would have seen the Monty. And then at that stage, the kind of alarm bells is going off thinking, oh, they're going to go for construction side. He can Bandit Trick that single wall just as much as what he was doing the double wall. Maybe fair in the butt from below, I guess. Um, but look, having that rafter control for ITB was Attack massive. Uh, just can lock down those angles, cuts, cuts across, you know, where the attackers want to fish in from. Azlock's blow looked as though he was chasing a ghost for the majority of that. He was obviously hunting Azur, but Azur was just, again, playing so passive, playing so safe. And this is the point that I need to keep making. ITP looks so safe whenever they're playing Club Ash right now. There's not been a single inch of pressure that Ents have been able to apply. No, they haven't looked uncomfortable at any point during those first six defending rounds. And to be honest, I'm not sure that that's really going to change when they move on to the attack because we know that Insta Breach are a very well-rounded side at the moment. And when they've got players that are having good days, you spoke of it earlier, Demo, before we got into the game, during that pause that we had at the start, of different levels of performance from different players on the side events. And it's kind of ringing true a little bit today. Look at what we've got going on. We've got Noah, eight and two right now. I won't make this easy for them. It's big, big game for Noah. Mentioned that maybe Noah, Kenny, and Oscar had to have a good day today. And Detective right now, I would say they're they're probably performing better than honestly Azure and Creed's, but it's also Azure and Creed's performing bad. This is the full team performance that we wanted to see from ITB. This is what we needed to see from them. It's you know everyone playing their part. You know, I said I think some of their their games that they've won has been down to I don't want to use the term life game, but certainly you could put it underneath that bracket from some players. But we want to see that whole team environment just be very stable, very strong, everyone doing their part, everyone doing their job. And if they do that, they will win games so much more uh, easily. You know, look look at BDS. It's a full team performance. Look how easy they sweep aside opponents. It's about getting all those players online at the same time consistently as well. And that's something that every team is going to work toward. And it's showing here today for Into the Breach. Got a dope we call coming in. That usually signifies the start of a push. Naku, he's going to be upstairs. He does have Skies kind of supporting him a little bit here. Skies is just on the mid portion of those main stairs, but Into the Breach don't seem to be too concerned about it, or they are totally unaware of it at the moment. Jax is going to choose now to reinforce that church wall and put a bit more pressure on those remaining Hibana pellets. There's no tin openers left anymore. So the 14 Hibana pellets are all that is going to enable any sort of hard walls to get opened here. Creed's going to be biding his time. He knows that there's going to be a couple of players down in blue, but Nakey for me is the wild card here. If Into the Breach don't know about him, he could cause a ruckus. There is still one phone call though from Kenny. If that goes out at the wrong time. Oh, has he whiffed it? No, he's got two. I thought he almost bottled the kill onto Noah as he flicked away to try and kill Kenny. But Noah just couldn't react quick enough and he finds two for his trouble. Azur has pushed down in towards blue, but it's only him and Kreeze left. Kreeze has dropped 30 seconds to go. It's just got to be a kill galore fest from ITB, but Ents aren't going to give them that satisfaction. Azur, they know exactly where he is and an easy swing from Skies. I mean, that was a quick round, quick finish, should I say, for Ents. But again, for both sides, the Rome game on their attacks are not looking too good. Yeah, that attack was was pretty lackluster. They didn't know about Naku. And if there's one thing that you know about Ents, it's when Naku gets onto the defense, he is going to be that floating player. I mean, when he's on the attack, he's a bit of a floater. I'm going to be honest with you. He's a slippy guy. And to try and nail him down and say, look, sit in the side, it's almost an impossibility. He's going to be out there on the Rome. He's going to stretch his legs and you've got to keep an eye on him. The fact that we had a doke be there, the fact that we had a lot of drone, we had a, we had a good amount of control there from Into the Breach, and we didn't see Naku dealt with or even known about, is a bit of a red, red flag. It is a little bit of a problem there. It's nothing really to dwell on too hard here, but he was certainly a big part in the round. I mean, he didn't know his luck at this point. He gets the kill onto Noah. Kenny gets caught. Is he going upstairs? Is he going downstairs? The timing, it, it couldn't have been much better, realistically, there for Naku. 
Um, but it, it could have been a lot better if you were an Into the Breach player, um, as that uh, that wasn't ideal at all. But and they find success on the defense, which, let's be honest, is what we want to see. We don't want to see any washouts tonight. We want to see close, good games. Yeah, we, we want to see them go down to the wire. Of course, if you're ITB, though, and you want to try and get that second place, then... Um, Fate is it? I think they need a 7 0 or a 7 1 here today against them, I think, to make that possible. Um, I could be wrong on that, though. Maybe I think a 7 2 might do them. I'm sure Jack will probably let us know during the break, but they need to try and keep this as quick as they can. And oh dear, not, not again. Another bad start for the attackers. The defense and these opening kills today, Ollie, is been electric right now. The attackers just losing utility here, there, and everywhere by giving away that first pick. Clubhouse, where every operator matters with the utility that you need to bring in. Uh, you, you just can't be affording to, you know, to lose these operators. You've lost your faction now. Your bandit's going to be an issue now. Y your your mute jammers are going to be an issue. Looks like Ents have locked into that as well, because we can see a little bit of utility get in place there. Kenny is going to be able to open up the wall. Fortunately, they do have impact EMPs, but it's no substitute for the real thing. Nakey. Not able to get the impact trick off there. The wall at the top hadn't been prepped. But again, is it too much of a problem? Half the round's been burnt. Good portion of utility's been burnt from the attackers. And Ents now can just retreat back to that second layer. Yes, they've given up inside of cash and CCTV, but they can now hold inside of construction. C4 over the top isn't going to be successful. Rykos again dips himself back. Third layer, now we're into the site. Maybe a little bit sooner than you'd want to be. But now the pressure is on into the breach to do something with this control. Yeah, I'm surprised that Ents didn't maybe try and rotate bandit charges and try and trick some of these walls, which they certainly could have. And Skies, that's a great shot. Eliminates Kenny. Down goes the Fermite, but I suppose Kenny certainly had done his job already. Oscar, oh, sees the legs of Skies. He is going to be safe behind that reinforced wall. Will it impact him out? Again, he's still safe, but no, Noah has repelled. Propelled up on top of that window, eliminate Skies. He wasn't expecting that as he was concussed out. Noah can try and send the bees in, but he has to be careful. Somebody lurking below. There is a player downstairs. It looks to be the Legion. Does have impacts as well. Can maybe try and stop the plant from below if he gets the correct information. No, just barely out of the way to the bees. He can send just all that hatch now. The nitros that I'm looking at, Nakey there, he's going to find the kill and confirm it with the impact. Azox as well gets the job done and the final player pushing through that construction door into sight will be dealt with. It was the impacts and the C4s that I was concerned about, but the C4s not even coming into play there. And getting the job done with gun skill alone and really doing a good job of choking into the breach out there. Maybe time for that tactical timeout to come through demo. It feels like a good opportunity now. We've struggled to see success from Into the Breach on these attacks. Maybe they'll see a full rotation before taking it. This game could quickly slip away from them at this rate. I think they'll give it one more round. Uh, I think mostly because they now have to go to the third choice bomb site. So there is that kind of thought process where you're not going to get, you know, there's no point doing the timeout where you're not entirely sure what they're going to do for this site. You know, obviously if they lose this one, then we know it's going to be basement. That's probably where ITB use the timeout to try and, you know, think about what did they do at basement last time. That's the kind of thought process I think coaches look at it from that perspective. Uh, and really the only other time you'd see like timeouts be called, you know, before that would be if it's like total, you know, panic in the comms, there seems to be an issue internally that the coach needs to go in there and sort out. But in terms of, you know, strategic uh, timeouts, you, you want to see the full show, for instance, the full rotation of the free bomb sites. Well, they're certainly going to see it. Uh, in that third choice site right now. CCTV. Make you. Is he trying to do a bit of a Creed cosplay here? Well, if he was, it hasn't worked. Didn't go for it. Maybe not quite quick enough or didn't hear the C4 getting pulled out in time. The mirror window on the main wall is always a very difficult one to deal with because you know as soon as you place that exothermic, the mirror window is going to get open. In fact, it has already been opened here, but great bit of covering fire yeah. is going to mm -hmm. stop anyone from being able to impact out. 
Of course, the main objective for placing that mirror window there is to throw an impact grenade out of the mirror and destroy the exothermic. But good cover, good team play from Into the Breach to get that open. And in record time demo, that's the quickest we've seen it open all game long between both of these two teams. Yeah, before the two minute mark, it was opened and that sets them up nicely. And look at that, using the Selmas to try and open up the long angle onto the rafters. But Skies isn't having any of that though as he fires his impact and it will land its target. Two more Selmas though for Oscar. Only one impact remains for Skies. So they're gonna need to try and get, uh, you know, more utility rotated to try and keep him alive. But I don't know if he's gonna be alive for much longer as in goes, oh, look at this. Kinkasti's flame, but he still gets a kill. How does he get the kill? Oh my word. And even a refrag downstairs has happened as well for Ents. What is it today? You know, these Azami players just tanking everything and still getting kills. Unreal from Skies, done his job and more there. And again, it comes down to Nake. You look at the position that he's got himself here. He's playing the Legion so he can keep himself relatively safe. Couple of goo mines downstairs and he's got all the early warning system he needs. He's barely moved from these blue stairs all round long. He's gonna know now that someone's inside a lounge. He's had that audio cue come through. He knows that he's getting pushed. Chris gets caught looking the wrong way. Thank you. Great flick there. Somebody on the upside down repel now to deal with oh, next, man. but he's almost single-handedly done it for ends inside of this round. The site players have done a good job of keeping alive and staying out of the, out, out of harm's way, but he's had some really impactful kills there. Kenny now gonna try and get this plan down, but guess what? He's still got AQ below. We're going to see a bit of a push-up come here as well as the C4 is going to be ripped and sent on out. But Kenny, he's left trying to find something here. He can take the impact out. Oscar has control of CCTV, but there's far too much for one person to watch alone here. Kenny is going to start to try and get that plant down, but there's two C4s below. There is information, and we're going to see that C4 come out right about now. Azox, he hits the mark. Oscar, next to fall. Naku picks the final kill. I, I like it from Ents. I like it. Just give them the site. We can play below. We have so much utility still downstairs. Using the C4's impact if you want to as well. A shotgun from the mirror. Anything just to stop that plant going down. You know, I thought that was a, a great play from Ents. It, it's a very safe play. You know, you don't really risk much from doing that. So, yeah, you, you have to command Ents. They are really fighting back here in their defense. But ITB now, they're struggling on the attack. Surely the timeout has to come in. Defenders no, it has to be because they're losing momentum, but it doesn't look as though it is, Ollie. Oh, yeah. Very surprised from my point of view to not see that timeout come out here. I mean, at this point, when do you use it? Do you wait until it's it's 5-5? Five five? Like, what's, what's the thought process um, behind that? Obviously, Kenny can hear the comms, so there's obviously nothing, you know, the, the sky obviously isn't falling. It's just one of those situations. But I am quite surprised not to see it. We'll, of course, see how uh, how Into the Breach approach this. And of course, the flip side of the timeout is you don't really want to give Ents that moment to say, you know, good job, well done, let's keep doing what we're doing because they can speak as well. So mm -hmm. we'll see if Into the Breach are able to try and stabilize a little bit more here. The big, big problem in round number seven as it has been in a lot of these defender rounds has been Naku. He was on the Jaeger, he was roaming on that top floor, and he was a bit of a nuisance. This time, he's playing on the Goyo. It's going to be much more tricky for him to do any significant roaming on the Goyo, just due to the fact that Goyo is pretty heavy, makes a lot of noise. Not really going to look to get him, you know, sent in and around the map too much. And as such, we can see him just at the bottom of those main stairs. The roam was the key to the success here for Ents in round seven. And without that, Maybe we get to see what Into the Breach are about here, attacking onto this site. Just keep everyone updated about what the score right now, what that does for both teams. Right now for ITB, they can no longer get top two. The best they can finish is in toward that third place, which wouldn't be a bad place to finish because, as I'm sure you heard uh, about Fabian uh, and, and Fresh we're talking about, is if you finish third, then you're not going to play against BDS. You know, in, in your in your match for getting to the major. So right now for BDS, that would be a pretty or for ITB, that would be a pretty nice prize for them is to not go against you know the best team in the league and try and submit yourself uh, into that major. Right now for Ents, all they need to do is get that overtime. That overtime, uh, I think just that overtime point is that's all we need. 
Um, actually, maybe not. I think maybe they do need the, the overtime win just based on they need, score they difference. Need to win, yeah. Too. yeah, yeah. The score difference will let them down because of that. So they need to get the all two points. So right now for G2, you're probably thinking, ITB, can you get a move on? You know, can you get hurry up? They are sending ITB all the energy that they can at the moment, watching from the sidelines. Into the breach. Getting the jobs done here. They've made good progress throughout the map. We've got a minute remaining left here. There's still quite a bit of utility kicking around, mainly looking toward these evil eye cameras. And of course, we do have the Vulcan canisters as well, which they can really start to chew through sometime. Don't be called, will be sent through, along with the bees. And Kenny, he's going to be getting the plant down as well. We can see he's getting chipped down by that Maestro yeah, Evil Eye camera. That was the goal there. He was always going to fall doing that, but the Don't Be Call allowed him to get it down. Kreese, he's going to find one onto Naku, trading back there. Azza tucked in at the bottom of these main stairs. There's a vertical angle here for Noah to hold as well. Into the breach, you've just got to try and hold on. Azza picks one. Can he grab a second? Yes, he can. Two for him on the round here and keeps him safe. Noah from above leaves it all down to Rykos. A brilliant execute here, and he isn't even going to find an exit. Oscar shuts him down in dirt. Yeah, great strat there from ITB. Did you, did you see what they were hoping would happen, right? It's almost... Right, look, it's very, very risky. Very, very risky because a lot of things that could go wrong. Typically on the kind of basement attacks, we were to see in these big floods in, these massive gunfights that just, just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. ITB dropped one guy down the hatch, and that was it. Kenny with Diffuser went into the default plant position and just tries to get that Diffuser down. Everyone else stayed above or Attack bottom main stairs. You know, very safe diffuser. positions. Again, very safe for ITB the way they played this match, certainly. If that Diffuser goes down, it will be the toughest post-plant retake that Ents would ever have to go up against because you're dealing with four players who are in safe passive positions. However, of course, for ITB, all it takes is one C4. You know, one issue there for that entire strat just to come crashing down. But thankfully for them, Ents, they didn't have, you know, anything up to try and deny that. The C4s weren't there for them because uh, they just didn't bring enough. They were really relying on the Maestro camera. If that Maestro isn't switched on quick enough, it's going to be a no-go. So you have to credit ITB with the strat they went for. V very, very risky, but if it works, you will look like geniuses. And, and that's what they are. They're geniuses right now. It, it, so much of it hinges on the dope recall as well. Just not allowing Maestro to get into the camera and deny that plan. So, and, and I think at that point, Entz knew what was coming. You know, it, it, Maestro was ready and was able to shut Kenny down, but he's already got the plant down. He's done his yes. job. He is always going to fall in that position because his whole job is to get the plant down so his team can hold it from above, as you mentioned, and then the various angles that they had. So great round from Into the Breach, much more like what we were expecting to see from them here tonight. And it certainly aligns quite nicely with the way that they were defending as well. Puts them onto a map point right now. We can see if they can get this done cleanly inside of two. So the bandit trick going to be going on here, Oscar. Not got the info there, or maybe just providing a bit of a distraction, but either way, I'm going to see the wall inside a construction open. So I see B. Bomb see if they can attack. close it out and see if they can cement themselves into that third place position, which would be a stellar performance from that side throughout the season. But Ents, of course, trying to see if they can push it now into overtime and win in overtime to give them that sixth place position and not G2 down into the open quals. It is going to be a big task for them, a big upheaval, as they need to win these next two perfectly and then Hope that they can do the business in overtime. Nick, you're going to get found out there inside of cash and maybe make a bit of a rotation. He's got an option to play quite fluid here. He hears the goo mine come in. Another drone sent to try and figure him out. This time the wall has been prepped and he can look to try and impact onto that. Stun's now coming in. It's going to render him full white flash. But is anybody there to collect Creed's? He's trying to peer around the corner, but there's a bit of support here for Nick. He's going to find one before being taken out. Played his life there brilliantly. Wasted two minutes for all intents and purposes and a boatload of utility. Still a long way for Into the Breach to go here. No Selmas left, no Exothermics. They're not going to get that wall open into construction. 
Oh, maybe they don't need to, Wally, as Rykos to just beat himself up for pennies for ITB. They didn't even have to work for that kill. I was worried that, yeah, you have to try and walk into construction, contest against the guy where you've just taken a one on one gunfight. Could be difficult, but nope. Ents make it way too easy. So now ITB, this is where they're at a bit of a, a lull for them. Mirror window is going to be punched, so they don't have to worry about going up against that one in towards the vault. However, I think this mirror window still on the bathroom is going to be the issue with 10 seconds to go. They need to try and move quick. Crease does spot someone behind that mirror window. will move in, but no aims the wrong distance. Oscar pushes in aggressively and finds the mirror as well, but Diffuser's going to be called. Can he get in time? He has to press F, does he? Oh my word, he presses F just in the nick of time. Azox has no idea where it's going down. The Diffuser will be successfully planted by Oscar. What a round for him. This is all on the back of Oscar. Kenny rotates safely out onto the breach. Azox, does he know? Will he contest? He knows now as he takes a couple of shots to his side. Azox punches the mirror window. Oscar is backed off safely. Again, this safe position from ITB has been clinical this entire game. Azox goes for a wonder outside, but look at this from ITB. They're playing it to a T. Diffuser will be spotted out. Azox will now stick it, and this is where the collapse has to come in. Kenny from behind will cement an ITB. A stellar round from Oscar, but a great game overall from ITB. That's the full team performance that we wanted to see from them today. Great performance from ITB. What a final round we have just seen there. That came down to the wire. Of course, there was more rounds available. We weren't in a max overtime, but we were getting close to a potential overtime there for ends and into the breach have pulled it out of the bag. Nail biting stuff. You think it's locked in at the point where you see a C4 below, a diffuser called on the ground. If only, if only Azox had placed the C4 on the diffuser and then been able to blow it when Oscar picked it up. But this is something you look back in mm. with a hindsight. Still a super close game. And if that's how the rest of the night is going to go, I cannot wait, Demo. Already jaw-dropping stuff. And I almost looked for a minute that Azox was going to C4 roster was. He kind of lined up yeah. then he switched away. So, oh, he's going to be kicking himself because he almost could have went with his gut feeling there, couldn't he? It was kind of like his gut feeling was he's going to be right in the rotate. And if he done, then yeah, the game would have still been going on. But look, what can you say? ITB, uh, right now, you're, you're G2's biggest, biggest fans. Or wait, <laughs> G2's your biggest fan, should I say? Because you've saved G2 from going into those uh, open qualifiers. Now it's Ents who have to go there. Um, but, you know, G2, obviously, they're going to be happy. But even for G2, they're probably not going to be happy the fact that they had to rely on another team winning. But, hey, look, the, the UK guys have helped. I suppose the other UK guys, haven't they? Well, yeah, it's really yeah. only, it's only Doki now, isn't it? Well, uh, yeah. Titan. I think we, cl we, we claim a little bit as well, but yeah. that's going to do it for us on the first cast. We're going to send it over to the desk so they can fully break everything down and let you know what that does to our standards. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for the energy and for the cast. Of course, ITB push it across the line. The beginning, we're looking, ITB can take this all. It can be a 6-1 even. And then we had the slight comeback, but our hopes and ends were dashed away Fabian great play by Into the Breach yeah I think Into the Breach had a very very solid game through and through their attacks looked a little bit rough yeah. but their defenses they on my mind they completely outplayed Ants in their defenses mm -hmm. especially the Solis gameplay I think that we saw a team that really knew their basics they played through it and they also knew what their opponents were doing because I think that Ants they played very one, two, three step based gameplay. It reminded me of my team in Korea when I tell them stop playing like Koreans, stop playing so slow, <laughs> have some bit of surprise in there because you cannot just play one, two, three and then not expect your opponents to pick them apart like Into the Breach did. Yeah, I really like the Solus. As you said, you know, Creed's was basically having a field day. Out on the Solus, it was those kind of rounds three, four, five that he was on the Solus um, and he really, really punished, really punished Ents with all their drone in and basically every mistake because he could see where all the information was coming from. Um, what I wanted to see coming out of ITV today was a mature performance. Yeah. I wanted to see them come in, get the job done, get the three points, because they knew that three points would very likely secure themselves third place. And what did we say? You don't want to be 4 fifth, you don't want to play BDS. So there was pressure on this performance to secure themselves third place, put in a mature performance, beat the opposition opposition in front of you, and then move through to, to tomorrow. That's exactly what they did. Sure, attacks went a little bit awry. Yeah. The first three rounds on attack, they looked 
to be honest, horrible. Um, and I think, you know, Kangaroo Kenny would come out and say that, but they managed to get the last two done, even if it was just in the nick of time in that very last round. So there is now big hope on ITB for the playoffs, or not? I mean, yes and no at the same time. You don't know where you are. have a team because now we're going into best of threes. Exactly. And that's where the biggest difference is. I think that Into the Breach, they have a deep enough map pool for this. I don't think it would be that big of an issue because one of the maps that they seem to like the least, which is Skyscraper, it's not that hard to introduce that map into your map pool and start defense. You'd love to do that. So I think that we can expect a lot of them, but how far will it take them? Because now Nurse will start to pay a bigger problem into things. ITB standouts on the team. Nurse, our only Swedish player on the squad, have put it up kind of push that whole rest of the UK squad past the line. I think one player that I know is, is kind of talked about in the strategic circles mm -hmm. uh, of Siege is Kendrew, because at the start of the stage, you know, there were some shaky performances, but we've seen him put up numbers and lead the team in the server, Jack. Yeah, I think Demo said about it today. He said he was rolling back the gears for Kendrew. Um, and I think, yeah, one of the things that he brings, he obviously brings that level of leadership to the team. He brings the IGLing, he brings being the support player. However, one thing that he brought today, and I know it's only seven and seven, um, but you know, he brought a great performance today. He hit a gnarly, gnarly hit when he was inside of Cash yeah. and got the, the, the hit all the way out to the, the CCTV window, sorry, the uh, construction window. Construction um, window, yeah. Yeah, my window is messed up there because no one has numbers. But yeah, I think his improvement specifically across the stage statistically and in that game was big. All right, how about we talk about our standings? And actually, Jack, I'll let you talk about that because we mentioned it, but now you'll have the visual to talk yeah, about it all. Exactly. So we have our top six locked now um, because of that result. All the other permutations are basically done. Um, ITB currently sit themselves into second place, will be very, very likely um, in third place by the end of the day if there is a result between Wolves and Secret. I think it might actually be locked at their third place regardless. However, the big story is into the breach winning also means G2 will be in the playoffs because Ents can no longer overtake them. It also secures Fnatic by the same token as well. So we know our top six. The rest of the games today are just about determining which order that top six is in. Thank you very much, uh, Fresh. And yes, things are almost set up, but we're here for a chat. Joining me and Fabian here is Oscar from Into the Breach. Oscar, first of all, congratulations on the win on the playoff spot at pretty much third here. How are you feeling with this big W? Uh, feeling very good. It's nice to be locked in for playoffs. Um, ready to show it, show uh, uh, more maps and more gameplay. I hope with playoffs and you guys winning this game. You have invited a team into the race that have looked like a complete car crash the entire <laughs> season. And that is G2. Is there any team that you guys would like to go up against, or is it you maybe individually specifically wants to go up against in the playoffs? Um, I think I always like playing Secret, because um, I got a lot of friends on that team. Uh, so it's fun always to play them. Um, but I think we're confirmed to play G2, probably. Uh, so that would be a good game as well. For you as an individual, you have had a rookie season and you your team has played incredibly well, right? You said yourself on Twitter that you had a rough time a little bit, but that happens. How is it feeling for you as an individual? How is the team environment? And just talk us through your first start and how it's it's been going for you. I think it's been a little difficult just because um, I waited six years to be here. So I'm, I was a bit anxious and stuff, but um, I've been getting better every, every game. So uh, for playoffs, I'm hopefully going to be at my best. And Oscar, we've been obviously seeing that in the server for you, but I wanted to end on this. Uh, now that you finished up with the group stage, the next big challenge is to play best of threes in playoffs. How do you and the rest of the team kind of feel for that? Are you ready for it? What do you still need to work on for tomorrow? I think we're confident going into it. Um, our map pool is decent. We can pick uh, what's good for us and ban what's you know, good for them. So I think we're pretty confident. All right, with that said, anything you'd like to say to the fans? Prepare them for tomorrow in the big match for ITV. Um, I'll just say thanks for the support and that's about it. <laughs> Bless your heart. Oscar, thank you very much. Congratulations, Oscar and Into the Breach on the win today. We'll be seeing them in the playoffs. Get rested, get ready for tomorrow. Though from this piece, we end our interview. Big plays.
expecting more from ITB. Yeah, I mean, they should be very proud of themselves. They made it and very convincingly into the spot that they are. Most people probably wouldn't have expected to be this far up or maybe even at all. Mm -hmm. So I think they should be very happy with themselves. They should be proud and just keep working because they're doing something correctly. Next up is best of three playoffs. We'll be seeing more from ITB after well, we finish our day and we're ready for tomorrow. But we still have three more games to go when we come back. It is the battle at the bottom here for EU League. We'll see you in a few minutes. Brazil. Now. The Gimnasio do Ibirapuela is the home to the hammer as we get set to write the next chapter in R6 Esports history. This is the Six Invitational 2024. Vamos para Samba Ruyo!
Welcome back, everybody, to Blast R6 Europe League. Game number one is done and dusted, and we've put ITB in third place for now. But we need to focus on the bottom of our standings here in EUL with Wild versus Virtus Pro. Welcome back to the Analyst Desk. I'm Milos. With me are Freshbian, as are officially called. They are one analyst, one and the same. Yep. I thought you would say it at the same time. Oh, God. Yes, we yes, are one. We are one. We need to work on that. Yeah, yeah. But you're almost there. It's, it's a, a hive mind. It takes some time to get acclimated to it. Fair enough. And so from our first game, we have to go to a match that realistically does not matter in terms of the league and the playoffs, but there are a lot of invitational points that are to be played between the two. And I would like to talk about Wild first because today they're coming in with a replacement, Fabian. Yeah, so we have a player that is their sub who is going to come in and replace Nello. His name is Dudu, which is fitting because that's how they have been playing up until this point. But he's coming in replacing Nello. They are trying new things is what I am being told. Mm -hmm. And those new things is on the run for 65 invitational points. Yep. I don't know if it's the right time. But then again, can things go much worse than they already have? Feels like a mad risk for me, I'll be Absolutely. honest. Yeah. Um, yeah, things can't really go much worse. They're currently bottom of the league. But 65 invitational points is the big one I want to hone in on here because mm -hmm. Wild obviously missed out on two majors last year, did pick up some invitational points. But at the, at they've already missed, they've not necessarily missed the major, but 65 invitational points is absolutely massive. Yep. I think I saw something on, on socials earlier saying it was the difference between finishing bottom of the major and just missing out on main stage. That's the difference at the major. So it's a big chunk of points to put in a player such late on into a sub position, take out Nello, feels like a risk. And to put it into perspective, the number one team that comes out of EU gets 100 points. So 65 yeah. for being in seventh place is quite a bit. So uh, you mentioned a very sp specific thing, you know, playing, you know, doo doo, playing like doo doo through the stage, yada yada, the usual Fabian stuff. But there has to be reasons why. And I think if we were to condense it down to three, three reasons why, why things have gone wild here for a while. Fabian, would you like to walk us through it? Yeah, I mean, if we bring up the graphic we have prepared for you guys, there are three different things that we have identified for them. Number one, lack of firepower. I mean, statistically speaking, this team has been underperforming for a very long time on an individual basis. Yep. And it's just rough for them, basically for everyone. Shall I talk about number two then? You can go. Because <laughs> I don't want to add on to that. Number two, lack of identity. We yeah. saw them talk about free IGLs. We saw them not, you know, play a lot of different styles. They don't really know their best style at the minute. Yeah, but it's not only that, with the lack of identity, it comes like they have three leadership personalities. Mm -hmm. And if they can't figure out which one is the right for them, which one is leading? Who is the leader? Obviously, now we know it's Tab, but it's mm -hmm. not been looking great for them. Lack of confidence is the third one and final one, because you can clearly see it on their face cams when they're playing. Things aren't clicking for them, therefore they don't believe in each other, and it's just not going to work out. I know all about this. I, I've sat in a team that's been bottom of EU League for successive stages. Um, lack of confidence affects you. It really does. Yeah. Because confidence and mental actually, you know, influences so much inside of the server. It's not a tangible thing that you can see. You can't touch it. You can't. You, I suppose you can feel it. Yeah. You can't touch it. It's not tangible, but it has such a tangible impact on the standings and on the performance. It's like an aura of sort. Like you, you sense it. Yeah. even if it's not seen. Well, imagine your Virtus Pro where you do so well at the Invitational, you, you're third, you you're almost beat the team that won it all, and then you're here all the way at the bottom at seventh place, and you are looking, or at eighth place here, looking for the 65 points to be held on. So there has to be another three more reasons why Virtus Pro have got to this position. Can we talk about that for a moment? Yeah, we can, of course. We've pulled them up for Virtus Pro as well. Both teams, obviously, not in the ideal spot. So the three reasons why for Virtus Pro are as follows. Adaptability, or, you know, maybe 
trying to be uh, not enough adaptability, I think, is the key yeah. reason. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's the lack thereof, kind of, in a way. They haven't looked like they've been able to pick onto what their opponents are doing and then change the game plan accordingly. It seems like they chose a the strat and then they kind of go for it, but at the same time, it's not their old style. Yeah. So it just creates issues for them. Moving through to number two, not playing to their strengths. I think we know when we've spoken about Vertus Pro's strengths, the fact that they operate as a solo unit. We've not been seeing that from them really. Yep. And I think it's been a big surprise because even though their strategy is a little bit old, we'll talk about it all the time, their strategy mm -hmm. is old. But one of their key strengths was that their teamwork and their fundamentals underpinned that strategy was better than everyone, en everyone else's. We've not seen that from them. Not at all. For a third one, and we are identity again, but this time it's changing identity. And what we think, and this could even ask with a question mark at the end of it, mm -hmm. it feels to us like they are trying to reinvent themselves to be more in line with the current method that the other teams are playing, which is then basically spread out all five players and go everywhere at once. Mm -hmm. They've never done that. So it's like they've changed their identity into that, and it's just not clicking at all, and it's looking silly when they're playing it. And I think it shows if we were to talk stats, because it seems like Virtus Pro have played an incredible amount of rounds. Every game that VP are in, we're just on for ages and ages and <laughs> ages yeah. trying to find that win. Yeah, that's the thing, is they have played so many rounds. Now, we've done a league table, actually. This is what the league table would look like if you did the league table based on average rounds played. Number As one. you can see, most of the league have only played seven uh, maps. G2 obviously have played eight. That's as at the start of today. We'll preference it. it doesn't include the last game. Virtus Pro have played the most rounds, yet are basically bottom of the table other than Wild. Um, and I think you can see Wild have also played the least rounds. So what this actually means and what we're saying is Virtus Pro have been very competitive with everybody, yep. have been close to achieving those victories and just off it, whereas Wild have been, well, for use of a better phrase, Fabian, doo-doo. They have been absolutely doo-doo. And you can see that PDS and Wild are close to each other, and that's well because PDS is crushing everyone, yep. and Wild is getting crushed by everyone. Yeah, it's like the opposite ends yep. of it. You go too hard one way or too hard or the other. You get BDS and Wild in our standings. But it, it does show that in many ways, Virtus Pro have the ability and the opportunity today to push it past Wild. There's nothing statistically saying that this should be a tougher game. Exactly that. I think yeah. well, that's what we've been seeing all season. Uh, the results ultimately have put them in this position. Yeah. However, the performances have not been that bad. They've been far below the standard that Virtus Pro that we're used to seeing, yeah. but they've not been that bad in the context of a competitive EUL. It's been lots of five sevens. It's been lots of overtimes. There's been basically every game where they have been in it and could have won it as well. So is it small things to fix? Yes, but has it had a material impact on their season? Also, yes. Depth of map pool is a question we always like to mention. So let's see what map we're going to be on for this series. Looks like we are going to go to Bank. Oregon has uh, has been banned out by Virtus Pro, which means we go to our final map. And in, the best, in this best of one, it's wild to start off on defense. More numbers maybe to back this up. VP have won this ban veto. It's literally their favorite map, their number one preference. Nobody lets them have it. They've yeah. not banned it at all this stage. Everybody else apart from Wild have banned it against them. Wild have played it once against Secret. They lost it convincingly. It's one of their lower preferences. Don't really understand it. <laughs> it's a frustration for me because it just goes to prove that what we've been talking about, Wild's lack of map pull, it's for sure true. I mean, what are you thinking? That, like, I'm, um, it's making me frustrated that they allow something like this happen. It's lack of preparation, maybe, in terms of seeing what your opponent's map pool is. But again, it seems like VPs is quite straightforward online, different than what it is playing on LAN. But it is time for us to get into our match. Let's pull up our friends uh, from the UK. It's our lads, lads, lads. Ollie and Demo, friends, you had some time to rest after our first game. How do you see this matchup going between VP and Wild? I think we probably need this one, Milosh, to, to calm down a little bit, maybe. After palate the, cleanser? Uh, after, yeah, maybe a little palate cleanse, like a, a, call it an aperitif or something like Indeed. that if you're in a fancy place. Um, I, I don't really know what to expect here. I was looking at the bands, I was trying to make a bit of sense of it, very similar to Fresh and Fabian. I can't really find the logic in it, I'll be honest with you. You know what? I think, if anything, we are able to find the energy in that server. It needs to be from both teams. Virtus Pro look to have an advantage in it. Demo, I hope you get a lot of moments to scream over in this one because <laughs> we, we want that VP push. Good screams or bad screams? Because I, I can... It depend, depends what Wild's <laughs> going to do because obviously if they're going to bank, they didn't look too good on it against, uh, against Secret. 
BP speak for themselves. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see what Wild can do. It's a, it's a big risk, but hey, if you've got nothing to lose, why not? Go for it. Any yes, demo screams are good for me. They've been hiding strats. That's what Wild have been doing. All They've right. been hiding strats this entire stage. Take him of off G2 when they're fraud out of here. Ollie demo, yeah, take it away, please. Of course, I cannot wait to find what is hidden demo inside of this gem of a fixture. There's a lot to go through here. The desk again, as always, have done a fantastic job. The map, we can throw that into question, and I'm sure that we will throughout the course of this game. But also, most notably, is that Wild have got a new player on the roster. I got do, 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 push better, shake better. Ah, da, do, that, that's do, him, isn't do. it? It is. I, I do, do, do. I can do, do. <laughs> he, of course, is replacing Nello. Um, now they have they've fielded a, a, a six-person roster. Um, oh, it's not quite a six-person roster. It's a five-person roster with a substitute. Um, but it's it's a, it's a legitimate change. It's a substitution. Um, so it's, it's legal. It's it's legal. Don't worry. We've checked. <laughs> we called the cops and we made sure that it was legal. Um, but you do sort of wonder what that does. And uh, something I'm wondering, I'm looking at his player cam right now. What is that monitor setup that he's got going on? That is, that's from Tron. That's where that's from. It looks that's like it's out of a sci-fi movie. He, he's on the Starship Enterprise. That's where he's playing from. That is incredible. So we've Captain got- Captain Kurt, come in. He's, he's, he's literally got the, so, so when you, sometimes if you buy a fancy monitor, it comes with like the little wings, like the shield. So that if you play in, you kind of lock in a little bit. You kind of looking down a bit of a tunnel. He's got the wings activated. He's in <laughs> fighter position. It's a robot. It looks it looks like a robot that would make other robots. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Deimos has been removed here. We do know that. Um, I do remember a good couple of rounds where we've seen. A VP playing the Deimos. Monty removed as well. Valk and Akade all gone off the mixture. There we get a nice close up of that beautiful monitor setup. I might try that myself. I've, uh... Look at the normal monitor beside it. You've got that. It's like the, <laughs> it's the monitor that, that he tells you not to worry about. <laughs> That's what it's like. Maybe, um, uh, well, I, I tell you what, we've we've got Leon for best, um, best overall mm -hmm. camera. We, we've got to give Dudu best setup, like best monitor setup, hands mm. down. We've seen some corkers over the years, some noses touching monitors, some people literally looking down at the desk because they've got it at such a flat angle. That one definitely takes the biscuit here. Let's see how uh, how Dudu is yeah, able to play on it. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of folks and a lot of chat about him as he is moving in to fill right, Nello's right. shoes here tonight. So naturally, that is going to draw a little bit of a spotlight. And of course, the other big spotlight for this game in particular is the fact that we've ended up on Bank. Bank, a map that VP are known to be very good at. Although it is fair to say that VP haven't been fantastic this stage. Of course, they are currently sat down at the bottom of the leaderboard alongside Wild. Uh, Wild currently in ninth, VP currently in eighth. Five points for VP, four points for Wild. So there is still stuff on the line here for this game. Of course, you don't want to be ending up in the bottom of the league. And I'm going to try and uh, go out with a little bit of a bang. Winning is a mindset and all that sort of good stuff. So let's see how these two teams face off tonight. Yeah, I think Wild will probably go pretty gung-ho in terms of a Rome game. They started the defense first. I think they'll just try and take the fight to VP if they're smart. You know, I think a lot of teams have discovered this is against VP. If you can just get in there and, and just disrupt them immediately, VP are just so slow. They can't adapt. You know, that's one thing we've seen, you know, for that, the, the most of the time from VP is that they just, they cannot adapt. So you need to get in there and disrupt them as quickly as you can. If you allow VP just to set up and do their pushes, they will beat you. 10 times out of 10. There, there is no, there's no beating that Russian machine once it gets started. Packball going to be going for a bit of a drive round in the Yokai drone there. Just see what he can find in and around the map. Joystick. Currently upstairs in CEO and he's very cautious of what's going down down in archives. He actually takes a ton of damage there on the reverse there. These are all angles, of course, that he has opened up and we do have Kanto, I believe it is, down there. Always trying for the catch here. And Kanto is doing a great job of distracting a lot of the members of EP here. Eventually will fall. But he's burned a good portion of the round there. And 
Wild, they're not going to be too worried about his contribution this round. Especially whenever you look at Wild and what they have, they have the Echo, which we know is going to be there for that denial of any plants going down. But also the Goyo Canisters. I say that, though. That is a trifecta from Pasha. Eliminates three Goyo Canisters with the Twitch turn in quick succession. So all that time that Kanto did a great job at burning has now been redundant. It's been made redundant because they've just swept the Twitch thrown in and cleared away all of that denial now for a while. So they're kind of back to square one. Always can start to think about getting the plan down now, but there's still a little bit of work to do. Packbolt is going to lose one Yokai drone. He's got another tucked away inside of a chair there. And the plant is going to start to go down. He's going to lead in with the impact. But I think he might be a bit too little, too late. Oh. Say again, he does get downed. Stay Always. He will seconds fall. Remaining. 15 seconds on the clock. Packbolt worried about the backstab now. Good. The Yokai has been Dead disabled by the EMP. And the plans this time should go down Five under the cover left. of Dam, but there's kills Jack that need to happen here. Packable is eventually going to hit the drop. He's got a long, old way to go here. And Shepard, he's going to be down waiting to collect. Oh, VP. Just you give them that inch and they'll take a mile from you. I mean, just being able to pop all those Goyo cancers as soon as that call was made that, you know, Pasha got all three. They were just straight on the money, weren't they? They just knew, let's get that diffuser down immediately. Packbull had his impact lineups done, but it's only really good for just stopping the plant the one time. And, and he didn't even get the guaranteed kill. It was only a down, then he can be recovered. And then the plant goes down again. Uh, the echo being disabled by the EMP was was nicely done by VP. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of those for a while. They did, they did really well. You know, Kanto did really well to waste that initial time. But VP just find that little bit of an opening and it just, it counteracts what Wild were trying to do the whole time. And VP are masters of their own play style as well. Let's not forget that. They know that they play slowly. So they also know how to navigate teams that try and draw that speed out of there. You look at the lineup that Wild brought. They brought a lineup that's designed to slow you down as an attacker. VP recognizing that and start to move quickly to disable yeah, it and to deal with it. Pasha, for me, has been one of the standouts on VP so far this stage. And a great round there on the drone. And of course, got himself a kill as well. And Shepard was maybe the unlikely start there inside of that one, picking himself up a couple of kills, but we love it when the players are doing well. They're gonna be attacking back downstairs this time. Shepard, speaking of, He's going to start off with a kill on Kanto. No time wasted this time, Kanto. No time wasted. Trying to get those angles open and put pressure onto this wild roam. And he's on the boards again. There's Dudu. So it just feels very weird saying that kind of name. It's not one that we, we get too often in esports, but there's the second kill. The first round of this round, the last kill he got was bit of a fade away kill that you probably would have missed in the, the carnage that VP was trying to trying to uh, enable against them. And that's a, that's a good pick. Eliminates joystick. I mean, there's your butt gone who you would like to have had to try and open up some of the vertical angles that you can get on this site as well. So uh, it's not a bad start here for Wild. And oh my word, another one for him. I mean, you looked at the change, and initially you would think the change would have been down, just they need to get more kills in their game, and Nello, for me, was never going to give you that. Nello's not a gunner. He, he never was that. It's time in m and and they've replaced him with someone who certainly at the moment is giving VP a, a tough time. Has Pasha missed drone him, or does Pasha know? Pasha knows. I think Pasha's baited everyone there because I thought he'd missed drone him as well, and Dudu definitely thought he was missed drone. Pasha has been able to steady the ship somewhat and level up that man count advantage still. A ways to go here before being able to execute onto site. VP still feel like they're in the fact finding stage of the round and of course everything is really ground to a halt given that they lost the book early on used all of the breach and charges they can. They Loading haven't really got any other ability to open up that soft Setting floor. Silver. Instead, it's going to be a more direct approach. They're going to try and get this wall open, but an impact will be sent out there and it will be successful, but part of the wall at least will be opened here. It isn't going to be enough to get through, though. Packbull, are you going to have anything to say or 
Is that going to be a hoppable? It is going to be a hop through breach, but still far less than ideal. Pipeball gives himself away, though. That's a power position from the Azami and always has been able to find him. BP, you're going to waste no time. Smoke goes down and always is going to try and stick that plant. Shepard, another round where he picks up two and Pasha to close things out. I know you question Pipeball jumping down off of that power position, Ollie, but it just shows how strong that DMR is at burning through the Azami uh, barricade. You just rip through it, you know, with a few bullets. He ha he's forced out of the position. He, he has to move or else he's going to get caught uh, by that DMR. So it's not much he could really have done from, from that position. But again, for VP, it's just they're setting up the way you'd expect them to. Very clinical. And it's just that chokehold that VP can get, it can get, you know, underneath your skin and just don't let you breathe whatsoever. So, yeah, Wild are just struggling really in towards that mid game to do Attackers enough destruction. I think the early the game from Wild, I think they dominated it, but it's just once they lose their roamers, once they lose the players who are out there trying to create chaos, no one else is then kind of following up. It's almost like you've got you've got two versions um, that the team is trying to play. Some teams are trying to play, you know, some players are trying to play very aggressive, trying to get into the face of the VP, which they should be doing. And then you've got the left. other half, which are just sitting back and letting VP set up, and that's why they're losing. Five seconds left before. And you look at a team like VP, and you, you don't feel like they're a team that do badly from behind. The they're no stranger to suffering an opening death and just getting on with it and getting the job done. And likewise, they're no, no stranger of, you know, getting an opening pick and, and then going from strength to strength. So you can never really count this team out. You have somebody outside very briefly there. I think it might have been in the tunnel downstairs as we have gone back down to the basement this time. We've got a slightly different setup going on. Opting not to reinforce the wall. Instead, just going to make some feet holes. I'm going to play a laser gate on there as well. And it will give you something to think about when you start to try and open that wall up because obviously you're not going to have the safety of putting a hard breach gadget on there that's got a long fuse time. You're now going to be looking toward something like a skeleton key or an Ash breaching round to get that job done. Swapping mag! Minute already burned. VP. Again, have the deal with this Rome game that Wild are happy enough to go for. Got a player inside the elevator. He has been pinged, but I think the hatch is going to be open for him. It's going to be Kanto again on that Rome. I think VP are happy enough to let him sit there because their main priority is going to be that open area and they have spotted out the Mira who has just unleashed a C4 but nobody's been picked up at the moment. It looks like just the one player only in the Mira by herself inside of open area. Nobody else from Wild looking to assist in her endeavor. Does have the Mira windows of course to help her but you would expect to always can maybe try and get one toss. However, I do see a Rooney Gate though is going to be deployed on the Mira window so all Dudu has to do is back up and that Azami will be able to catch any projectile. Of course, primarily going to be the Ash and the Selma charges that you would expect to be tossed at that mirror window. But again, VP taking their sweet time with this. Reload. Yeah, VP just working out how they want to try and solve this problem. You can see Joystick is trying to make something work here with the Vert. And Dudu, he's got too many what? angles to watch. Eventually will be taken out there. Brilliant bit of timing from always. I think the Twitch drone maybe was the bait there. You could hear the canister get opened. But Dudu just clearly getting caught looking the wrong way. Packbull, he's going to try and keep control of the top of blue stairs here. He's got a smoke canister, but he is going to detonate pre-placed. But the Ying is going to come through from below. Packbull, so much to think about in this position. The Candela comes through. Which way does he go? Neither is going to be the good choice here. And a drop from Dan sees him taken out. Kanto, you'd have been handy over there with the Warden glasses. Instead, we're going to see if you can get anything working from here. Lolo on the long angle. A C4 in Kanto's hand. Ripped and sent. Is he going to find the mark? Yes. Picks up one with the gun as well. Bit of damage into the hatch player, but Lolo falls. It's all now down to Kanto as Shepard's getting that plan down. The mirror window will get punched there by Pasha. Plan down successful. Kanto feels like he's run out of bullets in the prime. We're going to switch over to the secondary. We'll find the down over onto Pasha. He's on three, but needs to make it four and a counter defuse and look at the angle available. The glasses activated. Gonna dispel that Candela's full white effect. He's gonna try and bait this diffuse out now. Shepard, he's been here before. He knows what he needs to do. He's gonna go for the drop. Has he been baited? Oh. No, Kanto couldn't find the shots. Shepard, what a game he's having so far. 
how do we, he looked behind him i think he thought he was on the other hatch oh no i thought kanto had that you know i thought he timed it perfectly he gets off the diffuser right as shepherd drops midair and i thought oh surely kanto will kill him out midair he'll see him before uh shepherd will get shot off but no he, he looks behind him so unfortunate for kanto honestly i thought i thought he had it i really did but vp three rounds in a row is where is where it sits my word time out for wild as well there's probably a lot to go through there you know we only get to see portions of povs and you know a good 50 percent of it is usually the other team so i imagine that wild are having a pretty good chat about what went wrong there this extension that they're trying to do they're trying to burn time from vp they are not trying to give vp the whole map for free and whether that's by a sort of a loose roam and a bit of a lurk or whether it's through something a little bit more permanent like mirror windows played up inside of open area all the times they tried it and they've tried it different ways all the times it has failed i honestly thought Kanto was on for the clutch there yep. played it very well indeed and obviously Shepard's got the heads up there. He's dropping the hatch. He knows where Kanto is going to be, at least roughly. And he's got the LMG. I think he had the LMG on there even, so he can just spray and pray almost. Even if he doesn't, he's got plenty of bullets in the mag to keep Mouse one pressed and get the job done. VP. I don't necessarily want to say three clean rounds demo, but it's three rounds in a row. It, I mean, it certainly looks better uh, from what we've seen throughout this season of VP. You know, VP this season have just been mauled to death by really everything they've come up against it feels like um and certainly you know the stats show that you know nobody from uh from vp have been positive which is just crazy to think about you know you look at the players and the, the way that we praised them at si was what i mean a big drop off you know big big drop off compared to what what they should be but i mean this is something that vp go for you know vp whenever we think they're going to do well are just not good and everybody think vp haven't got hope in hell they are getting top fours you know it's it's absolutely crazy how it works with vp whenever we, we don't back them they do well whenever we do back them they don't do well it's crazy tough team to support i imagine if you're a, a die hard fan because you really never know what you are going to get at least today we're getting a vp that is exceptional at problem solving on the attack and we've seen a little bit of clutch factor in there as well I'm going to keep coming back to it for as long as it's relevant. Shepard, he's 5-0 and oh right now, Demo. He hasn't died you love, yet. He loves Shepard. Mate, absolutely. One of the OGs. And when you see him playing well, you know, let's get him on entry next round. Let's really give him something to... Uh, let's not do that. Give him something to let's get his teeth stuck into. Oh, Great opener Kanto. from always. Kanto He's going to get caught out there. Can I just get the, get the feeling that he's... Just a little bit lost in the source there in the site. There's a lot of information available for VP here. And we're seeing that demonstrated. Why can't he just Ooh. sit still? Just sit still. Got a down over on Pipeball as well. Pasha trying to confirm that. It does look as though Pipeball will get picked up. Keeper Barricades there doing a good job of keeping him safe. Of course, if you're using them for that, you're not using them elsewhere. Teb. Maybe going to go for a bit of a rotation downstairs, see what a nuisance he can call, but you're looking at his army. It's not like he's got an impact or anything in hand. Dan, another pick where VP are just holding angles. This is these long range engagements, Teb. Downstairs is the Azami. Question why is there an Azami downstairs? Surely you'd need those keeper barriers upstairs with the team. And Lalo will be able to pick two great kills, two headshots on the Shepherd and always. Now he's looking for a third and oh, barely misses out on that kill on the joystick. Now we'll rotate back in towards CEO desk and see what we can do over here. Pasha still on the windows with the glass. We'll fire in another smoke and will he go for the repel in? It doesn't look to be just trying to cover off that area and Pasha just finds Lolo. I didn't even see him on the scope. I don't know how Pasha did. And do do the new man on the roster what can he do attackers have recovered against three vp players who are primed and ready to take this bomb site trying to stick this diffuser they know where he is they can spot him out angles are they held well are they maybe maybe not that's a great kill on the pasture but can't get the second 
the diffuser all he was going down right beside him but he prioritized the players who were trying to cover the diffuser well it was going down then it wasn't then it was going down again it was a little bit sketchy from vp but the cover was there eventually and they knew that he was in janitor and pasha able to provide that overwatch and it's the threat really isn't it from though that repel something that i uh noticed in the dying stages of that round 30 seconds or so left on the clock and vp have still got four drones kicking around four active drones as well so you mentioned there about how does he know he's there they had so much information available to them and i don't know if that's a is that a credit on vp and their ability to keep drones alive and knowing when to use them and where to place them or is it maybe a little bit more of a concern on the side of wild of that they're not following this drone game enough they're not trying to they're not shutting down that information as much as they could be regardless of which it is vp a four nil up right now and wild are going back downstairs again to try and find some success here uh ollie i believe that fabian might have might have gaslit us into the new player's name Bomb. think of the bird oh i know which one you mean yeah the bird 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 but no bird, but no oh, not that one no, no peter no um different one the, the dodo bird the extinct birds the dodo of course that's, uh, that makes more sense i think maybe the the double o's in the end maybe free us off maybe i don't know the dodo the dodo it you know does he just want us to say ooh? Is that you know? I, I don't know what he wants us to do. But I think I think it's I think it's the dodo bird. Roger Dodger. Mm -hmm. Loading mag. I, I, I like the doo doo. I think it was a good pump. Ooh, Kanto again. Honestly, wherever this guy goes tonight, he's just getting shot. He needs to just, chill out. They're just holding angles and just waiting for him. Honestly, he's just got a death wish. That's what he's got right now. VP will have to go for that room clear again. And this is where Wild, it just, it feels very rank desk now, Ollie, doesn't it? It's just a lone Solus upstairs by himself. Gets a kill though. We'll find Joystick. Good situational awareness there from Lolo and just creates more impact, more mazes, but he's by himself. No one's with him. This is where I, this is what I mean. Remember, it's, it's very rank desk. They just seem as though they're by themselves playing for their own kills. Oh my words. Maybe it's for good reason. Lolo finds another. Kanto's been down though. I think he's been down maybe towards blue stairs, it looks like, and does get finished off by Dan. No, he's actually just down inside of archives. But there is still this roamer. Are they aware that he's upstairs now? They should be. That's where he got his last kills the last time. Lolo, still up here, creeping around. Pep finds always, and maybe Wild can get this round over the line. It's certainly looking more and more of a possibility, isn't it? If you're a minute left in the round and you're chasing shadows on that top floor, you're not leaving yourself a lot of time to try and execute with, and you look at the tools available, and whilst VP have still got some utility kicking around, they've maybe not got everything that they need for a full site execute. I don't know what the state of the Vulcan Shields is on site, and Pipeball still got a Yokai drone kicking around, so not going to be easy. Lolo, not quite single-handedly, but has been a big contributing factor into this round's success so far. Dan, he's just been pinged out on the yokai inside of open. Wild can turn their attention toward the hatches now and look to try and catch players as they fall. Packbull, he's going to take Shepard down. Dan, are you going to get caught out here? you got the pistol in hand and Lolo, he's rotating himself back down into archives. He's going to be there to pick up that final kill. You said it was a bit ranked S demo and I would agree with you, but sometimes it's an you know, if it's a golden oldie, sometimes you got to pull it out. One thing that VP surely have to look at and, and just think, okay, what have they done every round in defense? Oh, roamed their absolute brains out. That is that is being the go-to right now for Wild. I think this round for VP, they'll probably go in and they will just hunt the roamers. Players probably full five upstairs, sweep, whatever they need to do. That's probably how they'll attack the six bomb site. And this is probably where I think that the Demos ban for Wild is really worked in their favor. You know, being able to eliminate, you know, an operator that is just made for, for hunting roamers. You take that off the board, you don't leave VP with a lot of options. 
Assessment complete. I mean, there are still other options. Obviously, Deimos is a new operator, and Romans have been a problem since Siege very first came out. So there's, there's always ways and means of dealing with that. Five seconds. Maybe you look toward bringing something like a Jackal or a Nomad or, you know, something just to try and lock things down a little bit. VP, they've opted for a very favorable combination here. They've gone for Lion. Yeah, they got the Lion. Already sent out a Lion scam. Uh, a few universals. They've also got the Dokubi. Hmm. And there was, you know, not a finer match was ever made than, than a Dokubi and a Lion to hunt out a Rome game. It's going to be their way to approach things. And uh, again for Joystick, going to be on those trucks at Windows. Kanto, don't you think about it. Don't you think about it, Kanto. Don't you do it. Is he going to do, do it? He's going to do it. He's, he's got to do, 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 do it. Oh, he's been caught out on the scam there. Maybe he's not going to do it. Now he's getting his phone called. Surely. I mean, look, here's the thing. You jump out, you get your kill, then what? You just take a one for one, then... I mean, look, yeah, he's got the kill onto the buck, but he's as good as dead now. You know, very easy now for Pasha just to swing around here and get this pick. Should be anyway. Ooh, I don't know about that. There we oh, go. yeah, there it is. Yeah, Pretty fire there be. from Pasha. Mm-hmm. And, and look, he gets the one for one, but I just don't think it's worth it. I just don't. Well, he can sit on the cams and, and see if there's any value that he can gain that Change way. But, I mean, you say cams, there's not tons going on there. There's only going to be defaults to look at. So, really relying on the rest of the team now. He does have a BP kicking around. So, might be able to gain a bit of value out of that. You look at what he's removed. He's removed joystick. Joystick, for all intents and purposes, not really had uh, a sort of lights out standout game at the moment. Four and five. He's often been in that opening engagement as you would expect, but when you're on the book and you're dealing with some of these mid-floor sites, you really want that power of the skeleton key to rip open the floor. Changing oh, Pasha, be careful. <laughs> Takes a bit of damage there from his own team's breach and charge. Dodo in the elevator, see if he can just hold on to that position. Does have a getaway with that hatch being opened behind him, but... I don't really think VP are too worried about taking that elevator side of the map. They just want to try and get that quad wall open and push in towards that kitchen, of course, is what we've seen the last time they attacked here. But Teb, can you play spoiler? He's on the Oryx. It jumps his way up that hatch and just going to bide his time. The Grim has rooted away. It could be a good option here for them, though. Pasha gets eliminated from a very skinny angle. It's to be that Packful has taken advantage of. He's just trying to stay alive right now. He's moved the Keeper Barriers away from that bomb chassis. You've seen him last time. Instead, of going to try and clog up the holes as best he can. But here comes the spoiler. Tab, a quick one tap on the Pasha. Here comes the other roamer. Dodo dropped down that elevator. Picks up more kills than Dan all by himself. Finds one, but two remain and he can't get them. Wild. A great flank hitting them from all angles. Just be a little bit slippier, Wild, and it works out for you. Look at the play style there. We had Teb. He was out and about for the majority of that round. Kept himself hidden away and just struck at the right moment. You mentioned there, Dodo, he did exactly the same. He was roaming downstairs inside a basement. It was actually barricaded at the top of blue. And I don't know if that was maybe a, a sort of bit of a bluff there, but VP didn't really seem to worry about blue because of it being barricaded. But of course, it can be shot through, it can be punched, and all sorts of things can happen. And they did. Wild, successful there. Second round in the row, in a row, sorry, on the defense. It's going to feel a little bit better for them at the very least. Still, a 2-4 split. Not really what you would expect on uh, on a map like Bank, which does have some very favorable defender bomb the size. 10 seconds left. Mm -hmm. oh, it can be. I think uh, Bank is... I mean, uh, Bank isn't the most played map. You know, certainly if you look at the, you know, the overall kind of pick rate of what we've seen so far in EUL, We've only seen Bank a grand total of uh, two times. Um, now, this is going to be obviously the, the third time we'll see it, but before that, it would have been just the two. And, you know, you compare that to something like a clubhouse. We've seen clubhouse ten times. So, you know, there's five, like, almost that like five times gap of, of what we're used to seeing. So, I still think in terms of 
maps for EUL. A lot of teams still like to kind of keep this in the back pocket, like to hide that. Reloading. In terms of what statistics kind of tell us, it is still very 50-50. I think attackers can have good Reload. attacks if they can clear away utility, but if they don't, then it's very easy for defenders. So it, it certainly, I think, comes down to the pressure of the attackers, but if you know how to attack bank, it can be very easy. I like bank. I think it's one of my favorites to watch and to play. I think it's, uh, it, it really is. I think it's a map that's remained largely unchanged as well, and I think that's maybe one of the things. It was a bit of a golden map from the start. So, at least the sides of Switch now and Wild are going to be attacking. I'm going to be trying to break this defense downstairs in the basement, a defense that Virtus Pro were very successful at breaking. There is, of course, going to be things to consider in terms of burning utility and time we don't have a wealth of c4s there is one on dan but you're primarily going to be looking toward those vulcan shields the aruni laser gates and of course the smoke canisters we've got a great fly through there of the vulcan canisters three in a very quick succession there you can just go bam 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 and all of a sudden, a potential of 60 seconds is burned. But of course, it's not always how it goes. Attackers are going to want to get in and remove those sharpish. Nice use of the uh, bulletproof camera secondary effect where you can EMP uh, gadgets. You can EMP drones as expert, uh, expertly demonstrated there by Shepard. And he keeps just going to keep doing it. Just going to keep denying that Twitch drone. There will remain at least one Goyo canister for the meantime, but like I said, Shepard just keep on switching over. You can just keep destroying it. But it's just how long can he last? It's back on. Teb's ready for it. No, he's not. Teb's not back on the drone and it's going to be tricky. Can they pop the canister? It looks as though that maybe they're going to try and drop into the hatch and that's not going to work out for them. Wild. They're going to get slaughtered by VP as they drop down. VP of every crossfire in the world locked down onto that hatch. What were they thinking, Ollie? Shepard, was, I was so confused. I saw Lolo at the sort of top of garage ramp and thought, hang on a minute, Shepard was in garage a second ago. And yeah, he's still there. Lolo's just miraculously appeared in the middle of the site. I think he must have dropped the hatch or come down main stairs. But I'm not sure what Wild were thinking there because it was looking good, wasn't it? They had, they had a plan to get rid of the Vulcan canisters. They had a plan to try and get rid of some of this utility. And then it just turns into desperate hatch drops and we've got no one pushing garage. We haven't really got much of a presence in blue. It's just two wow, people dropping into sight. Come on, like we need a little bit more than that. I love the play from Shepard. You highlighted it there. It is it is very seldom, well, it's, it's not very widely known and it's very seldom used is the effect of the EMP on the bulletproof. Um, but it's fantastic for situations like that where you just need to stall out a Twitch drone for a bit. And of course, the person playing Twitch can't sit in the shock drone all the time waiting for it to come back online. You've got stuff to do. The clock's running down. So brilliant little mini game there from Shepard. VP, extend that lead yet again here. 5-2 now. And this is maybe where you start looking at Wild and thinking, you know, have they got it in him to pick up three rounds to bring this to 5-5 and potentially more to take us to an OC? Mm. With what we've seen so far tonight, maybe not. I just don't think the effort's there. It just it feels as though they're all just playing for themselves. It really that's what that's what it looks like. That's what it feels like. You look at the the defenses that they tried. They were just out and about in the room, not really working together. It was just more themselves. And you know, if they go in with that mentality into best of freeze, and you know, even against some of the T2 teams, they might they'll struggle as well. You know, they will. They can't get away with just running around like this. And you know, Ooh, they, they, they need to have that hunger. It's a nice drone out there from Lolo after seeing a down joystick and does get finished off. But yeah, just the, the interest from, from Wild just, it just doesn't look as though they care. Pasha, just going to rotate out of Tellers there. He feels like the heat's building in that part of the map. We've got Lolo upstairs inside of stock. You could do worse than just hold an angle for a time. Dodo, going to find some success from the repel. Able to take Pasha down. So two opening picks here for Wild. This should surely look like a wild round. They've got so much time to play with. They haven't got upstairs control though. Dan is going to be upstairs still along with always. He's going to drop off for now though and retreat back to the site. 
But you look at the tools that Wilder got available to themselves. They're just going to full send it down. Lolo, what are you doing there? Make Gets yourself. taken out. Nobody there to try and trade out. Kanto, he picks up two there, but he too is going to get fired off. I think someone must have missed and hit a Vulcan canister there. Packbull, he's going to pick up that final kill. Wild. They didn't necessarily go together, but they certainly got the job done there, closing out that round after a nice early advantage. But they won the round, but even little things like that is what I'm talking about. You know, he died, and there was really no reaction until five seconds, and then Kanto was there. Whereas there should have been the immediate reaction whenever the VP guys were killing Lolo, we should have seen Kanto killing them at the same time. You know, little things like that is probably what you look at from Wild and think that's probably where they've been going around, which is this team synergy where they're not communicating, they're not working together. You know, yes, they've got the round, but they need... To, I mean, are they going to get away with that again? You know, I think VP, you probably look will get another chance at the basement again, Oli, which isn't going to be easy for Wild. But, you know, they need to be making these rounds look just a little bit clearer. You know, Kanto, he got them two kills, but, you know, does Lola really have to go at that moment? They've done well to get the round. We've got to give them that at least. They picked up a round here on the attack. It's forced VP into a site switch. They're going to go upstairs into CEO. VP will punish mistakes, though. And that's something that you cannot afford to forget. See how Wild choose to approach this time. They are going to be looking to attack onto this top floor. We do have uh, a little bit of B action going on as well. Packbull, just going to send his drone over into lobby. We've got Teb on the repel. Oh, that is gutting if you are Teb. Not only has your first Selma been caught in a Wamai, but the second is in fact mute jammered off. So there's a bit more work to do here. Maybe a lack of drone and a lack of information gathering there from Wild. VP. Still got uh, the one castle barricade and Dan's pocket if they want to use that, but for a while it's just trying to run through the motions and get a lot of their main angles opened up if they can. They still, of course, have one Selma charge that they can try and get a long wall open, but it's going to be tricky. There's a few mute jammers here and there that they will have to try and disable. See, one Selma is suffering with said mute jammers and. Oh, actually, they're going to opt for trying to open up that wall on Janner. However, it's actually hit the Asami Barrier, Ollie. Very, very unfortunate for Wild. Teb's had a nightmare on the ace this time, hasn't he? I mean, even if it had hit, there was a mute jammer on the wall into Janitor, so it, it really wouldn't have made too much difference at all. You need to be getting oh, through and confused. dealing with those. Yeah, he went to try and shoot it off mm -hmm. the jam wall and it wasn't there. A couple of kills going to start to come oh, in now. Oh. Kanto, hello, you got to jump into sight. You can't just walk in there. We still got always inside a jam. Kadodo, he's going to be in double-double, trying to make something happen. But look at Pasha go. Picks up to Shepard, another. Lolo, with it all to do, he's able to limp into sight here, but he's going up against three. He's going to get a glimpse on the elbow and find one onto Pasha, but now... That should be the last. Is location known? Diffuser is going to be cold as well. Joystick just playing on the backside of this deployable shield. Lolo, aware of it. He's going to try and navigate and see if he can find any angle. He's going to get a nice angle through the drone hole there. It puts a couple of points of damage down, but every move he makes, every shot he fires, just gives his position away. And Shepard is going to be there just outside of elevators to clean up. Wild, just going in one by one, no communication, half the round still to play as well. I think that's even the more the more ludicrous thing is look how much time was left. Yeah, it's it's crazy that they're not just taking the time, talking about what they want to do, and then doing it. They just look lost. Kanto today, he is just playing for himself. That's what it looks like all the way through. On the defense, he was just couldn't sit still, was peeking everything, trying to challenge every angle. He just tried to walk in the site there for no reason. You know, Dodo's done great to get the opening pick. That's where you slow the game down. You do your drone work and think about where you want to go. Yeah, it's a bit of a tough watch, in all honesty, from the some of the mistakes that we're seeing Wild making here tonight and some of the decisions they're taking. 
BP on the flip side. I mean, you know what to expect with this side. Ten seconds to go. Expect some some good, well measured siege, and I'll keep saying it as long as it's relevant. Demo with Shepard popping off at ten and four. You calm yourself. It's a good night all round if you are a Shepard fan or a VP fan. Are you having a good night then? Um, I'm not sure if I would classify myself as a fan. I'm not sure if we're allowed You're not a Shepherd to be. Fan. I'm not sure if we're allowed to be fans of teams be fan in of particular, player. but I can be a fan of a player. Yeah, I'm a fan of You're a Shepherd fan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Wait, we're not allowed to be fans of teams. Who said that? Oh, you just did. Oh, but I, I mean, I think it would be slightly but unprofessional, wouldn't I it? Hate to, I hate to break something to you about me. <laughs> You're a wild fan? No. Uh. Oh. Well, that's not, you know, G2 wild, close enough for the way, way Siege have been played at the moment. Match point for Virtus mm -hmm. Pro then. 6-3, three, three chances at converting it into a map point as well. Big basement. And they get to go downstairs to the basement. So, I mean, you look at this on paper and you think it should be done and dusted. Basement's been a successful site for them to hold so far. And they have opted for quite a sticky lineup here. Look, joystick rolling back the years on the Jaeger. It's not often that you see a Jaeger brought, especially inside of competitive siege at the moment, mainly due to changes to some throwables and more importantly, a change to the ADS system where it will just catch one, go offline and then come back online at a later mm -hmm. point. So one thing that you can certainly see from VP is that they have chosen to go for a full turtle defense, full bunkered, not wanting to roam, everyone in sight, playing off the utility. I'm a little bit surprised that, you know, even if you go for a turtle, that usually you would see somebody try and hold server for just a little bit, but they haven't even attempted that. Uh, which, yeah, it, it's a big surprise. You see the Goyo Cancers will start to get popped. There is no Twitch, though. They're just getting shot from angles that are going to be found on the hatches, and Odo's trying his best to get that one, and he successfully does so. There is still the Echo and Shepard. We'll rotate one all the way up towards squares. This is to give out some information of when the push is going to come from. I mean, this could actually be quite smart if you think about it, Ollie. Whenever you get, you know, you watch out for these echo cameras, you're always watching for them to come out of the site. You're never going to expect the echo cam to be placed behind you in this scenario. That's actually quite genius from Shepard. That's beautiful. We've got Pipeball. He's on drone. He's got no idea that this yokai drone's That's ahead brilliant. of him. And the plant is guaranteed to get denied at this point. Yeah, you can wait for the fire to disperse, and Pipeball's going to do just exactly that. We do have Teb on the hatch above, but at least one of these plants is going to get denied through the yokai drone and Shepard. All he's going to do is bide his time. Yoke could be called, comes through. That could slow things down a little bit. Shepard is going to have to answer extremely quickly as the kills start to fly. But he is still alive and will be able to deny the plant. But no, the plant's gone deep. He has to rotate. He's able to deny the first. Five seconds left on the clock. Dan coming through. Glass is activated. A C4 gets sent out. Will it clip the wall? Yes, it will. But no, Babel comes off the plant. Dan gets the job done regardless. Three kills on the round and the C4 is enough in the end. VP. They are going to take bank here tonight. Seven rounds to three. Ollie, Michael didn't come off the plant. Shepard forced him off the plant. That echo drum from behind was rotated into sight and stopped that plant. Look, I think Wild rushing deep. Yeah, was the correct call. Whenever you know you don't have enough time, you're up against the smokes. But the echoes save the day. You know, that that's what it comes down to. It's down to Shepard. Um, so really, for me, man, the match has to be Shepard. Yeah, we, we praised them on the attack. We praised them on the defense. Yeah, a blinder of a game from him. He had a fantastic game, didn't he? You know, he went off. I think he started 5-0 and oh, uh, after the first three rounds, potentially. I know he got two double kills. He got double kill in round one, double kill in round two, single kill in round three. So 5-0. and oh. I think he ended 10-4, and 11-5, and five, somewhere in sort of that sort of range. Um, but yeah, you mentioned there about the, the, the Yokai drone coming in of course, and denying the plant. Some real fancy footwork there for that one. VP played exceptionally well tonight, as we kind of expect them to do on a bank. It hasn't been the best stage for them, but they certainly went out on a good performance here tonight. We're going to send it over to the desk, and they're going to break it down. Thank you very much, gents. And yes, it is a Virtus Pro victory, an overwhelming one to hold on to those 65 points.
for the Invitational Reminder. Number one team in EU gets 100 points. 65 for their eighth place is not too shabby. Though, welcome back to the Alice Desk. I'm Milos with me, our fresh bean. We're going to have to break things down because it is set. Wild are at the bottom and Virtus Pro have recovered fresh. Yeah, and I think it's uh, what we wanted to see from Virtus Pro, really. Yeah. Um, they got themselves onto their map pick. You know, they will pick bank in a best of three or a best of five. It's literally their favorite yep. map. Yep. Got themselves onto it. Really, really dominant uh, attack path. 4-2 could have, uh, actually, it looked like it could have got away from Wild. They had to recover a couple of rounds there. Um, and really after that, I don't think Wild showed enough substance on their own attacks. I think they kept falling short. You know, we saw it right at the end there. Yokai drones, late round stuff. It's as pro, you know what you're going to be against. You've got to be ready for that. And they weren't ready for anything. It's exactly according to the script we expected. There is not much to add to that because it's just such a cut, clear cut game, you know? It's just. Let's get it over with. We knew how it's going to end, and it ended exactly <laughs> that way. The place that was exactly what we expected. It's like there's nothing that surprised me, surprised you, or surprised anyone. Uh, uh, the kind of risk of sounding a little bit disrespectful, it's like Wild almost, you know, were expecting that themselves. Yeah. With the map pick, with the fact that they've thrown in. Now, we don't know if they've kicked Nello in terms of this lineup. We don't know if they've benched him. All we know is they've thrown their sub in for a game that. In really, it didn't matter. It did matter as far as their side point yeah. concerned. Um, maybe they'll live to regret that decision, to be fair. But we'll circle back to Wild, you know, I guess at some point. But for Virtus Pro specifically, did we see any shift, any change today in comparison to what they had in their last play day where, I mean, they had a game against Fnatic. They went to Max, to close to Max, with the eight to six win for Fnatic there. Did you see any changes, anything that, Looked like VP were more comfortable. I mean, it looks like Virtus Pro because it's the map Virtus Pro wants to play. Yeah. However, just because of their opponent, there's nothing I want to judge on Virtus Pro's side. Just simply put, because this wasn't an opponent worthy of comparing yourself towards. Because if you start comparing yourself to Wild, well, you're not in a good spot to begin with. So we saw good things from them, but that was just literally the basics of the basics. This is what Virtus Pro does. They did it again, and that's it. I think one person that always is the old reliable for Virtus Pro is Shepard. And yep. we have to talk about him. So Fresh, please lead us in. Yeah, absolutely. So Shepard had a great day today. Obviously 10 and four on the KD, one entry kill. He also got one VX and his Yokai drones were instrumental in the very last round there. And I think old reliable, there's a lot of conversations about Shepard as being a top support player in the world. Um, and there is no doubt he shows it time and time again. Not the best stage, you know, it must be said, not the best stage for him personally, as is the same with every member of Virtus Pro, but a big performance from him today, certainly. Thank you very much, Fresh. And yes, that is Shepard that we see. Big performance from him, as we've expect. This has been, you know, years. But joining us on the interview is Joystick. Hello, Daniel. How are you doing? Hello, hello, guys. I'm, I'm fine. Congratulations on the win. 65 SI points. I mean, Sure, you know, the, the stage is is done, but what can we expect from VP through, I guess, the rest with open quals and all coming up? I don't know, actually, I think right now we need to fix uh, like our defense side because like we are really disappointed in our defense right now. We make a lot of mistakes through the stage, so I think there is the main point to work right now. When it comes to the work, you say, the map pool, obviously you guys got into Bank here, which is one of your absolute favorite maps. Were you guys surprised at all by this? Did you guys prepare for Bank? Uh, no, actually it's our best map, so we played it like every time good. So we work on other maps right now, and I think especially our mistake was through the stage again that we picked like a lot of Clubhouse because right now we are struggling in it, but we still trust in it, and I think it was a big mistake. Looking back at this stage as a whole so far, obviously you guys have not been in the position that we expected of you guys. Is there something you can go more in depth on and explain to us? Because me and Jack have been kind of asking questions towards you guys in terms of have it been a play style change or is it just one of those bad stages where things don't click? Uh, I don't think that uh, there, there is nothing especially changed in meta like after the LAN, after the six invitational, so nothing changed. I think we like uncontrollable starting to play more aggressive after the LAN because when you're playing LAN, you're like, we are playing more aggressive there. So 
we are making a lot of mistakes in defense again. So I think it's the main point that we are like uh, low on the scoreboard, mm. and and that's it. Our defense was so bad. We we make a lot of like four v two rounds. We're losing it, and and that's it. Yeah, but. Every game was super close. I mean, like we every time lose seven five seven five, so it's not like seven zero every time. So for us, it was a bad, bad stage overall. But I, I I don't know what to say. Like a coin flip yeah, would bad, have pretty bad much stage, bad stage. Yeah. Something happens. Yeah, a coin flip would have pretty much brought it over to your side. Now, one thing we know that Virtus Pro always takes a while to warm up to LAN and then from LAN warm up, warm back up into online. Do you feel you've gotten to that point here to get yourself over to Manchester? Because your fight is not done here in Europe. And we all remember how well you did at SI. Manchester is just around the corner. Yeah, of course, like every team can go through the qualifiers and we are really, uh, we, we really wants to do it. Like every team wants to, so we will prepare for it and I hope we, we can make it. Joystick, anything to wrap it all up to say to the VP fans out there? Of course, guys, every, everyone, thank you for the support. Even if we have like some bad times, we are still supporting us. We really all love you. And of course, mwah, thank you, guys. Mess that kid. Don't thank forget you. to buy the skins, our skins and skins of the other teams, of course. Oh, yeah. There yeah. it is. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. Thank you very much, Joystick. Congratulations again on the win. And good luck through Open Quals. We will get to see you through in uh, Manchester through the LCQs. So that is it. Congrats for Virtus Pro and congrats for Joystick. We hope to see them do better later, but I think it's time for us to wrap I, up. I mean, he knew it. Like, the, we talked yeah. about it in the pregame. Every game they've been playing has been close. Sometimes the coin flips the other way and you just don't get those points. This stage might have been that. We have seen some weaknesses from them on top of that, but who knows? Honestly, I really feel it's that transition from land to online that always hit yeah. BP and it's been hitting them for years. So who knows? Maybe they've had the time to recover. Though that was game number two for you here at EU League. When we are back, we'll continue on for some more action. See you in a bit. Okay, let's start. I think my first option will be... Shaiko from BDS. I don't really need to speak much on Shaiko because Shaiko is probably, if not, the best player in the world. Put as a second support, because I think his playstyle fits the draw very well. He's really, he, he's amazing. He has one of the best teams in the game. My first pick is British, the best support in the world. I would pick Banger for my team. I would put him like... Lurking on my roster. My second pick uh, will be uh, Deadshot. I've played a lot with him and huge teammates. Never negative, always positive. He's good at entry. He's good at playing more uh, flex. Knows how to how to start in entry. So for my dream team, I will pick myself because he's like a good entry. He really plays good, like he has strong gun power, he makes a lot of frags, so it's important as well. At the moment I'm the best uh, first entry on the game. I think I will take uh, Tyrant. He showed a lot of good face during all the stages did uh, with the MNM. I think we need more support here. Shepard is like the hard support. Because he's one of the good support on uh, on EU. He's like the most like calm, cool and collected like player. Has experience in the back lane. A really good statistic of plans. Yeah, we take that. Of course, of course. He's just a goat. As an entry, as a flex. He can play whatever he wants, whatever he wants. To be honest, no, I, I would pick Deepak and I would put Deepak as support. Deepak is like the second flex support. He's really good. Deepak's probably one of the best fragging supports in the world. I would say it's Noah from uh, ITB and he's keep improving, uh, he's also playing uh, really good uh, as a flex. I would have Azza from my team on flex. He helps me a lot uh, with like calling and stuff. A really good teammate. I think I will pick Alemao. Sometimes he's calling crazy stuff. To IGL, I would take a like effect from BGS. For me, I think it's one of the most talented young players. For pick, I would pick Doki. He's really good at entry. Like even if he dies early, like he's still like super super vocal and like he's a super positive guy. But I think it's important to have that X factor in your team. I'll pick always to like vertical. I will pick Savage from the Team Secret. I think he's 
reliable player. When we're playing screams versus them, it's really hard to play versus him. He has ideas to give to a team, so I think on, on a flex roll he, he could perform with that team. I think I'd probably do Lilun from Wolves as my coach. Her players speak of her really highly. The last option for me will be coach for Wild to Zeus because like they have really good performance in the last year stage. So for the coach, it's Agdar. I know him personally, he's French of course. No matter the player you will give him, he will make result out of it. Put the, the, the answer coach to be the coach, but he would have to listen to Benji, so. Really working hard since, since the beginning of the game. I uh, learned a lot with him, so he will be the coach for this team. Welcome back, everybody, to Blast R6 AU League. Game number three is about to begin in a few minutes. That is Fnatic versus BDS. There isn't a ton on the line here as BDS are already number one. What's, what's going on over here? You, it's, it's Fresh I'm Bian, by the way. It's side eye from Fabian. It's Fresh Bian. They're messing around on the other side. Hello, I'm Milosh. We're having fun. We're actually, we actually got a great game too for Virtus Pro. We did. But 
you know, hey, got them 65 SI points. Not as much for Wild, none actually at the end of the day. But for this game here, BDS are already cemented as number one in Europe. They can just get even more ahead. But on the Fnatic side, Jack, what can be played in terms of just pure points? So Fnatic are kind of like, they are qualified to playoffs but they could finish sixth, fifth, fourth, maybe even third, could be wrong on that third comp. Sixth, fifth or fourth, I think, is where Fnatic will finish based on the result of this game. And I think the fact that they've qualified to playoffs is big for them because this roster last year were known as Koi. Mm -hmm. Then they were known as Rogue. I don't know if they went back to Koi again, whatever. Anyway, this roster last year didn't make the playoffs at all. They had to play for open qualifier playoffs twice to get into the LCQs. So for them, the fact they're even here, I think is big for them. They've shown a lot of potential this season. They've shown some stuff that they've really let go where you've had a what the moment with them in terms of what's going on. But I think overall so far, a competitive stage from Fnatic who will be looking to kick on tomorrow. For being a fresh team like that just got put together for this stage, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Before this day, we obviously do prep before the day, right? I hacked into the main frame of the <laughs> Fnatic headquarters, basically the entire strat book that they have and they i found fanatic yeah i hacked fanatic because i'm, I'm oh, you know no. like the kids say i'm down with the hacker roonies i know did you find the olaf boost what i found the olaf <laughs> boost but i also find, <laughs> found this picture and this is the picture of what would have happened if ends had won their game and it's basically did you win a round yes congratulations you've made it into the playoffs and then no, well, shame on you. So this is the entire strat and the entire playbook for today's game against Fnatic before the end's game, which means that all my prep is useless and everything I've done is <laughs> for nothing and I'm standing here like a clown. That's a regular story, Fabian. Wow, uh, you standing here like a clown. But we can adapt it actually because, yes, if they won a round and, you know, and yeah. managed to win, they would have made playoffs and all that good stuff. If they now win a round, they get another five SI points. So there's maybe that on the line. It's that. <laughs> yeah, it's just a seat. They now have 75 for one round. If they win one round, they get 80 SI points. And again, the team that they'll be going up against will come on to them. But BDS actually lost out of SI this year by five points. So five points could be all it takes. Absolutely. And, you know, this this game now is lower stake than it was, but there is the potential to bump up in the seating, something Fnatic are looking for. But on the other side, it's BDS. Now, it's no surprise that Freshbin have talked about BDS this entire stage. I've been on the receiving end of it every single co-stream I've done <laughs> through the stage. And every time I'm like, I agree. But you're out of line at no. some point. I'm surprised you don't mute us. Like, oh, these guys, they're, they're talking about BDS again. again. Why do they love BDS so much? They don't goddamn stop winning, that's why. What makes them so good is something I cannot even wrap my head around. I mean, for being such a new team that they put together, having the strategical depth in combination yeah. with team play and communication that seems to be on point, on top of that being on point in just two months, they've also changed the language they're communicating Absolutely. in. So it's just like, what part do they not blow our mind in? Well, they blow our mind in every single way because they shoot hard, they communicate well in a new language, they have a depth of theory that it's hard to get in two months. I mean, I would say it's hard to get in six months, even a year, some teams yeah. don't reach that depth. There's everything that they have and they just mind-boggling. I actually, in my old life, before I switched into all this video gaming nonsense, I used to be an auditor in, in finance. And when you're in audit, you've got to go and do a big checklist and, and tick off. Mm -hmm. And BDS have gone, right, new team, change language, tick. Increase map pool, tick. Become the best team in the world, tick. Sign all the best players, tick. Like every single checklist you would want for a team, it feels yep. like they've got absolutely everything and they're all over it. They've, they've literally completed it. And they were prepared for it because when we were hearing, this change has been in the making for a couple of months prior to the start of EUL. So BDS were thinking ahead. And if you would have told me two years ago that Shaiko would be playing in English, I'd not believe you. You're lying to me and you're trying to bamboozle me. I don't know how much he individually is playing in English. Yeah. He probably speaks I kill. <laughs> I dead. kill. But the thing is, it's, it's look, yeah. dead. <laughs> it, oh, looking at the change of how he as an individual has done as well, yeah. we're seeing him play flex operators yeah. and support operators. At what point in the history of the world would you see Shaiko play Flores? I'd never imagine it. Depth of map pool, depth of operator pool is something yeah. we've seen from BDS, from every single player that is especially users who've been talking about mm -hmm. uh, extensively through the stage. But our map bans are set and ready. We're going to go to Chalet as BDS had the final ban. They will take away Skyscraper with Fnatic starting off on defense on Chalet. 
depth of map pool for BDS is one thing. Does Fnatic have what it takes for Chalet today, Jack? Yeah, so for Chalet, I mean, Fnatic have won it twice. They beat ITB and VP on this map. It's becoming a fast favorite of theirs. For BDS, it's lower down the preference order, but they have that emphatic victory against G2 on it as well. So both teams unbeaten on this map this stage. Adding M&M players onto the BDS roster have really started to show that they can play this map. Yep. And just honestly, any gun map that you put them on, which is Border and Chalet the most in my eyes, it's a mistake taking BDS to those maps just because of the mechanical ability on the individual. The same for Fnatic though. When Fnatic won that Chalet the first time, they said Tyrant brought a lot from M&M for our Chalet. So actually we've got a little M&M off Matt, on Chalet. M &M off. Yeah. An M&M off on Chalet. <laughs> Honestly, it, it, it really breaks people's hearts. Sort of like people have been watching kind of that old MM roster over the years and what we got to. But you know what? It just means we get a brighter future with both, with all the players now pretty much on these rosters. So let's pull up our casters. XR Troika and Demo join us once more. Your little Amuse Bush, you've had that for game number two. But <laughs> BDS versus Fnatic. Ollie, this is, you know, a big one. Everybody's looking forward to it. Less stakes now, but uh, I guess Leon's setup and how his background is on its own has to be yeah. a big boon for Fnatic. Well, we, you know, we're slowly going through all the players and I think we're just sort of making up awards as we go, aren't we? We've got best <laughs> background there for Leon. We've got best monitor setup. I mean, I'm going to change mine after the stream um, <laughs> that Dodo had earlier. He had that sort of C-3PO looking arm thing coming out there. Um, for me, <laughs> Milosh, though, you know, talking about the siege, it's been a pleasure to watch BDS this stage. And I think that's the that's the key takeaway. I love watching top level siege. I, I, I love it. And that's why I do this. And to get to see BDS play, it is always a good time. Um, they're up against Fnatic today. We've spoken about the game. It, you know, it's not got the most stakes written in behind it, but it's always going to be a good one. You know, Demo, um, you know, I know I know that right now you might have some turmoil in you because you're a big Leon Gitz fan. I, I know that you, know, you love him to death, but do, do you think Fnatic have what it takes to take down BDS that we've been talking about this entire stage? No. <laughs> <laughs> Short and sweet. Short and sweet. You know, with friends like that, who needs enemies, right? This is what I've got to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you're going to have to deal with them this entire game. We're going to be enjoying the cast over here in the studio. Gentlemen, all yours. Milosh, thank you very much indeed. Demo, I hope you've got a few more words when we get on into the server. We do have Fnatic and we do have BDS here. And we are going to be going to, I was going to say Sunny Chalet. It looks quite sunny. It can be snowy and sunny at the same time, can't it? Yeah, uh, isn't that why the skiers wear those big massive visors? I tell you on what, their, snow their blindness. Snow mm. blindness is snow joke. <laughs> And you had the nerve to say, look what I have to deal with, and you've just dropped that. <laughs> uh, I'm still chuckling. It's great. I love it. I absolutely love it. We are going to be headed into game very shortly here. As we've mentioned there, going into Chalet. And we have got BDS versus Fnatic. Full rosters on either side, ready to throw down. I'm loving the history between these two. They touched on it on the desk there, Demo. I think back to the glory days for the Eminem roster and Chalet was a map that they were fantastic on. And we've got Eminem players on both sides of the field here. We've of course got Tyrant, who was part of that roster over on Fnatic. And then you look toward the other side and you've got Yuzus and Solotov. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, the guys kind of beat me too. I was going to go in depth and talk about how Tyrant has kind of changed the way Fnatic can play Chalet. Equally, I was going to say the same the way that Yuzu's Assault of can do the same for BDS. Um, yeah, it was a love map by Eminem. Probably one of the best teams in the world, in my opinion, the way they played that map. And then obviously the teams disbanded and they went all their different ways. Tyrant, this is just his favorite map. You know, I seen it the first time they played it in the league and he, was, he just seemed so comfortable, so at home. He was just moving around the map, you know, just fluid, um, killing everything that moved. But just SBDS team at the moment. You know, there's no getting away from them. They're just, there isn't. They are just that good. They really are. Um, they're probably one of the only super teams that have kind of lived up to their name. Has to be said. I think you're right. And I think part of that was, of course, they were one of the teams that had quite a nice break at the start of this year. Um, obviously, it wasn't a nice break missing out on SI, but 
it was maybe a break that they needed to put them in this position that they're in at the moment. Um, you know, we often talk about burnout and things like that from teams that just go from event to event to event. And eventually you see that performance dip over a long enough timeline. BDS on the flip side, they were able to use that time to acclimate themselves into the new roster. Obviously, they've had language change as well, which, I, I mean, still, I don't think that can be understated as to how huge that is to, to go from playing a game and you're, pri you know, speaking in your primary language of French for so, so long, and then to switch over into English because of an addition of, you know, a couple new players and to sort of broaden your horizons for the future um, is, is impressive enough in itself. So BDS have definitely put a lot of work in at the start of this year, 2024, and, uh, you know, towards the end of last year, 23. And they've reaped the rewards so far inside of EU League. And knowing knowing this BDS roster demo, they're not going to take the foot off the gas here just because it's the last play day and they're already qualled. No, they're going to want to to finish as dominant as they can. You know, they're probably a team that would have liked to have finished flawlessly, apart from just that that little blip that we'll say that they had, of course, uh, whenever they came up against Ent. And it really just what it, it, it certainly was a blip because then they kind of kicked on from there and haven't been beaten since. So, yeah, right now for BDS, they want to see if they can get through the stage, being the top dogs and just putting everyone else to bed. Activating all Fanatic. Again, it's just, I think for Fnatic, it's to play today and gain a bit of confidence going into the playoffs. I think that is going to be the main thing for this side and, and see how they can fare against, you know, a very strong team that you never know. They might have to end up playing whenever we head into the playoffs. Right now for BDS, they're just probing their way through the map and it seems to be a fairly standard take at the moment, Ollie. They're trying to see if they can open up that main wall first of all and get themselves in and ready to see if they can try and get that diffuser down. In terms of denial, there is a, a fair amount of that still from Fnatic. You have the C4 from Tyrant and Jigsaw. They could just toss them over the half wall, but they also could rotate below if uh, BDS allow them to. Right now for BDS, it does look as though they have a whole lot of pressure below. Maybe just the one guy outside of West Main. Everyone else, though, stacked up towards the fireplace. Shaco seeing if he can get some value out of the Flores drone there. Jigsaw just forced out of Piano. Got three players from Fnatic all sort of bunched up there. Shaco, he's going to walk in and pick himself at one. He knows that there's another there. The information is available to him. Doesn't need to strike right now, though, as the plant does start to go down. Can look to try and stun out. C4 over the top. Messes. It will be unsuccessful. Oh. Jigsaw going to get downed in process. The plant has now been confirmed. And Leaky Fact, he can hop himself outside. No worries at all. Tyrant on the rotate now. Tough task here for the remaining Fnatic players to try and retake into this side, especially when you got Solotov challenging on the open breach there. Tyrant fully checking every corner inside a piano, but we've got players established outside in the post here. Tyrant going to get the better of Leaky Fact there. You can see the diffuser, but immediately gets swung. Solotov picks up two. I'm not sure if they just lined up for him there. Oh my word, Tyrant. Did you see that? Ollie just misses the C4, else he would have been guaranteed two kills along with taking down that diffuser being planted. Fine margins there from Tyrant. Had the right idea to go below, seeing that BDS weren't really interested in holding downstairs. But he just misses the C4. He just. I don't. I don't. I mean, here's the thing. How do you miss the C4s now, Ollie, with the new lineups? How is that possible? Maybe he's turned them off. Always a possibility. I have heard talk of some players wanting to turn them off because it is a bit of a distraction. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I, and this is, I'm not likening myself to pro players, but I have died messing around with the lineup on a C4 and I've just had so, I've got so tunnel visioned into it that I've just, I've just been shot in the back. So there are circumstances where you might want to turn it off, but Tyrant there maybe just getting a little bit unlucky on the C4. It was a good idea, and had that C4 been successful, the round would have played out very differently indeed. As it stands, BDS pick up round number one, and Fnatic move us on to a second choice site. They don't want to have another go upstairs. Instead, they're going to take us to Bar and Games. Oh. Already 1-0, and I'm, I feel exhausted already. Just, I don't know why. I think just watching, you know, these two teams where you've got BDS who have looked, you know, so, so good, but Fnatic who honestly, if they didn't have the little inconsistencies that they've been having, they would be right up there in, in, in the top, top spot as well. I honestly believe that. I think Fnatic have been, Fnatic are probably the closest team to being great, but aren't 
actually great yet, if that makes sense. On the cusp, I would yeah. potentially say. Mm. Right there's, there, just right on the edge. There's a lot of potential there. And I think they recognise that, right? They, yeah. You know, they know that they're uh, they know that the position that they're in. They know the quality of players they've got. That's often one of the most important things. Tyrant, he's gonna be getting droned out upstairs. Trying to deal with the Brava drone there as it's rinsing through any utility available. It's gonna be Bree Day. He's able to pick up a kill there over onto Jigsaw. Jigsaw not having the best of time at the moment. Opening pick in round number two as well here. And it just leaves Tyron a little bit exposed here. Jegs is going to rotate himself up to just play the top of those library stairs and see if he can do anything to assist him up there. Still one more Kiba barrier for Tyron that he can put down if needed. But BDS, this is just the cam before the storm. This is where... You know, speaking to some of the ITB guys, whenever they played against uh, BDS, you know, they described it as uh, they've never played a game where they've just felt pressured the entire time. You know, they they just, you, they couldn't breathe in a game like that. And that's just the way BDS are. BDS will just make you feel just as though, you, you know, your skin is just itching all over and you just can't stop scratching. That is the vibe that they give off. Just, you know what's coming. You have to itch and BDS, look at this. This is the class we're all about. The fuser goes down. Nobody has died yet for BDS. They're still not dying. It's all top of a double. Jax is able to get one, but BDS just so, so clinical. They take what they want and they do it in style all at the same time. And Jax is going to have to give himself up here because you don't see BDS losing from this position. They have the fuser down right in the window. He's even going to be flamed off. They're forcing him towards the, the fraggers of the side. They're forcing them into the sight lines of EFAC. Jax is walking aimlessly at fire. Drop shot there onto EFAC. But that's all he's going to get. It looks like his diffuser is now out of reach and out of time for him. He got his kill. He got his two kills, I guess. Says no to the Banshee. Places down the pocket shield. And BDS will shake the head. He, he fact, didn't show what was he doing. He hasn't even tried to clutch it. Yeah, that's one of those where obviously BDS have won the round and it's and everyone on there is going to be really happy. But Leaky Fact is going to be a little bit annoyed because he died to a drop shot like that. And it's just like, he wasn't even trying to win. He's just padded his stats by one kill and I was the sucker that got taken out. Yeah, um, yeah. But you know, that's a, that's a small drop in the ocean in the context of the game because BDS again have got that plant down two rounds in a row now. We've only seen two rounds, but of the rounds we've seen, they've got the plant down and they've done it in style, as you mentioned, Demo. There was two players. We had Tyron and Leon both just tunnel vision focused on main door and it was Solotov there and he was just distracting there's a, there's a whole plan going on on the other side of the map and Solotov's just got two players attention and not letting go of it at all it really does you know you, you've got to keep your eye on this BDS side because BD, uh, Bride at some point in the round on the attack his little player card on the left there is just going to light up orange and he will be getting the plant down it's fantastic to see, and BDS haven't really come up against much obstacle yet at all. We've got a couple of players on the side of Fnatic that haven't got a kill yet, Deepak and Jigsaw. And of the players that have kills, only Jegs has two. And we saw that one of those was pretty impactless at the end of the last round. So not even really on the pitch in terms of the gunfights either at this moment in time. They're going to want to try and get a handle of that fairly quickly because BDS take another round here. It confirms that three side rotation and they'll just rinse and repeat and do it again. Oh, BDS. And once again, having to play pretty quick in towards that fireplace. There's going to be three players in and around that top blue area. EFAC just barely misses out on a kill onto Jags and somebody else has scurried past them as well. But is he aware of the amount of bodies that are actually going to be stationed up here for Fnatic? Almost gets himself into another engagement before Jigsaw swings around to assist Tyrant, but look at the help on two players of Fnatic, Tyrant and Jags. Well, Jags even much so more now as he's been eliminated, but Tyrant's still on that little bit of HP left. So it's going to be a one-for-one -one trade for both teams, a sledge for them, Lucy. Certainly, I think the defense has won in that regard. Banshees would have already been placed, but certainly having that sledge would have been nice to have for any vertical work that you can do, of course, on this kitchen bomb site. Going to start to get this wall open now. Solid off. He can place his Selmers on. There will be a mute jammer that is going to deny that for the time being. So 
something to deal with here. Impact EMP is sent out, and that wall can now be open. Jigsaw, forced off. Users, he's going to capitalize on the trade that Shaiko was able to get onto Jegs and start to hack those cameras. That'll give Leaky Fack at least something to watch here. Of course, not the end of the world seeing Leaky Fack fall as he the main shot caller here on the side of BDS, and you can really start to orchestrate this push and almost an inevitable plant at this point with the way that we see BDS playing. Deepak tucked in downstairs. He does have the ACOG just on the other side of the desk, the dining table. And he's trying to hold an angle, but look at the drones. <laughs> I think they know you're there, Deepak. It's probably time to move. Deepak needs to be careful. BDS, remember they can just sense that weakness, they will just go at you at 110%. It's a great pick there from BDS, and that certainly now opens them up to... Ah, oh, just gives the site wide open for them. Shaiko has completely neutralized anyone who could have stopped that diffuser from above, and now he's posed on the hatch as well. Uses tries to switch around, but it's going to be Brida just on the breach. A C4 goes out from Leon from below, but now they know exactly where he is, and Uses gets that kill. My word, BDS just ripping Fnatic to shreds. How does Shaiko find the time in the round to use his Flora's drones, give the team value in that way, and pick up three kills? Like, he got the, he got the direct trade from Leaky Fack at the start of the round. It looks like it was just a, oh, Fnatic have got the opening pick. Well done, Leaky Fack, you got caught out. But bang, Shaiko just appears out of nowhere. Jumps in the Flores drones for a little bit. Bish Bash Bosh gets a bit of work done and still picks up two to close the round out, ending with three kills. Unbelievable stuff here from BDS. Great time management. And so far, they are running Fnatic Riot here on Chalet. Just so easy for BDS, isn't it? Just another round where they get you know i mean they didn't get the diffuser down that round i don't think they did but they yeah, were they going for it they, they, yeah. they, they could have done but it's be. four yeah. versus one isn't it like it's yeah the stats may not show it but i'm gonna count it three diffusers are three diffusers yeah, That's, I'm, I'm gonna say it there you know the stats won't show up but we all know I think there'll be some down. people that have got a problem with that demo they will i mean let me actually let's actually have a look at, and see you know the actual plant stats uh, for bds because i would say that certainly they're their team play has been, you know, fairly sometimes focused on getting that diffuser down. Certainly whenever someone like Brede, who has nine plants in the league. Honestly, a little bit slow for his standards, but, you know, you've, you've got EFAC in there with two and the rest of them all in one. So it's not been as, as crazy as what a team like Secret, where, you know, Adrian has been planting like crazy, but still pretty high up there with the plants based on just the, the average of the league. Well, I mean, Adrian's been doing a bit of everything, hasn't he? He's still dominating a lot of those leaderboards for, you know, top whatever it is. Um, so it's not going to be uh, all too easy to compete with that, but Three Day has been doing it for a lot longer, and uh, you better believe if there's a chance he's going to get the plan down. Tyrant, a curious cat there, taken on out. Just gets caught looking there at Piano Window. Shaiko, more than happy to move on through. Solid off. he's going to back it up. Another round. It's not just a single opening pick. When it rains, it pours here for this BDS side. Picking up two opening kills here. Leon, ooh, gets a chance there. He's going to dip away. Puts a pump there into Leaky Fack, but Leaky Fack is able to just retreat back a little bit. It's another great start from BDS. Just a blistering pace, but Fnatic give themselves up way too easily, and this is where they might be out of options, and they're just trying to walk and just try and get some kills, but up against BDS where, you know, their firepower that they have, Ollie, we know, you know, look, look who they brought in, look at the two players they brought in, just to just almost reinforce, yeah, we can kill, you know, let alone that, that Shaiko bloke in the team. What, it's, the six and one Solotov? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's ludicrous. You know, you just, you do look at this team and think, who's going to take them down? You know, surely they're going to be a shoo-in for, for Manchester. Obviously, I know they're not there yet, but I think everyone... Hey, look, you, you, you'd be safe to say we'll probably see them there in some shape or form because they've just been so good at the moment. Uh, and yeah, you'd expect them to make that deep run in that competition as well.
So, and, and look, every win that BDS get, just it makes them look stronger and stronger. And as time goes on, they just... You have no words. You have no words for them that's anymore. It. And, and for a roster that's recently made changes, it's exactly what you want. And, you, you know, you, you, you don't want that dip in form, do you? You want to run that honeymoon period for as long as you Hit possibly can. Run. and keep it going. Yeah, they've done it for a whole stage. Breeday looks to be for, sure, is shaping up for a plan here, but Leon has something to say about Solitoff on the backstab. Leaky Fat is going to shut Deepak down, and the final couple of kills ring on through. Again, another situation where BDS were just maneuvering there for that plant, and Fraggers feeling that like they had a couple more things to say before it came down to that. Again, another tough round for Fnatic, mainly due to losing those two players early on. There's so many angles to watch when you start to think about that snowmobile basement. You, you can't afford to to not have eyes on blue, you know, connector hatch, main stairs, breaches if they're open, back wine door. There's, there's, there's a lot going on. And Fnatic just getting caught short there. They're going to choose now to take their tactical timeout and see if they can steady the ship ahead of the remaining defending rounds. Can we also just remember about what uh, Fabian brought up on the desk about how Fnatic just seemed to get one round to secure themselves into that fifth place position? Yeah. If they don't, then they go to sixth. Which all of a sudden G2 have went, okay, how did we get, how did we get the fifth? Oh, we didn't even play today. How have we jumped <laughs> up to? Or not jumped up to, we jumped up one. We didn't even play today. So that that's that's crazy to think about. But that is kind of the reality um for them. And on paper, one round sounds realistic, doesn't it? Regardless of who you're going up against. As a team moving into, you know, going into the play day, you'd fancy yourself to get one round. When the reality starts to set in and you think, okay, hang on a minute. We're four nil down. We've got two and rounds left in the defense. Yeah, it's not been close. Six and kills in four rounds. What are we going to do to get one round? Because oh dear. that then starts to become a little bit of a problem. And you don't want to be trying to get it on the attack if BDS go flawless here because you're not going to have enough opportunity to do it. You're going to get one chance. So there's a, a big problem looming here for Fnatic. It seems as though we've gone for let's play some boring stuff as as a route. We've brought the Fenrir. We've got a Legion, we've got a Malusi, so there's a lot to slow down there. Mute has been successful as well. We've seen BDS have to deal with some of those mute jammers and stuff, but and the key thing for me, Demo, is just keep yourself away from the windows. Fnatic have been giving themselves up quite early on into these rounds, and we know Chalet to be a map that has a lot of outside to in potential. If you're an yeah. attacker and you want to hold a window, get on the roof and be my guest. Stay there for a minute and a half if you like. It's not going to change too much and there's a great chance you're going to pick someone up. You hear that, Tristan? We need the players to be developing a fear of windows. <laughs> I don't know what the phobia is for that, but we need to try and scare them away from those windows if we can. There's got to be a fear of windows, hasn't there? Let's let's have a look, shall we? Fear of Windows. It's, no, it's going to be something you can't pronounce. Just get ready for that. Um, Definistrophobia. Definistrophobia. There you go. Stay away from the windows. Stay away from the windows. You must not attempt to board the window. Yeah, don't even board it up. If it's open, just leave it. Look at Jaiko here. Look at the space confidence. he's gained. Mm -hmm. So much confidence moving in. BDS are great. At making these calculated judgments based off information. Shaiko, oh. we don't often see you miss them, Jinx! Oh, he's hitting with the turn and burn. I don't drop that one often, but it definitely deserves it. Possibly the lowest point of Shaiko's career. Quite possibly. I've never, I've never seen that before in my life. A windage. Him, never, never. A bit windy in the piano there, Jegs. Gonna feel pretty good about that one, and it's enabled him to Come hold on. that I'm position. Hot. Jigsaw taking out Solotov. It's a great start here for Fnatic. It can still hold in this position as well. You look at the utility available. You've got some Doku because there's no bees left though. There's nothing to shift these players out. There's no flashes, no nades. It's gonna be a hop in here. You look like Leaky Fang's framing up for it. Gonna oh draw for the Bailiff to get the job done. The bees are gonna give a bit of information here as well. He knows someone's playing just inside a master with Jigsaw. He's there to shut him down. C4 from Tyrant. It all rests on Breedae's shoulders. Knows that there's gonna be a player just tucked in 
next to Master Door. It's going to be Jigsaw, pretty low HP. Player in bathroom as well, but a nice on-contact swing there from Jigsaw. That is the round that Fnatic need. There we go. They got the round. Secures them now into that fifth position. What they get is, well, they get a higher seed going into the playoffs, of course. And uh, they also get an extra five SI points, which, I mean, people will say that's not a lot. Can we just keep in mind that BDS missed out on Invitational down to five SI points? I was going to say, there's been Invitational attendance decided on five SI points before. So it might not sound like a lot, but every point matters. You never know. Come next February, we might be sat there referencing this very moment demo. Oh, Shiko. Honestly, just... You would have thought Jigsy would have trained them better. Or the 1v1 training. Yeah, honestly. I think Jigsy will have them next time. Jigsy will have his life <laughs> if he's playing like that. I've no, I, to be honest, I've never said anything like it. I'm in, I'm in disbelief. It, um, it's like me having to do. And, and that's never a good thing. And um, to be fair, BDS will probably still kick on here and just keep playing the way they do and just keep dominating, you know. I, and then... I mean, it doesn't matter. It's one kill, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's just Shaito because be... it's Shaiko that it, it's worth noting. He'll be sat at the end of the game saying, all that for a drop of blood. You know, that's what it'll be like. You know, you made him mortal for just a second there. Yeah. My word. But anyway, Fnatic, last defense for them. I'm sure they'll be happy to get off their side and get onto the attack. Which is where, you know, that's where I think a player like Tyrant will just become ignited. You know, you think about him on Chalet, his backstabs, all they were second to none. They were. And, you know, he proved that. Same again, and there's Tyrant. A Beautiful. quick jump out, hits Yuzis. Yuzis should have known that. Used to team with him. He must have done that all the time. Well, this is it. Tyrant knows it as well. And that's one of the beautiful things about when you get players on opposing teams that have been on the same team. You start to know a little bit of tendency and you'll start to remember things that they used to do. And mm -hmm. Tyrant, he's caught Yuzis out there. Reloading. My goodness. Is, it's, always, it's always a fun one, you know, seeing ex-players go up against each other. Or not ex-players, ex-teammates going up against each other. And it's obviously cost that BDS losing the Twitch, which would have been nice, I think, to try and get in there and destroy some of the utility. And there is a little bit of that. You've got some bulletproofs in there. Uh, you've also got the cap cans, which would have been a good find as well to destroy. So it is a, a bit of a, a blow to them. Well, they you look at what you've been doing as well. He's one and two, so he's not doing too much in terms of getting kills. But most importantly, he's not dying. So that tells you that tells me he's doing a lot of utility work. Yeah, he's doing the drum and work. And there's, there's a lot of there's there's, there's going to be a big gap there now. And I think that's maybe one of the reasons why we've seen BDS stall out a little bit after that because there's there's a bit of a lack of something here. We can see he's going to be flicking a couple of flank drones there. But BDS needs something to try and push them through this library now. And Jigsaw going to duck out of the first flash. The second one's going to miss him as well. Probably could have stayed there, Demo. Oh, my word. Shaiko, a long angle on the Tyrant. He had to, I think, move away there because the bees were being fired in. Graham is just so oppressive for clearing out these power positions. And it does forfeit pop or control in the hands of BDS now. And EFAC will start to use, I believe, the drones as a little bit of uh, maybe vertical pressure that you can apply and see what you can open up. Jags is downstairs, has a C4, can maybe retake up lobby, but BDS look as though they will be covering that for the meantime with Freda, who begins to open up in towards that connector, which is the main area that Fnatic has to try and hold to deny any diffuser going down in the bomb sites, but they've lost Leon. Jags is going to go for that rotation now. Is he going to get a freebie? Gets a good couple of points of damage in and secures the kill. Leaky back. He's got the diffuser. He's got to push deep here. He knows that Jags is above. Deepak, is he going to be here with the cover? Do you have Solotov alive as well? Just inside there. He's going to find one. The plank goes down successfully. We see Leaky Fight come off just at the right moment there. A plant to extend the clock and immediately coming off into a kill. A very close round there, considering the way that BDS have been winning previously, but another round nonetheless. Wow. I mean, what, what, what do you say? The way that they've been able to capitalize on that. You thought, honestly, Jags above was just going to grind that to a halt. 
but they found some form of space to get that diffuser down. I really don't know how they did. It just looked as though that Deepak was just too timid, a little bit too naive there in that scenario, Ollie, you would say, where he should have just ran in, just worked with Jags. Jags was almost baiting for him, but just Deepak was just, he didn't want to move. He didn't want to go for it. And there's a lack of information, wasn't there? For Fnatic. Great opener, as we saw. In reality, you would like to see a bit more info there or maybe a bit more conviction. I'm not sure if they heard the plank going down. I imagine Five they did. Because when the time's running out and you don't know where anyone is and you're not in the site, you can make the deduction that well, the plank's probably going down. So yeah, a little, little bit of a strange one there from Fnatic. Definitely dropped the ball a little bit. And that is going to be their last round on the defense of regulation. I say that. There's a very slim chance here that we go to an overtime. It would require a good number of rounds from Fnatic. They'd need four to bring it level. Five to put themselves on a match point and all that without BDS getting a single round on their own defense. They take us downstairs. See if they can start this one off successfully. Tyrant, nice bit of info there. Is he going to get the shot on the Cade Claw? Looks like he missed it. Instead, he's going to turn his attention elsewhere, Demo. Yeah, it looks as though he got the Fenrir trap that could have been stationed on towards those fireplace stairs. Oh, also being able to try and snipe away some of the Cade Claws and looks as though the EMP will do the job. He actually sniped off one of them on the bottom bit. So great work there from the Twitch. Gets a lot of util worth out of the Twitch drone and even sends down the second one. Will spot out the Fenrir though, stationed already inside of blue. Even just being able to take away some of the Fenrir traps is, is crucial for, you know, these players being able to push down the staircases, push into these strong positions and, and just give them, you know, that, that even gunfight rather than going into gunfights where you can't see anything. Yeah, especially if you think that there's going to be a Fenrir there and you sort of you forget about it for a moment and all of a sudden someone appears, it can be a little bit jarring. So certainly one to keep an eye on. There is a mid-floor presence at the moment from BDS. Leon. Mouse. He's upstairs. You can hear. Has got a couple of air jabs kicking around. Oh my. He's got a mute jammer at his feet as well and uses his just prowling the area. Solotov, he's going to make his way up those library stairs and able to pick up one. But Leon, he's dropped the hatch. He said, I don't want to be playing those games upstairs. I'm going to get myself into blue. What is he able to do from there though, Demo? He doesn't have the diffuser. That kills huge. Shyko fall in there. It should allow the players to push into sight. And Leaky Back has no clue. Leon, he snuck by in the middle of the night and it's all now down to users. Picks himself up one, attack, but with the plan being confirmed, it's going to be easily held from outside. Newsus hasn't got the greatest kit to be dealing with this. SMG 11, only so much you can make that thing do. Vertical angles being opened above. He knows there's going to be someone hiding outside. All he can do is try and bait. Looks to stick and Jigsaw, he's going to take him out from above. Yeah, you mentioned there, Ollie. Leon doesn't have diffuser. He isn't really getting kills, but that's not the beauty of what Leon has done. Leon has dropped the hatch and was able to take up position inside of Elbow. And it's not the case of him getting kills there or trying to get the fuser down. It's just if if his team knows that Leon's an Elbow, then that means the enemy isn't an Elbow. You know, that, that that's the logic of it. You are in a yep. place where they aren't. And if there's no one in Elbow, there's no one in blue, then they can just walk in and plant for free on the breach. You know, that is what Leon was able to do. He created space for his side to be able to move in and get that diffuser down. You know, that's the beauty of it. Leon didn't have to do anything, you know, fancy or extravagant. He just had to sit in that position. He did a great job as well and still managed to get himself a kill. It was all about creating the space, like you said, for his team and Shaiko losing the duel on the breach was really the trigger there for the rest of Fnatic to spring into action. Some good success there in round number seven, their first round on the attack. Can they translate it through yet again here? Going to be going to bar and games for BDS's second choice. They are going to stick to a rotation, not look to reattempt that hold downstairs. There's not too much wrong with that at this point. They've got a big buffer here to work with. So they can really try and find out what works. They're not under too much pressure at all. Rabbit makes the appearance and 
Tyrant where he's used to destroying gadgetry on the defense, and now he's going to be taking over it instead. You know, creates, I think, a similar situation, but obviously it gives you a little bit more to it because now you can use that information for yourself. You can, you know, hack uh, all different things to work for you instead of against you. So it just depends what you want. Obviously, there's differences, you know, Twitch can destroy Goyo canisters. You can't exactly hack a, a fire, Ollie. You can't, I don't think you can hack fire. No, we've uh, not worked that know, one out yet. I don't even think, you know, the, the great scientists have figured that one out. How do we hack fire? Well, then again, there's a flamethrower. I suppose we do control fire in some instance. Speaking of fire, oh, yeah. see the fire sent on mm -hmm. out. Users tried to get a line up there, but is instead forced to drop the hatch. Wasn't able to thread the needle with that particular C4. Leaky Fag's well, still upstairs, still though, and he's going to retake into that position. You play that spot with one intention and one intention only, and that is wasting time. And trying to wow. get away with your life, but Leon is just immediately in there, isn't he? Leaky Fag, he was sort of caught, Dillian and Dalian. Solitov next into library. Chico's joined him as well. It's all going on in this portion of the map right now. I get that it's important place. There's a serious fight at the moment for it. I don't think that anybody has seen that drone. Tyrant got a good Backed bit of information up. there. He's going to be able to push his way up those main stairs. And now that he's passed through, well, what do you do? You don't know where he is. He is a bit of an unknown at the moment. Oh, Solosov. Can't really see as he's getting flashed out, but he has rotated towards the top of fireplace back again to the same position. But as long as Shaiko is there to support him, he shouldn't have any issues. Jigsaw is... Found his way into a sneaky position just in the bottom there of fireplace stairs. And Solotov know about this. If Solotov gets pressure and tries to flee and jump down, he will get picked off with ease by Jigsaw. Tyrant has since then rotated away from main door now over towards the office balcony. And Jigsaw is going to go for a walk into sight. Have you got rid of the Fenrir gadgets? No, you have not. And that will give the key over to the connector player. It cannot allow Jigsaw to go for that play. Jigs in a tough position on low HP, knowing that there's still plenty of BDS players upstairs holding him down. Jigs has to try and make the push. They need to try and find Solotov. And there's Shaiko with a swing, but Jigs says not today. But then there is the refry from Solotov. Brite has eliminated one. Tyrant tried to rotate away. Jigsaw in the heart of the bomb site. No diffuser in hand. Has to play for his kills. Doesn't even get any off them. Gets beat by the shotgun there at the end. BDS match point. Solid round there from BDS. I think they did a great job of holding their nerve on that top floor. He looked towards Solotov in particular. He was really trying to milk every last drop of value out of Fireplace. And he stayed there pretty much for as long as he could. Tyrant was threatening. We had Jegs threatening as well as he eventually jumped in through the double window inside a library. But it just wasn't enough everything going on in the library and that's often how they go for a bar and game site but you just think if jigsaw had got a cleaner entry into games or into bar should i say fenrir could have been dealt with there we did see that fanatic they had tools and they were actively trying to deal with that utility by attackers you look toward a brava or even a drone just to know that it's there maybe it would have been a bit more successful on that backstab but as it stands bds 6-2, looking to close out stage one in style. They've dominated throughout stage one. As you mentioned, Demo, they had a slip up to end a couple of weeks ago, but aside from that, they have been by far and away the top team here in Europe. And they're showing us that here again tonight. Defender has been discovered. They've looked good. They have looked good, BDS. Especially during their attacks, they just oh so dominant. Fnatic. Look, I, I don't even put it down to Fnatic. I just think they're being outclassed. You know, which is what well, every team has really struggled with. Barrent, which I think is probably the most surprising thing about it all, is that the you know the new team in the block was able to take down this BDS roster. But Fnatic. There's on those windows again, and Efac. Oh dear, gets caught out. Jigsaw. Just an early, kind of, one of those kind of early picks that you can kind of cheese your way through and just hope that someone walks into your cross fire and someone's done that. What was it? Defenestrobia? Uh, Something along those lines? Fear of windows? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. The window is now Jigsaw's friend. Chico is going to get the trade back over onto Jags. 
But Tyrant again through the window. We say there's outside to win opportunities here on this map, and we're not joking. Use us. Immediately traded. This is so much better from both sides, really. Back and forth trades, but Fnatic out on top at the moment. We've not even seen half the round, and already it's a three versus two in Fnatic's favor. The problem is, is that you look at the two that are alive. It's Solitov and Shaiko, so you don't really want to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of them. You want to try and manufacture a situation where you have the advantage, and at the moment, Fnatic firmly have the advantage. They've got the sight to themselves, and they're looking to get the plant down successfully. Leon picks up his second. The plant has now been confirmed, and Solitov, what is he going to be able to do here? Hatch open. Could choose to rotate himself down solar. Not really enough time to be making vert, and... There was only one of him, so he needs to be very cautious on his movements. Immediately taken out at the bottom of those solar stairs. Deepak holding an angle in from the top of West Main. That's great opportunity spotting, I think, for Fnatic. You know, you get that first pick. You then, just straight away, you put PDS on the, on the back foot. And then you can just use that extra man. You can just almost just flood into the site. You know they're going to be primarily upstairs. Uh, and if you win your engagements on site with that extra man that you have... Yeah, you know, what are BDS supposed to do in that scenario if you lose the site player? It's all well and good having that top floor control, but you're not going to make all of those vertical angles, you know, straight away because once if the team then go above and then you gave them all these vertical angles to play off. So, yeah, you, know, you have to give credit to Fnatic the way that the opportunity spot at that round and then they took advantage of BDS. But again, a lot of it just comes down to a player like Jigsaw, who for me, I think is, is very, very strong for that team. You know, I think the player that they look at and say, he can create the chances that we can play off. You know, I think Jigsaw is a great player since he since he's came into it. Look, obviously coming into that roster last season, it's difficult. You know, I think that team were still having their kind of identity crisis, and they were because they had to let go of their beloved Spoit, and they they just they couldn't shake. You know, we don't have him anymore. But this is you know the first time in a year where I can say it looks as though they forgot about him. They've moved on from him, which is what I, you know I wanted to see that for the longest time. They've moved on from their past lover. They've gotten over the heartbreak. Exactly. Time is a good healer, and it has been a good amount of time. You mentioned there, it sometimes takes a while for these things to work out. Fanatic looked dangerous, I'll be honest, in the previous round. They certainly didn't play it timid, you know, like it was mm -hmm. a map point against them, and you can't afford to do that all the time. You've got to go in with confidence. You've got to be bold. That's what we're trying to do here. And now Jigsaw opening pick over onto Leaky Fack. He didn't start off the game hard at all, but he's heated up throughout the course of this Attack map so far. Really nine and six and very successful on that entry. Been fantastic in the last couple of rounds, at least. Long may it continue for Fnatic here. Deepak got a ton of information available for him here as well. That main door will start to get open, but... Oh, a quick drop. Jigsaw, hello. Wow. We knew that was there. Use us. He's fallen into his lap. It's uh, very fortunate there from use that's has to be said, but still, man advantage in favor of Fnatic. As Tyrant was able to slip in and get himself a kill, and he's moved straight out of that trench and now join the rest of his team. Deepak sees that wall being electrified and thinks, hmm, can't get through that until I get some help. And maybe the help is going to be the Twitch stream, perhaps, that Tyrant can try and send down. Of course, they have the ram as well. It can maybe try and get in above and see if they can destroy the bandits from up there. But there's always treacherous going in towards that lobby, Ollie. There's about a million and one places you could get shot from. We know that. Leon, instead of dining on the hatch as well. And no, Fnatic are now looking to rotate away from that main breach and over towards Trench now. Gonna hear the ram get destroyed there. Trench wall will be open now. Shaiko can place a goo mine there, but look at the cover from above. It's gonna be really difficult. And I mean, Yuzis is in a spot, but it's a bit of no man's land. He's not got a great deal of cover and he's vulnerable from a couple of angles here. Tyrant gonna do a great job of removing that bulletproof again. Gathers that information and can call immediately. Doesn't even need to call it. He's gonna pick the kill up. He's gonna call for himself there. Shaiko finds one. Could this be the start of a moment? Deepak, he's getting the plant down. No one on the vert as we can see. If Shaiko can stop this plant, then there might be a chance here, but doesn't get past the first. What a round from Tyrant. Yeah, Tyrant worked so hard. You know, gets that kill back whenever Jigsaw kind of gave himself up a little bit. 
Uh, and then, yeah, you know, Fnatic took, took a while, you know, took a little bit just thinking what they want to go for. They were tr hopefully trying to get the Twitch down and destroy the bandit charges. Twitch couldn't get in. Then they thought, okay, maybe we can go above, use the RAM. Okay, they're not going to let us use that either. Oh, Trench is completely unelectrified. Let's just go for Trench. And then you move in, you get that wall open, you can still apply. I mean, it was almost phantom pressure because there wasn't really anyone in the vertical angles upstairs, but obviously BDS don't know that. Uh, and then BDS had to move from their positions with a little bit aggressive. Tyrant using that Twitch draw. I think that was great as well from Fnatic. It's just to hold their pace, wait for that Twitch draw to go in, get rid of the information. But it just so happened to be that the information was able then to, to see users go for that, you know, boisterous play and gets picked up. So, you know, little things like that. I like the patience from Fnatic. I, I like the pacing from them that round. Uh, and this is what I mean. I just think they're a team that are just on that cusp, aren't they? They really are. They're just... Just the inconsistencies have really killed them this season. And there's been inconsistencies in this game, hasn't there? You don't have to look too far into previous rounds to see that. They've started to put their foot on the gas when they needed to the most. BDS have been on match point now for the past couple of rounds. Still on a match point. Obviously, that doesn't go anywhere, but Fnatic's score slowly but surely has creeped up there. Still... Two more to draw it level. Two more to send us into an overtime. We haven't had an overtime yet tonight, so by all accounts, we are probably due one. That claymore will not work, I'm afraid, Jigsaw. There is a mute jammer on the other side of that wall, and it is going to interfere with your gadget. As we can see, nicely demonstrated there. Not that it might matter too much it's unlikely to see someone send it out of that window at least in the opening portion of the round maybe one to come back later but still there's a job to be done upstairs huge fight over library last time when we saw this side demo everything went down in that area mm -hmm. and we did see that Fnatic just lacked a little bit on that backstab in goes the arrows Solotov holding on to that top fireplace, it looks as though there has been a down on the Jags and Leon has dropped into the site, takes a hefty amount of damage there from a cap can that was placed on his door. But Fnatic look as though they've came away with all of the kills. As, However though, EDS are looking to mount a comeback. It is essentially a 1v2, but Tyro for the LMG puts that to rest. Another blistering pace round for Fnatic. They see something they like, Ollie, and they take it. It's incredible, isn't it? Where was this team at the start of the game? They looked really timid at the start. They were getting absolutely slammed. They had six kills in three rounds. And now they're just dumping himself into the site. We saw Leon. He got himself into closet there. It, there was there was a minute and a half, not even a minute and a half off the clock. And he's in the site. Yeah, he gets tanked by the cap can. Was lucky to be alive there, really. And I think the cap cans being placed there shows us that BDS have it in their mind that this is a possibility. Very close from Leaky Fight there as well. These two shots were insane. But of course, he's on the Roni. There's only so much that he can do. And especially in the clutch like that, always going to be difficult. BDS, they're going to double dip. They're going to go back down here for what could be the defining round in this fixture. It's 6-5. They've been successful downstairs in bar and games, but they haven't been successful anywhere else. Mm-hmm. So this is do or die time if they yeah, want to avoid an overtime three. and keep what, on the face of it, is quite a nice record at the moment inside of EU it League Stage 1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is, and you would have thought that BDS would like to finish out in the best shape possible and really set themselves up to be just, you know, that fear factor going into those playoffs. But every team goes up against them, it's just that dread of, oh, we're up against BDS. You know, that that's the way this team is at the moment. You know, every team in the league knows that. It's BDS, you know, it's BDS's world, we're just living in it. But to see Fnatic really make a good fight against them, and honestly, they are so nearly there, they're pushing it into OT. It's been magnificent to watch, so all credit to Fnatic. Whatever they're doing today, it's working really well, but you have to look at BDS now. It's, they're getting caught out by stuff they shouldn't be. You know, Fnatic just walking into sight for as free as what they are. Shouldn't be happening in BDS's watch. No, and we've seen some star players slow down as well. Solitoff and Chico started off the game lights out and they have since slowed a little bit. That is normal over the course of a fixture, but do need them to still have that contribution. Leon. He's already got himself into dining here and he can start to send out his Brava drones and hack a couple of cameras. 
Nice little hop up there to get in range of hocking the default cam. Just forces the opponents to shoot it rather than yourselves, but if they don't realize and you can get a bit of value out of it, then why not? Got a ping upstairs. He knows there's going to be somebody playing there. You need to be semi-cautious, though. It's a very horizontal approach here from Fnatic. They're looking well, to do something again. cheeky yet mm. again. But they've got that information available to themselves on the site. They haven't dealt with library in any capacity this time, though. And if Tyrant thinks he can just walk in, he might have another thing coming. Oh, Brett, I seen him. We'll have Goo Mines to try and assist him, but oh no. It's not working for Fnatic. The jig is up quite literally as Jigsaw has been taken out. Efac ready for another. Down goes Jags and a slow approach where they've tried to once again walk into sight. It worked before. It ain't going to work this time. BDS are ready for it this time around. And Deepak, no 1v5. A lot to do. A minute to go. Who's going to get the kill? That's the question for BDS. C4 rip. Dodges that one. But how much more can he take? A prone shot from Shaiko closes out. Yeah, again, another flawless round for BDS. They've had a few of them in this matchup. It was looking good for Fnatic. But they, they flew too close to the sun, Ollie. They tried that same push again. Great shot there from you to turn off the camera. <laughs> a little smirk at the end. But look, BDS, what, what can you say? Another big win for them. A great performance there from BDS. It shows the stamp of a good team, doesn't it? You know, they didn't give up there. They had a great advantage leading into that second half. Sure, a couple of rounds slipped away, but Fnatic, they're just a little bit too inconsistent and they couldn't pull off those same shock plays, those same pocket plays every single time there's only so many times you can let leon slip into sight undetected and lose the round and bds got a handle of it in the end when it mattered the most we got the score line that we expected after the first half but it just took a few more rounds for us to get there a 7-5 a good game by all accounts let's throw it over to the desk and see what they've got to say thank you very much ollie and demo a valiant effort by Fnatic, but in the end it's BDS to take it. They are cemented as number one in the league. We already knew that before we started the day, but they are cut above the rest for a reason. Big performance today, Fresh. Yeah, I thought they were great today, particularly starting out on those attacks. I actually thought both teams, to be fair, mm. attacking into Chalet looked exceptional on their attacks. Um, it became a lot closer because of how well both of these teams attacked, which obviously made each half look so attack decided and exactly. yeah bds exactly. they're gonna want it as much as there was literally zero on this game for them yeah they finished first whatever happened whether they won 7-0 lost 7-0 they would still be the first played seed the first place team i think it's important for bds for both themselves but also the opponents because we're looking at this team and thinking they're going to the major fabian yeah it's important for them to put out a big show of strengths so teams like you teams like psg when they're looking at them think oh god bds are coming Oh, we're never afraid of anybody. Yeah, we're the best team in the world for yeah, 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 yeah. However, uh, looking at what I actually think probably might be the best team in the world in combination with maybe FaZe competing with them, BDS, they, they're just so strong. I want to highlight Fnatic for another reason, though. Mm -hmm. And that is that they were able to keep up with the gun skills of BDS. Mm -hmm. the, it's such a good sign that they can do that, because what we've been talking about Fnatic being a yo-yo team quite a lot this stage, even if they lose this game today, they should be happy kind of with it in a way that, all right, we put up a, a very good effort against a very good team, and it wasn't that they just ran over us. I mean, attacks on Chalet is always going to be favored, so it wasn't a surprise. Fabian is maybe a little bit too much in the attacker favor side, but honestly, they did not put up a bad fight. But this is a conversation that always floats around. It's like, yes, we know you're qualified and nothing really is impacted off this game, but you are always looking to win and to push yourself beyond. It's right? the it's the mental part of it. Jack, Absolutely. you mentioned it, like putting fear in other teams, but it's also about your own internal mentals because yep. you're a competitor. You're fighting to win. And every single game matter, even if it's just seed, if it's... Nothing but the pushing someone else further down. You just want to win, and that's all that matters. At 20 points, that is a massive undertaking for BDS. We'll remind everybody that this team went through a massive overhaul. I mean, uh, watching every single UL play day has been kind of spitting the same record over and over, which is BDS has had player changes. They now swapped from French into English, yeah. and they've somehow become even better than they ever were, to the point where, as you say, Fabian, at least from our online stage now, the only team that looks anywhere close to them is FaZe. And we know how, 
excellent phase have been in Brazil internationally too. Yeah, they've, they've just been, I mean, they should have won the six invitational grand final, I will say. They were so, so close, and now we have a team from Europe that, yeah, sure, G2 won an Invitational last time, but yep. BDS is this close to being able to do the same. We've got a team that we're very, very yeah. excited about going into an international event. Obviously, we've always been excited about, you know, your G2s, and I suppose, in a way, the VPs of this world, but this is a team where we think, actually, maybe we're the favorites now. We've been highlighting players from BDS throughout this entire stage, but yeah. one that really stepped up today is Solotov. We'll bring up our prime Turkish player here on the team, Fabian. Yeah, so Solotov this stage so far has actually been the lowest rated player in this team, which is quite kind of surprising because of how good he did in Eminem. Yep. But that's the thing. Every team will always have one player the lowest rated, and it just happens to be one of the great ones. Solotov today had a really standing out performance, but it goes to show the depth of this team. Imagine you can have a player of this quality to go somewhat poor in a stage and they still dominate it. It's just because anyone can do anything. Do you know what's bloody brilliant about this BDS team? Yeah. Is when they're on a roll, somebody always has to lose individually in terms of yeah. the stats. Normally that's Bree Day as well, right? It's normally Bree Day where BDS will be 6-1 up and you'll see Bree Day's had one kill and one death and you're thinking, what's happened? Today, actually, that was users. Um, yeah. because Solotov was the one stepping up, finding those kills. And it just goes to show the strength and depth that this team's got. I mean, what was he? One, two after five One, two rounds? after si yeah. uh, six rounds. Five yeah. for six rounds uh, in, yeah. yeah. I, honestly, this is what we're seeing online. And then best of ones, I can't wait to see best of three. That'll be the next challenge. And of course, should they make it, that'll be for Manchester. But gentlemen, we are done with our third game. We still have one more to go. It's a big one here. And there is the second place on the line. It's Wolves versus Team Secret. We'll see you after the break. And literally every operator in the game has barbed wire, essentially. Um, there's so many operators that interact with barbed wire. Banded? Um, yep, yeah, I'm genius. Well, that's easy. Dog Kambi. Bark. The fear. Uh, so many. Zero. Um. Such have claimers. Such a. Duckle. Yeah, it can't be. has bulletproof, yeah. Um, I had so much to think about at once. Lesion, Malusi. Uh, uh, cap can? No. I'm trying to go. Oh. We're tied. Dog. 
Don't cut me, Buck. Pinka. Uh, Samai. Uh, sledge. sledge? Yeah, does Sledge have flashes? Twitch. Twitch doesn't have flashes. Monty? Leon. Monty. Leon. Nah, that <laughs> said Leon because he was trying to ask Leon for an answer. Oh, I did. Gladius, es quien termina consiguiendo el doblete. Ahora son tres, son cuatro con la de Indra. Si solamente va a quedar del otro lado, Paxi. Consigue el doble, consigue el triple. Cuidado con Paxi. No Jugada del sueño. It doesn't look like he was in trouble. Kino dies to dream. Mode down, but there's Spoid Breach again. Making no prison. Not again. How does he get it done? What does Spoid have to do to find all these openings? Goodness gracious. And it's a team effort as well. Down to just and high count. It's one, two to go in this retake situation. Taha off of the defuse. Once again, not it, but now dead. Zeta for the Nitrosol. He's going for the counter defuse instead. Could have tried to throw that out. And Haikal should spot him. Double tap, headshot on the second. Uh, smoke and fire and brimstone and everything else you could possibly throw at him. But he's still in one piece. He's got to be careful about this long angle though. Going back towards the full has always looked away. We'll round through. Finds Shoko. Finds the second as well. Always going absolutely nuclear. Vai vir o drop agora, olha a bala, consegue deitar, loira na marcação, tem jogador dando cover, loira chega, triple kill dele, Hornetão no plant, Stay vai marcando, a bala do loira pega, é 3v1 agora, recarregando, Stamp é o último jogador vivo, ele tenta buscar e cai! Ace do loira pra ganhar o jogo! Here comes the retake from the side of Exo. Now Skies, he's able to win that one engagement. They get the back end of Rykos as well, but Deadshot, oh, he doesn't make the connection. Skies going for the rebuy. They're all lined up, and now it's this piece away from him. Looking for the feet, coming for the single player. Waits, lets the time tick. Bibu's playing this expertly. The second feeds themselves in. The Hashem Peaks fire the floor. There's three. Bibu, he's got to the pistol. Welcome back, everybody, to Blast R6 AU League, our final matchup and possibly the epitome of matches that we have for today. That is Team Secret versus Wolves. In many ways, Team Secret has been seen as this dark horse over the past few months. No longer, given the way that they're competing, but it's Wolves on the other side that at the start of the stage, we're thinking we're seeing all fanatic, the ends of this region. Can Wolves hold on? They've actually not done too badly at all. Let's talk about this in general for these standings because jack yep there could be a shift on the number two spot yep so whoever wins this game will be the number two seed what will that get you that will get you two best of threes at the manger the reason for that is both wolves and secret you can see them on your screen there 13 points each one of them will win so either they will get three points in a regulation win or two points in an overtime win if it's two points they will also then get plus on the round differential which is the first tiebreaker and therefore 
be in front of ITB. So whoever wins this game, whichever method they win this game in, they will be the second place team and have a significant advantage at going to the Manchester Major. So if they, whoever wins this game only needs to win one more best of three and they are set for yeah. Manchester. And they'll get two shots at it as well. Yeah. That is absolutely huge, Fabio. Yeah, it's massive. I mean, that's, that's the position you want to be yourself, put yourself in. Because two games, yeah, sure, you can have some nerves in the first one, you still have another shot. Obviously, you don't want to go to that game either, but just having the opportunity to kind of secure yourself, because if you go into the seeds underneath that, mm -hmm. if you lose the first one, well, you're not getting that second chance. Yeah, and that is the biggest issue, the, the big conundrum of this matchup. Let's talk about both of our squads, starting off with Wolves, our French roster. And I gotta say, they really picked up the speed. They got back into it, and certainly Deadshot has after a pretty abysmal aside. Yeah, I mean, as I aside, if we just look at the start of this entire stage, they looked lost. Like genuinely, it looked like they had no idea how to play as a group or how to play as individuals within the sort of structure. They looked very lost. They didn't play together. Timings were off. Communication looked off. And you saw on their face cams that something was just really, really, really wrong. You can't have that at this level. And somehow they have managed to step up massively towards the end stage. And they're looking great right now. And we're looking to see in detail how does a round for Wolves look like on the execution. Hey, let's go over to Fresh. He's got something to talk about, and it's, it's telestration. We love every bit of it. Yeah, I do, Milos, and I've criticized Wolves. You know, Fabian said they started the stage off pretty poorly. I criticized them. I called them out for their lack of droning, their lack of team play, their solo play. I've got to compliment them now. I've got to love them. And what I liked here, there's twofold to what I liked here. First and foremost, it's going to be a play into Church and Arsenal. The Dirt Door is barricaded. They're going to do a nice little play where they force their way through the Dirt Door that's barricaded with a Goyo canister on. So if we just clear the screen and get it rolling, you're going to see P4. He's going to waltz in after the door gets barricaded, find the kill. That isn't what Wolves, you know, it, I, I was criticizing them on. That's a play that Wolves do all the time. It opens up rounds for them quite literally all of the time. Now, the bit that I liked actually is once they took control of sight, P4 finds another kill here. It's the discipline and the team play that I liked from Wolves. Now, if I draw two lines, where can, once they've got control of sight, where can the attackers come from? They can come down here, all the way down the main stairs, or they can come from blue to try and retake. Wolves understand that, and this is the bit that they've been getting right recently. This is the bit that I've been liking has been that their team play has been excellent. P4, look at what he's not doing as I speed it back up. What's he not doing? He's not challenging, he's not planting, waiting for his team. What's he waiting for, you might ask? Well, Mowgli is gonna be on the um, Grim. And what he's going to do is actually fire off and Grim off all of the blue area in just a second as this comes in. That means that the plant execution is completely 100% set up. As you can see, there's just so many bees. They're absolutely everywhere. This is the team play from Wolves that gets the plant down. As soon as the plant's down, the round is basically won from Wolves. So we can pretty much stop it there, in my opinion. The things that they were failing on at the start of the stage, they are now getting absolutely right. And that's why they are demolishing teams. And that's why they're in serious contention for being a top two team. Thank you very much, Fresh. And from Wolves, we move on to Team Secret that have also had their own resurgence. I talk about this squad as coming into the stage and into 2024 as Dark Horses. Miracle has been all over the place in terms of performance, but Savage specifically has had big games and Adrian has been a beauty to watch this entire oh. stage, Jack. Yeah, I mean, you know, we love Adrian. <laughs> I think if you've been watching any broadcast, you'll think we're just the Adrian fan club. Secret have just been so improved. I think they've gone from, their general story is, like you say, they've gone from like a bottom of the barrel team, you know, from being bottom of EUL to, you know, they, they scraped six invitational through LCQs. Whereas now they're a top team, a top contending team with good strategy, with a great IGL, with a great front line. And they've picked up probably one of the star rookies, a, a star rookie, I don't even know if that makes sense. A rookie with a potential that is just uncapped. Like, Fabian keeps calling him the next rookie, the next, be <laughs> next best rookie since Leaky Fuck. 
I'm really looking forward to it then. But when it comes to actual execution on site, we have a telestration exactly for that. Five N is waiting for us down at the station. And I think I remember this place. So please, executions is all that it's all about, Fabian. Yeah, I mean, after the first play day, me and Jack had a telestration where we showed four different plant positions on Clubhouse. Here, however, we're in a different map. It's consulate. Three versus four to set the scene. It's versus G2. This game was a weird one where teams were just fragging out on each other. What I want to show you first of all, these are the rotations that G2 have available to them. One right here, obviously the door. One rotation here in kitchen into garage, and then they have some shooting holes here. So what you can see is, in this situation, being three players live for Secret is going to be a very rough time to push in. What does Secret do to clear this out? We'll start the clip and you'll see right this. Pay attention to you. He's on the floor above, and what he's going to do is, he's on RAM, so he will have some smokes available. Pay attention to Adrian's and Jum's smokes, because what you will see is something I don't know if we've ever really seen in, in, uh, in Siege before, because all of these smokes would pop off and cover all the rotations that they have. I'll pause here, draw a line, because Secret have effectively cut the map in two. They have the cover from the hatch, so that none of the players from G2 can retake into the pillar, and none of them can retake here. You can even see Alamo in a second. He's going to look like a lost chicken running into the wall. We keep playing this clip. First of all, there's going to be a missed C4 on him for Adrian, who is planting. And all of this just looks at they even managed to pick a part around that they shouldn't have any business winning. It's three versus four. You shouldn't be winning those in attacks, especially with low time left and just no real map control. This is what we love about Secret. They played really well. They even get a Finca pickup on Adrian that's just planted and been injured. Just overall, amazing play, incredible adaptability to the round, and they should be really happy with how they've been playing this stage. Thank you very much, uh, Fabian. And that is a depth of execution, beautiful teamwork and timing and all, but on to our map band for this best of one as Wolves will be going to Skyscraper. And that is a big surprise in many ways, but one that I'm really looking forward to as Secret Banner Club to take us there map-wise, numbers-wise, fresh, what does it look like? It's the perfect battleground, Milos. It's mm -hmm. the perfect battleground. When you want two teams going for second place, you want them both to be on a map that they're comfortable on. Well, Skyscraper, a map that both of these teams absolutely love, second preference to both maps. Both teams played BDS. Wolves and Secret both lost to BDS. Secret did push them to overtime, but it will be Wolves that are starting out on the defense. Yes, starting the defense side is the key here. Like, genuinely, it's the key, because we know how defender favorite this map can be, and it doesn't matter how good you are at attacking, because one small mistake where you lose one player, it just can turn entire bomb sites around and just defenders won't stand a chance even losing. Like, I'm not stand a chance losing. That sounds silly, right? But it's just how the map is laid out. So from both of our telestrations, uh, telestrations, I gather we have two teams that are very equal. They're playing for high stakes in second place for potentially a direct spot into the major. They are <laughs> playing on a map that's highly tactical that both are very comfortable on. Yep. I am absolutely looking forward to the execution and how every single site is going to go down in here. And speaking of our matchup, it is pretty much ready. Let's pull up our casters and say hello one more time for today. It's XR Troika and Demo. Lads, are we ready for this one? I'm very excited for it because tactically speaking, this looks like an absolute banger in the making. Of it. Demo wouldn't work. Yeah. I, I feel like we've saved one of the best. We had a great game at the top of the day. We've just seen a great game. Demo, give them a wave. They're not going to stop. We've just seen a great game between BDS and Fnatic. Yeah. And now we get to round out the day with another banger. And it's a banger that's got a lot of got a lot of meaning behind it, right? Mm -hmm. We're fighting for second place here, Milos. Demo, you're a man of not many words, but a lot to say in what you do say here. Who do you see winning this matchup strategically? You're a man of strategy as well. Um... I mean, obviously, they've talked about Wolves having the defense, but uh -huh. I don't know, Secret played against BDS, and they had to go on the attack first, and Secret were able to deal with it quite well, so Secret have done it before. Why can't they do it again? Sound. Very much. Anyways, Fabian Fresh, thank you very much for our desk. We are ready to go. Demo, Oli, please enjoy this, because we sure will be. Thank you very much, Milosh. Our final game of the night here, Demo. This is how we round out stage one here in EU League. We have got two Titans going up against one another tonight. We've got Secret versus Wolves. With the siege that we've seen so far inside of stage one, I'm not sure there's a better way of rounding out our final play day.
Yeah, um, all this does is really determine who is going to be in second place and who is going to be in fourth place. ITB are going to be sandwiched in the middle between them. No matter what, they will finish in that third spot. So it's just who will finish second, who will finish fourth. So essentially, who's going to get that bye in the first run of playoffs? And then who has to play Fnatic? You know, we already know the table's already locked up for us. It absolutely is. So without too much oh well without any further ado we are going to get ourselves straight into the game team secret versus wolves skyscraper is the map a maverick maverick and a book band out the book feels a little bit targeted there demo oh it's uh one that you don't see all too often and it is going to be for a, a certain reason that secret have went for that so maybe they've seen something the way that the Wolves like to use and abuse that buck, and they don't want to give them that luxury. I mean, we've seen it before. The the, the closest thing I can remember is teams like Banning Sledge against Ranchero. You know, that, that's one that I remember, you know, very familiar in the back of my head. That that's uh, something a lot of teams would do. So, you know, they went for the buck ban. I mean, buck is good as well on Skyscraper because you can go below and you can open up a majority of bomb sites. You know, you think about the office. How many times do you a buck go downstairs into that, that kind of main lobby bit of, of, of the house side of the map? And just rip open anyone who could be inside of office anyone who could be um you know in, in, inside of even towards like the single window you know players could be lurking in around there with the zami barrier so yeah i think it's a good ban on, on that standpoint i just had a quick flick to see who most plays buck and it is p4 i thought it might be and i was uh, i was trying to figure out anything that we could uh, we could glean from that i'd have to cast my mind back to a previous skyscraper wolves game is a very deliberate ban coming out there from secret we've already mentioned they are going to be starting out on the tougher side of things here starting off on the attack it isn't ever the easiest map to attack into but they've got a reasonable track record if we cast our mind back just a couple of weeks we will remember the secret versus bds game that was played out on Skyscraper. It's one that you and I covered demo. It was 8-7 to BDS in the end. A secret. They were good for a couple of attacks on this map, so I'm expecting no less here tonight, especially given that both of these two teams are fighting for that second spot, second place. Mm -hmm. You'd expect them to fight to a nail. You're going to give yourself as many chances as you can with going to the Major. If you finish top two, you get two chances at the bare minimum to see if you can qualify into, of course, you know, not even just phase one of the major, but in straight into phase two as well. That's another thing. If you qualify being three teams inside of Europe, it's the fourth team that come in for the open qualifiers that will be, in, be put into the phase one section of the major. So yeah, a lot to play for here with just finishing on top two and then being able to get into that phase two portion of the major. Not a good start for Secret though. Losing out the Ying. Big op rare that you'd like to have for these executes. You're gonna have to try and make do without having Savage alive. And you know, I think for Secret all it would be a massive shame, you know, for this side to almost capitulate at the, you know, the final hurdle, because we said they've played Stellar uh, Siege. It's probably the best siege we've ever seen this side play. And to see them, you know, fall into fourth and even ITB best them, it'd be a big shock. It would. It's early days though. Round one, of course, a lot of siege yet to be played here. But Secret do look a little bit slow here on this approach. They have opted to bring the Deimos. Now, we saw Bibu get tracked on Deimos very early on, but nothing really came of it. Doom, just seeing if he can try and bait out on Miracle at the moment. Miracle was just tapping that Fenrir gadget, activating it. But P4 Reloading. is standing firm. Shinka is going to be inside a Geisha taking a little bit of damage. Jim knows that his army is going to be playing there. And of course, he could use the gadget to try and figure that out, to try and force a little bit of movement. But of course, you give your own position away then as well. Two impacts getting sent out there. It's going to eat up one exothermic and Miracle is going to place his second, knowing now that it is going to be fairly safe. But don't forget for the bomb side that this is, it's a very long and arduous process given that there's 35 seconds left and they're still in this position but adrian he's gonna be getting the bomb down now under that cover but it has to come off no p4 there with the swing the pressure 
was mounting far too much there. And Wolves, they were happy to hold on. Look, even if he gets that diffuser down, I don't think they win that round. There's just too many players for Wolves who can go into that retake. So, yeah, no, no surprises there to see see them win that round for Wolves. And I mean, here's the thing. You lose that opening pick. It's just going to be so difficult. You lose the Ying. It's going to be even more difficult. Like Fabian mentioned, just the smallest little mistake will just grind your attack to a halt on Skyscraper because it is defender sided. You know, this is the map where we see the five ones, even the odd six. So it can happen to the best of teams just because the way this map it is laid out and designed. You need every man possible on the attack. And, you know, defense, you don't have to do a lot. You just have to play your utility operators like your Zamis, like your Miras, which just makes things so difficult with clearing across the map. Yeah, just this, this is the thing. Secret, you're on, you're on the attack first. You know, they went to this map. You know, they had the choice. They went here. And you know, you have to, you have to reap what you sow. Well, they know what they were going to get themselves into. I don't think that anyone is going to uh, sit here and make excuses for them. They've got themselves into this position and they believe, of course, they can get themselves out of it again. Going to be attacking onto the other side now. We're going office and exhibition. We do have half of the wall left soft here. That's a popular way of deterring teams from breaching that wall. Usually requires some soft destruction to blow out half of that wall. And we can see that that's something the secret have in spades. They, of course, have the Zephyr and they have the Ash. So the mirror window rendered useless right from the get-go as well. Secret, starting to open up. It's a little power position that Wolves want to play in. There goes the main breach, of course, towards Geisha. And also, we'll use the Exothermic onto the castle barricade in towards Terrace. So, dead shot has to be careful. That window open to him. Does mean that Bibu can't really get back across, though. That's the only issue. But I think Bibu, just with the position he's playing, I think he's happy enough to give his life there, Ollie. He's going to be bandit tricking that single wall. You know, tucked into a position where you wouldn't really expect him to get many gunfights. And oh dear, Grubby gets caught out. Dead shot, timing on his side. Picks up that kill and oh no! Savage again just gives themselves up for absolutely nothing. And Wolves are just getting pick after pick after pick. There's really no spearhead leading the charge here. This is going to be a flawless round. I'm almost certain of it. Doom down to the bottom of house. They know where he is, and Mowgli happy to wander on down and pick him up as well and add him to the collection. A couple of kills for P4, a couple of kills for Mowgli there. Wolves, comfortable is the word I would use, Demo. They look happy, they're having a good time. Nothing really getting in their way at the moment and secret. They've just sort of sat outside and let themselves get picked off one by one. Yeah, just vibes right now from Wolves, aren't they? They're just doing their job. They're getting picks here, there, and everywhere. So yeah, they've they've been they've been pretty pretty happy so far. But do you all remember this happened during the the BDS game for Secret, where BDS Bob were just pummeling them, and we were thinking, oh, well, it's a quick game. But then all yeah. of a sudden they they turned it on during the I think it was they went four zero down, and then they pulled it back to four two. And don't forget, yeah, don't, uh, it's skyscraper. I don't want to count Seeker out. There's no, no way I don't want to. No, you can't count them out. You can't count them out. It's Skyscraper. We're, we're, we are expecting to see defenders win rounds. We're also expecting to see attackers win one or two of those attacking rounds. If they're a good attacking team, they'll win three or four or whatever. You know, you're expecting the expected value here of two very well-matched teams fighting for that second place spot is that we're going to see attackers win one or two rounds. That's what we come into this expecting. Now, the things that matter is the fashion in which the defenders win the other rounds. If they're absolutely stomping you and your head starts to dip, then it becomes a little bit of a problem. But at the moment, there's no real cause for concern on the side of Secret. They just need to make sure that they're switched on when they get those opportunities. And attacking now down into Barbecue and Kitchen is one of those opportunities. We're going to bring the Monty. We're going to try and get something going here. Savage, he hasn't had much success with a gun in his hand. I mean, to be honest, no one on the side of Secret has at the moment. But maybe the Monty is going to be the play. 
hopefully, because they need some form of play, because they didn't have it during the last round. There is no playbook involved whatsoever. So Savage, he got uh, picked off, you know, both both times in the previous rounds without really doing anything in the round. He, he did nothing, so hopefully he can have more of an influence using that Monty. However, already a bit of an issue up against the Castle Barricade. Not an easy thing for a Monty to eliminate. He will have to sit there and just punch away at it. So it will take him a bit of time. And time is, of course, the valuable thing right now for Wolves. We know that, but right now for Seeker, look at the okay, way they're kind of setting up. Adrian now behind Savage opens up the Castle Barricade. Doom on the other side, maybe looking for a quick backstab. And maybe they're going to just ignore this top floor and just try and walk straight into the site. Looks as though that might be what they're doing. They did this previously whenever we seen them here on Skyscraper last time. It worked, it worked against BDS. Let's see if it worked against Wolves. Great pick there for June. Picks himself up too. That's surely the trigger that Secret need right now. Monty has actually changed tack. Instead of going for downstairs, they're saying we can clear their own now. We've got man advantage here. And Bibu is going to start to feel pretty lonely here inside. Geisha goes for the jump out, but he too will fall. Doom, three kills on the round now. Secret should just be able to walk this one in, but do they know about P4 out on the flank? Gets a glimpse of the Monty, hits the reload because he knows the action is imminent. Monty now going to be able to call that location out and he will fall as well. Savage even getting involved himself. Chinka, you know, five kills to find, my friend. Otherwise, it's going to be a flawless here for Secret. We'll get the first over onto Miracle. Usually the Monty, usually, sorry, the Thermite would have the Diffuse, but in this instance, of course, it is the Monty and Savage. He has got that and nailed it to the floor. Chinka, no one likes a post plan 1v4. You really don't like it when you're going up against a Monty, especially a new age Monty that is just going to charge you down. Savage, two kills on the round, is made up for those previous couple. And Secret get themselves on the board. Yeah, yeah, fantastic work from Savage on the Monty, really dictating the pace and telling his team where to go, what to do, where he wants to go. And obviously as the Monty, that's what you want to try and build your, your attack around. Uh, but I'll start with Jim. All, st uh, all of that started with Jim. Uh, how many times have I mentioned about this guy? He is just... He's just, he's just Jim. You know, that's his play style. He's like, he's like a gray cloud on, on a sunny day. Just comes and ruins the fun. And Wolves, I said, they're having a great time. And then and he comes, the backstab, two kills, opens up for his team. You know, that's the effect that that guy has. Look at this, great double kill, great situational awareness. It was exactly where it looked for the second kill as well. Good reactions. And then from there, you know, all the you called it out, they could have easily just walked in to go for the plant. But knowing they have that man advantage, they, they get the call, we're going to go for kills. And it's the right play because the last thing you want to do is lose the diffuser in the middle of sight, be all split up. You're better off taking that moment, consolidate, get together as a team, and just play around the Monty. You've got a human drone. That's exactly what they did. Good round there from Secret. Attacker's objective is diffuser. They are the rounds that you cannot afford to drop on Skyscraper. See how they now choose to build off that. They did manage to get good control of top black previously when we saw this site in round number one. They also managed to get the wall open and look to get a plant down. A couple more things go a little bit differently and we start seeing some gunfires won elsewhere. And it doesn't become the most impossible task to get around here either. Miracle just going to pre-place an exothermic onto the geisha wall. They do have Bibu to worry about below. The Solace snuck through and is able to gather a bit of info. goes at top floor attack now for secret and see how they can sweep across and clear away the wolves fortifications as you know they did struggle with it last time quite a bit and uh, let's see if they can maybe try and keep that ying alive for longer it's no longer savage on that operator so it will be adrian if savage got picked off he was dead by this time last time they attacked here so hopefully you can keep that ying alive and can create a lot of chaos and so Bibu is certainly feeling the, the pressure of that operator. He does get flashed there, but as I say that, down goes the Ying. They just can't keep him alive no matter who plays it. Savages went in with a very bold play. Loses the Diffuser in the middle of Geisha. Doom trying his best to try and walk up those staircases. Eliminates Bibu. Again, 
Right now for Secret, they're not in the best of position because they just don't have the info and Wolves. Wolves have all the control. Miracle. Wandering aimlessly. That diffuser is still not picked up and Doom has a 1v3 to deal with. Tough round there. I think that Wolves have done a really good job of stabilizing Doom. Going to pick himself up one before he departs. P4 with the finishing blow. You know, you'd have thought that Adrian would be having a field day there. He's off the Thermite for a change. He's onto the Ying. He's been upgraded. Seems to be a bit of a Ying curse floating around on Secret tonight. Anyone that plays that up is just getting beamed straight out. Wolves do a good job of stabilizing as well after round number three. And we see a tactical timeout from Secret. I think it's a good time demo. They know that they need to get another couple of rounds here on the, on the attack. They have 30 seconds or so to figure out what's going wrong and listen to Twister's wise words. Yeah, it's it's all about how it's all about how you, you're kind of setting up the rounds early. I think for Secret, that's kind of where they're stumbling. You know, it, it certainly feels as though they're pulling the trigger a little bit too quick, just losing out those big utility operators. You know, Ying is great if you do want to go quick. You know, just toss the Candelas in. It's going to give you that just a little bit of chaos. But you can try and go for those quick plays and get that plant down even in the 5v5s. But if you just keep losing those special operators, you're never going to be able to break through. You know that defense. Uh, for Skyscraper, you know, d defense and Skyscraper mentioned before, it is so strong for the defenders. So you need those operators that generally do get banned out. You know, Ying, if you look at the ban rate of Ying uh, throughout this season, you know, she is the top attacker that has been banned. You know, we're sitting at a 25 uh, ban rate for Ying in all the matches. So she's right up there with the best of them. And if you lose that operator just time and time again, you're not going to be able to win against the defense. You need those power operators alive. I'm getting a little bit concerned because I'm seeing some things that just have a hint of pocket strap in them. We have Doom on Namaru. We have a Glass. We have a Capital coming. We don't have any Hard Breach. Secret. They're cooking. Yeah, they've got they got secondary. They're no primary. But they're cooking something here. Oh, just the two from Miracle, and that's it. But yeah, like you said, a lot of utility. Really, Amari, the only f ways you would use her is either in through the bomb black window or up the hatches. That would be the other thing that you could use the Amari for. But even at that, it's so risky to, to do. He has got the, the Gara hook, of course, with the shotgun combination. He did have his hook out there just for a minute, but he hasn't used it since. So, maybe we'll do it. tricks one of the walls and. Adrian will use the ass charges to also clear away the mirror window alongside opening up that wall. So they do have a way into the bomb site, but as we know, there's going to be a lot of pressure from wolves applied to that position. Keep it active. I don't know how they get through Bibu though. With no hard breach and no real way of, of getting through that single wall, going in towards drum is going to be a very difficult uh, proposition for them. They've not given themselves a lot of tools to get a job done here. We, we saw previously, they just got picked off out on the balconies and you kind of get the feeling that's where this is going unless they really make something happen here. Mowgli is going to be playing deep inside of Exhibition. It's on the Warden, so he's not going to be too worried about a bit of smoke or any flashes coming through. He's going to be able to navigate himself through that. Doom getting ready to hop himself up through the hatch. We've got Miracle and Savage both in position as well. Mowgli might get caught out here. Adrian just keeping himself alive. He's now in a bit of a sticky situation. Not in a position really to use the glasses. Has to move through and transition. But no one's hopping in. Instead, it's the glass that stood outside a sword's window and Adrian takes down P4. Doom not moving just yet. I think they're still cautious that someone could be still in behind the bar and no oh, there we go they've eliminated Mowgli that was the player they worried about surely this is where Jim will full send it with the diffuser in goes the smoke in goes the flashes Adrian through the smoke Jim up he goes will try and stick the diffuser oh brilliant from secret at their brilliant best. execution secret at their best right there we said they were cooking something and it turned out to be a Michelin meal demo what a performance. We had everybody working in perfect harmony right there. They knew what they were going to do. And most importantly, they didn't jump the gun. We had Doom showing great patience downstairs. He's got a really difficult task there because he's just got to be ready to go at the right moment, send himself up through the hatch 
and there's not a lot he can do for his team whilst they're working on that top floor. We saw a brilliant combination. Miracle and Grubby out there. They were getting the job done. We had Adrian on the breach, just applying the right amount of pressure to Wolves there so as Mowgli couldn't just have entire free reign of the site. That's what we've seen Secret do exceptionally well this stage, bringing out problems, bringing out, oh sorry, bringing out those solutions to the problems. Nice little pocket plays that really assist them when they need it. They've won now in what is considered a primary site. They were successful last time inside a barbecue. There's a good chance to go 3-3 three, three here. Very good chance. Attackers are I honestly, I thought Wolves... Whenever they knew they had the glass, I would have thought, hey, there must be something up. They're bringing in the glass. You know, that's not a normal operator the secret will just bring. They bring it for a reason, and they usually bring that if they're trying something a little bit creative uh, and certainly a little bit something that we might not be ready for. So we have to be ready for almost everything and be ready for those quick opportunities. And even, you know, Bibi should have realized there's nobody knocking on his door, nobody over towards his side of the map. Yeah. You know, I thought, I thought Secret made it very obvious from my perspective, but Wolves just didn't pick up on it. I guess Wolves thought they were just stalling out or just trying to find a problem, maybe thinking they didn't have the right tools for the job, but whatever it was, it has worked really well. Bibu, fortunate that the two brow is in play and P4 is going to be able to dis deny that wall for a time, but Bibu isn't going to have time to get the bandit battery back on. Deadshot is going to continue the success that Wolves have seen in that opening pick and in position to take Grubby down. And of course, Leaves a few things that are going to go unchecked, most notably the universal that Lion has got. Oh, great backstab from Mowgli as well. Usually it's June being slippy, but in this instance, it was Mowgli. Adrian gets himself out of there, deals about half damage onto Mowgli, but isn't able to land the finishing blow. Yeah, unfortunate there. You can see that June was just hoping to walk into sight, take that challenge against Shinka. That's... Mowgli not having any of it here today. And Secret, look at those. They're on a stand still. Certainly teeing up to be a 4-2 half here for Wolves, which again isn't the end of the world for Secret. We've seen them battle back before. And, well, I mean, if you look at Wolves' history on the tack this season, there is certainly a, a good case that, you know, Secret can still win this game in regular time if Wolves just aren't up to snuff on their attacks on Skyscraper. Miracle, yet to get a kill. Can this speed around to at least get himself on the board? Adrian by himself. And so is Savage. All three players from Secret. All away from each other. So no real option for refrag. Adrian maybe looking to go downstairs and try and revive Savage. Which I'm shocked that Savage is even in position to get revived. Nobody from Wolves is wanting to pounce on that opportunity. Just want to shut up shop and hold it down. Don't give Secret an inch into this round. Wolves showing really good discipline right now. It'd be so easy to try and flood and overwhelm these players, but don't want to give anybody a one versus one. Bibu, even now being cautious, taking the engagement onto Miracle. Adrian is going to find one on P4. He's in the heart of the bomb site here, but what can he do? There's still Vert to worry about. Throws a couple of smokes, maybe looks to try and get a plan down, but we're dead shut, shut and Savage and only eight seconds left. It's not going to be easy. Mowgli, he drops the hatch and pretty much lands on Adrian's head. Bit of a disaster round there from Secret, especially given the coordination that they showed in round number five. To see round number six play out in that fashion, almost a little bit disappointing, but Wolves there applying very good pressure and keeping good hold of that top floor. Good job from Wolves, not wanting to overextend themselves, just sit back and let Secret beat themselves. Now we see the side switch. And things you would hope will get a little bit easier for Seeker and a little bit harder for Wolves. One thing you have to be mindful of, of course, is Wolves still have, you know, strong operators like your Ying still up that they could use and abuse. But it's, you know, still doable for both sides. Just, I think this this next round will give us a good indicator onto all these. See how Wolves are setting up for their attacks and what their style is and what their plan is going up against Secret. Certainly Secret have been a team where they have really went a lot for the kind of backstabs on, on Skyscraper. You know, we, we've seen them really abuse Shaiko on this map whenever they know that Shaiko only uses their jabs for himself and won't really use it for fight yeah. protection. That was and 
you know, and uh, stuff like that, Secret will study you in depth and see your weaknesses and abuse that. Yeah. You've got some really slippy players on Secret. That's something that you've got to you've got to give a, a lot of credit to. And if your flanks are lacking, they will find the gaps. So expect to see a little bit of that when we get on Reloaded. into things. Moldy so far having a cracking game, seven and three. Oh, we've Edge got Shaco in person here. Six and two. I mean, Bibu is Shaco cosplay right now. Three air jabs out on Black Balcony and flanks galore. Please not. I mean, you know, we saw it and <laughs> a carbon copy of it. When BDS attacked into this map against Secret, we don't want to be seeing it again. But of course, there's, there's still drones and there's still things of that nature to get the flanks done as well. Savage. Now, plenty of info up on his heads up display. He can call out that. He knows that someone's going to be there. Maybe even go for the run out if he sees Bibu hop back on his drone. All quiet. As it stands, neither of her team taking their claws into each other. I say that, though, as Mowgli opens up with the first pick. P4 also takes a lot of damage, and Mowgli tries to run into the heart of the site. But Miracle finally gets his kill, and he's on the board, but Deadshot is there with the refrag, and back again. It goes back and forth. Grubby on to Deadshot. Will there be any more kills in the next coming seconds? It looks to be a little bit of more of a quiet pace now, as... They do not wanting to move until P4 and Co are ready. Shinka has the diffuser in hand, but right now for Wolves, they're not in a good position to get that diffuser planted. Adrian now will walk out Geisha alongside Joom. They're both working in tandem with each other. P4 doesn't know which way to look and neither does Joom. He gets shot in the back. Will drop the hatch, leaves Grubby all by himself upstairs. He's inside of drum. But Goo minds to help him out. Still a minute to go. Plenty of time for Wolves. Not a great spot, really, considering Secret had a reasonable moment of an advantage there. Grubby just on the other side of the wall and Bibu trying to push himself down long here. Smoke is going to provide a good bit of cover. Well, P4's been allowed to get into the site here and he's not careful. They're going to start to get this plan down, but Grubby finds himself warm. P4, he might have the diffuser, but... He knows better than to just try and lay the plant down and hope for the best. Rotates himself back into Geisha. It's tense stuff, this. Doom, he's managed to rotate remaining. to the top of these black stairs and is going to be in position to pounce yeah, almost certainly. This crossfire is getting better and better the further P4 moves down the corridor. Doom dips himself out, keeps himself alive. You can plant if you like, but Grubby, he's going to see that you don't. Well played then from Grubby. He got left in a bit of hot water navigated it very well indeed wow i mean what, what do you say it's uh it's one of them where it could have went either which way you know fine fine margins that you had um you, look you look at wolves i would say that maybe they could have worked a little bit better there as they were trying to push in you know Mowgli just going into the bomb site by himself what's that all about you know maybe wait for his team to be in position you know people were struggling to to kind of get control of that Geisha you know he took a lot of HP for it uh but maybe Mowgli got a kill and he thought I'll just play but well, he gets a little bit too carried away he kind of plays off that energy of himself and yeah gets uh punished for it but but subtle doom and gloom for wolves still leading at the moment that's a tough bomb site you know generally you'd be looking at your kitchen barbecues that's the bomb sites that you would like to win but even off this you know secret they flawless this this bomb site earlier so why can't wolves no reason at all wolves just finding their feet on the attacks here it maybe takes at least what it took last round and it maybe takes this round as well well, this is the game that we were expecting between these two. No punches held at all. Savage. Thinks about a bit of early aggression. If anything, it just gives Wolves something else to check on their route into the building. Take a look at the lineup. Wolves aren't leaving anything to chance here. They've got the Thatcher. They've got double hard breach. They've got everything they need to try and get these walls open. And it in position to trick though so Shinka will just need a bit more support there if he wants to open that VIP wall Wall's getting opened Adrian having a tough time and you cuts from below and this may be where the buck ban is 
maybe a big thing for secret you know it doesn't allow walls to get in downstairs towards that lobby and start ripping up the floor and beneath them so they've had to i suppose probably opt for bringing in the sophia instead to do that kind of job to rip open the bandit triggers if they do try their hand this is risky though from doom will be primed and ready to swing onto the window but dead shot as we can see is going to be prone and means doom can't see him and that wall looks to be getting opened up and it will successfully miracle cannot get that bandit trick off so wolves a good start for them we said they brought all the tools that they needed and they showed it just exactly there grubby trying to open up a bit of a line of sight there and deals with the drone on the way p4 can choose to go through the castle barricade he's got a breach and charge he can choose to open up the wall he's got the ability to do that as well we're actually gonna go for a hella aggressive run out here grubby he takes the ball by the horns he keeps himself alive but at what cost eventually shut down there by Mowgli. miracle he picks up two shinka able to trade him on out three versus two now look at the position that mogli has got himself in shinka he's gonna be on the breach call potentially to come out worried about the maestro evil eye camera as well Drone look to try and gather a bit more information here as he has two drones in pocket and he's able to throw out a couple there just to see if there's anything that his team can give him of course the call there is going to stop anyone from being on that maestro camera but they should know where he's going shinka now going to try and get this plan down june from below he's got the info is he able to land the shots? No, he's not. Savage. He's taking Shinka down, but the plant has already been confirmed. Mowgli, more like he was in the zone there for a second, but couldn't land onto Savage. Plenty of time to disable that planted diffuser. We're going to level up four rounds apiece. Jim's happy. I can never make mine look that neat. And the thing is, his facial expression of his camera would not tell you he's happy but he'll go and, and make the, the smiley face in the game. Does that look like a happy man to you? I mean, Doom is, is a man of few emotions, I think. Yeah, yeah. He, he is like the... He's like the counterpart to Oscar. That's what he's like. Oh, Oscar was quite... Oscar was quite sort of... Expressive today. It's, I, I mean, that, it's weird. I think it was be, maybe because of the game, you know, because it, it might you not know, be played well. And... He could have been adopted. Uh, 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 abducted. <laughs> he could have been. <laughs> I thought like, you would say night. adopted then. <laughs> adopted. Uh, Some sort of aliens come in, morphed yeah. into. Yeah. Maybe it's an alien morph situation. Skinwalker. That sounds creepy. I always hate that term, skinwalker. Just doesn't. It sounds horrible. Natural. No. Okay, someone walking in skin. Ugh. I mean, it's what we do every day when we walk, right? No, stop it. it. Sounds pretty normal. Stop it. Stop it. Four rounds apiece here as we enter round number nine. Ten seconds to I'm search. glad that this game's living up to expectation. Mm -hmm. The pressure Five seconds left is really on Wolves now because Secret were able to pick up a round over in the office Attack side. Now it's by no means the end of, you know, Wolves' is attacking portion yet we you know we, the only way we switch it around now is we get to an overtime but wolves have not been successful there yet secret was successful on their second attempt attacking into office and exhibition and they were also successful downstairs on their first attempt attacking kitchen barbecue so wolves need to pick up a round somewhere on the attack here if they want to try and stay in this thing and this is a really good opportunity for them to do it they aren't bringing anything too fancy it's a very standard lineup you're not looking at anything and thinking that it's got a, a very specific pur purpose obviously you've got the nomad for the flanks you've got the capital for that utility you've got the hot and soft breach in the ash you've got the hard breach in the ace and you've got the, uh, the twitch mainly because twitch is pretty good uh, and of course you've got the ability to get rid of those shock drones as well so unlike previous where we'd see an amari or a glass and get excited over this or that we're just going for something Plain and simple here. They want to take control of that top floor and then execute onto the site. That's the best way to do it is get control of Geisha. You have the hatch. And obviously, you have the hatch. You can try and plant in towards kitchen. Best way to go for it. But as we know, defenders will be fighting tooth and nail to stay on top and see how long they can stay upstairs into said Geisha. Walls. Taking their time at the moment. Got the wall open. And the twitch in as well to see if maybe he can take down some utility, but 
There's a whole lot. A couple of goo mines, but that's really it. And the bullet press was the Fenrir's as well. Probably try and get the Fenrir's in. Depends if they're activated or not, of course. Maybe. And he goes. There's the beeper. Gives himself away. Now they know Activate that somebody's going to be knocking on that on that doorway. Another goo mine there for safety, but Bibby surely heard that and can destroy that with ease. Right now, for, for Wolves, they're just looking for a pick, but Secret are just giving them... They're not giving them it. Secret what is Mowgli doing? Look, he all he's trying to do is get that pick to open up the site, but whenever Secret already knows that, so that's always what Mowgli's going to try and do. Mowgli's always going to try and be the star of the show for Wolves. If you just sit passive, play your crossfires, bring the traps in, bring the information, you neutralize Mowgli, and we know if you can shut down Mowgli, you shut down a lot of what Wolves want to do in the game. You really do, and you can see the stall out that's come off the back of that now as well. Got P4, he's going to be throwing in some fire just into Geisha, but Miracle able to keep himself pretty safe, tucked out of the way of that, BB. Patience will pay off. Savage eventually gives himself up there. Boo Boo stayed there for the whole damn round. But for what? One kill? Not really worth it. Doom, two kills on the round. Adrian to close things out. Secret. They know they don't have to move the feet. They know they just have to sit back in those power positions and let the game come to them. My goodness. Just secret. They've got the script for Wolves and the ideas that Wolves want to try and go for, and they are countering them to a T. Wolves not in a great shape right now as that lead that they had has got away from them. It has slipped out of their hands. And they will take the time out and see what they can do differently to go up against Secret. Maybe they might try to go for the pocket plays that work well for Secret just to cheese around. I mean, that's one thing. A lot of the times where we see Secret on, I would say, the less favored side, they have a lot of creative ways just to cheese a round. Just one single round. They'll never do the strat again, but as long as they can get them that round to set them up in that game to win that game. And at the end of the day, they've done it quite a few times, I would say, this stage. But they have reaped the rewards for it because they are on the cusp. If they win this game, they will be second place. And for them, getting top two, it's paid off. It's really paid off for them. Well, secret 5-4 right now, as you say, they've had a great turnaround since getting on the defense. Wolves are going to start to worry a little bit this is where the pressure really starts to mount have secret done the hard work in the first part of the game by getting two attacking rounds and have wolves now got the hard job to do in the later half of the game by winning a couple of attacking rounds really does come down to that 10 seconds to insertion to be inside t and karaoke five seconds left before insertion. i don't think that secret are going to have too much to worry about over here a lot depends on of course, the way that those impact operators are used. You look toward the yin, you look toward the bees. Only secondary hard breach as well being brought here by wolves. That could make things a little bit more complicated, especially if you go for a full across clear. Do you have things like mute jammers to consider, but I'm sure that they will work their way around that. Wolves are going to be bringing in the heavy lifters bringing in the Ying and the Grim. See if they can just flood the site. And that honestly should be the idea. You know, this kind of split push theory where they're trying to have these backstabbers. I would just like to see the Wolves just sweep from one side and just completely dump every last bit of utility that they have into Geisha, in towards Karaoke, in towards Top Black. And just try and focus and get that diffuser down. That should really be the premise because we just haven't seen that enough. I don't think of Wolves as prioritizing that diffuser and trying to get that down yeah it hasn't been a focus at all has it to get that plant down ruby is gonna come head to head down here just outside a reception doesn't want to take the challenge though he knows that he's gonna get a bit more value out of himself than that savage he's happy to land on top of mowgli though p4 he's gonna try and push through and pick up anything downstairs miracle seeing a bit of heat in geisha Dokubi call comes through. He's going to run toward that Mute Jammer. P4 trying to play aggressive here, but it's going to come to nothing. 
Jim there. Happy to take him down and happy to stay in place as well. We can hear the candelas going off, but what good's that, Bebo, if your team are falling on the ground floor? Oh, Wolves. Just hasn't worked again. You know, Mowgli is really stagnant, hasn't he? Only since those first couple of attack rounds seems to be the pass free. He just hasn't really been there. And that's always the issue. If Mowgli just can't get going or he stalls out, then who else is going to be there to pick up the pieces? For a, a big majority, it has been Let's Deadshot. I, I'd certainly feel this stage, it's, he's been the man to watch. Where if Mowgli isn't there, Deadshot certainly has been. He's going to need to show up now as he's going to be up against these rumors downstairs. Jim will toss that C4 and does get killed by Shinka. Through the walls. It's taken down. At least that's one kill back. But still, four more players for Secret remain. 30 seconds to go, Ollie. This ain't looking good. I was going to say, look at the time. You know, you might have been able to kill Jim downstairs, but look at what he's been able to do. He's just soaked up all of the round almost. And now you're executing with 15 seconds to go. Candela's going to get sent out. Bibu has the diffuser. He needs to start thinking about hopping himself in, though. Miracle, he's going to be in the hot seat here. Bibu able to find one. Gumine going to slow him down. He might have enough time to press F. Zero, zero on the clock. And he gets it down, but it means nothing. Agent with two. Secret, they continue here against Wolves. Well, what do you say? Just secret. They just know exactly what Wolves are going to do at all times. You know, Wolves have now tried that approach where they've went for, you know, the flash play. They've tried to bring in the end. They've tried to bring in the Grim, but it just, it has not worked for them. They've already used their timeout. It just looks as though this team is just out of options. You know, it feels like that same Wolves that we seen all the way back, you know, really take your mind back to that first play day where they went up against ITB and they lost every attack that they had against ITB. They had, they lost six attacks. And that's what it feels like. Exactly the same story for Wolves. They just cannot attack. That week one Wolves is back again. Match and second place point here now for Secret. They're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves here. There were a couple of doubters moving Ten into this. Left. Maybe not doubters, maybe just people that were saying, ah, you know, why have they chosen Skyscraper and, you know, chose, uh, knowing they were going to be attacking first. But realistically, they were confident in their own ability to attack. We often say all you need is one or two rounds on the attack on Sky and the rest is done on the defense. And so far that has rung true here tonight. Wolves unable to find any success on the attack inside. And they're now leaving themselves with a very fine margin to get the job done. Oh, my. great run out there. Savage match point run out onto Bibu. Even manages to get himself out of trouble from Deadshot as well. Mowgli will be there to trade it though. Salt in the wounds, lemon in the wounds. Honestly, it's just everything that Secret can do to inflict even more damage to this very weakened Wolves team right now. They're doing so. I mean, great work being able to eliminate the Sophia, which, hey, look, if you're the bandit, that's a that's one of the, the issues that you would have to go up against if you're trying to bandit trick that single wall uh, towards VIP. So with that being taken down, you know, the, the bandit is going to be pretty strong now in this scenario. So Wolves, they're going to have to do it with probably a, a few walls being left reinforced up. Deadshot does have the Deimos in hand, but... What's he going to be able to do from below? Maybe look for a wall bang or a floor bang, should I say, if he can get somebody caught in the scanner. I'm surprised he isn't maybe going to go for Savage. You know, that would make a lot more sense, wouldn't it? You know, try and find this roamer. Yeah, absolutely. I think Savage, he knows that he's getting pinned a little bit here. We're going to start to see a bit of a sight execute come through, at least. We're going to see the Candela zoom through. P4 gets himself through the hatch. A miracle! He's caught unaware! P4 is going to start to get that plan down. Grubby picks at one. Dead shot from below. Adrian not in position to deny that. No C4 in hand and a plant confirmed. Secret zone attack has worked against them here. It's a similar scenario with the Amaru up through the hatch. And Grubby now tracked by Deimos. Adrian is going to get down there from Sword's window and finished off. And well, it was about putting a head on that chicken and it was P4 from below with the vert that was able to do just exactly that. Wolves, 
He stops Secret from, from converting. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, what, Se what Secret did. You know, they were able to kind of use the glass to create the chaos and allow that cover for that Amari coming in. For Wolves, they were able to excel with the Ying. You know, Ying created the same thing where it's just there as a distraction to get that Amari up the hatch. You know, this time though, I look at Secret Samari, the Doom did very little apart from, you know, get the diffuser down, but you know, that Amari was able to get kills as well. So Wolves certainly I think didn't they didn't set up as I would say as clean as what Secret did, but it's still the same outcome. They still get that round win. It was a bit scrappy, wasn't it? I think something that impresses me when we see Secret sort of pulling those those plays off is it's usually very clean. Um, Wolves there, it was a little bit more by the seat of the pants, you know, there, there was there was a guy stood pretty much on the hatch inside of office, for goodness sake. So you're always going to have uh, a little bit of a jump scare when you get up there if you don't know that that's going to be waiting for you. But they got the job done nonetheless. They picked up one round on the attack here. Technical pause. It always come at a, a bad time. I mean, it, there's no good time for a technical pause, but at this point, in this fixture, not a good time at all. So we do apologize for that. We will be working to get everybody back inside of the lobby. For the time being, we are left with uh, what we've got, and that is currently player cams, sometimes out of focus, sometimes in focus, sometimes a bit dark, you know, nothing really, nothing special in the player cams here, aside from the players themselves. Obviously the players are all special in their own way, but we don't have a, an extravagant monster arm or uh, sort of film set background like we've seen previously tonight demo film set <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. certainly a little bit more pain a lot of posters there from chinka as well but this is you know this is this is scary you know this is a, a scary round going into it determines the the ot of course and for Secret, you know, a little bit of a, a wobble there almost, you know, to see them lose a round to their own their own strat, more or less. Yeah. A little bit surprising. They're probably thinking, how did we fall for that? You know? But uh, whenever the, the wool gets pulled under your eyes, it, it happens to the best of you. It's just that waiting game. For Wolves, it's just trying to get back into, you know, that that glory of, of what wolves are in in their own region you know as a european side they've been the most consistent i think for the past two years you know no one no one i think can contest that that team's always in that mix you know being able was it seven or eight international events in a row uh you know great prestige of a side and whenever they came into this season they started you know very poor and honestly the fact that we're even sitting in a position where wolves still have a chance to get into that second place spot absolutely incredible you know yeah. from, from where they were you know nobody would have called that but i would agree even, i mean same could be said for secret a team which was just mediocre at best was always down you know scrapping away trying to you know stay out of the bottom two spots almost for for a big period of time to see them where they are now and push to to the heights that they are yeah you know, both teams just the stories that they have it's you wouldn't have called this at the start of the season you wouldn't have no you really wouldn't can i interest you in some statistics demo uh, maybe. I believe we've got some statistics. I believe we've got something that we can look over for the time being. Now, don't panic. This is usually used as a match summary graphic. However, we have not finished the match just yet. It is 6-5 in favor of Secret. But just to give everyone a bit of a refresher, we have got the scoreboard with all of the relevant information available here now. So, Demo, it's almost like we're back on the desk as we were only a couple of years ago back in the Paris studio. But we can see that, I mean, there's, there's a lot of players that are having good games. We've got Mowgli. He's always going to be a standout if Wolves are going toe-to-toe -to -toe inside of a fixture. Currently 12-7, and seven, nearly double positive. He's had a couple of flaky moments, but on the whole, he has kept Wolves in this one. On the flip side, someone that we questioned almost at the start of the game. He went 0-2 in the first two rounds and then had an explosive round on the Monty. We've got Savage on that other side of the coin the secret currently top of the pops three entries as well um, which of course is one of the more important stats that we like to track secret doing exceptionally well on the entry this evening yeah uh, obviously you have to look at a player like like uh, savage you know he's been the longest player um 
you know, in, in that team, you know, he joined all the way back in what must have been 2022, I want to say, you know, around that time where he was almost like a rookie coming up. And, you know, just to kind of, I suppose, take your attention back all the way to 2022 and just, you know, the changes that you've seen with Secret, you know, some of the players that, that he was teaming with, you know, way, way back. I think it was in stage, was it stage two, I believe they, they picked him up for. You know, he was teaming with the likes of Saves, Keenan, Slevin, Kendrew, you know, Titan was the head coach. Secrets have seen a lot of changes, a big transformation, but he is he's the common factor. He's always been there. You know, he is almost now a senior player in this side. You know, people may look at him as, oh, he was a rookie, but nah, I think he's a senior leader in this team now. He really is. Have you got like of Adrian, who's yeah. young gun? Uh, you know, Jum, Grubby as well, I would say, are, are young guns as well. You know, he's, he he's has to be that leader. He has to be that, that senior player. Just to reiterate the stakes as well, we've been talking about how this is a... Uh, oh, we've got a replay from the, the la one of the last rounds we saw, actually. This was the hop up through the hatch. We, we did see it played. Uh, played it. Oh, we're back into the game just like that. Maybe we needed to see the replay to get ourselves back into the uh, into the actual game. So this is going to be live. We are here. Team Secret 6. Wolves currently 5. Wolves fighting for this overtime right now. Now, if this game does go to an overtime, it doesn't matter. Um, mainly due to round difference and things like that. There, there's no way that um, either of these two teams can be caught out. Um, of course, they would be on the same point as Into the Breach. Into the Breach currently on 15 points, as both of these two teams are on 13. So an overtime win would give you two points. But the round differential, which is our first tiebreaker, is uh, is more favorable for both Wolves and Secret. So it uh, it wouldn't matter too much there either. So a true fight out here and in the next two and a half minutes or so, we will find out if we're going to an OT or not. Bomb detected. Well, on the line, Secret start the season very well. Let's see if they can end it equally as well. They have the defense. Talked about it before how strong this side is on the skyscraper, of course. And whenever you're against a team like Wolves, who just haven't been up to scratch with their attacks as of late, it's a good opportunity for Secret being able to win those two attacks on their attack in half. Set them up very nicely, of course. So, Wolves, what are they going to do? It seems to be a very, again, a very tame lineup. You know, used to what we've been seeing mostly from them, but it is a bit of a worry. You know, the, the round that they had success on, it was a crazy lineup. You know, they oh, didn't yeah. use the round. Yeah, I was going to say exactly the same demo. The, the, some, two of the rounds that we've seen won by the attackers, out of the three we've seen won in this game, have been through, you know, big impact operators being brought. So you bring a very samey lineup and you do oh, worry dear. a little bit. Opening pick onto dead shot there. The dog could be gone. Obviously, the dog could be call and the ability to lock players out of cameras is going to be lost here. Miracle. Dancing with fire inside a Geisha. He's got a couple of teammates near him, though. He's not going to be too worried about getting traded here. That should almost be a guarantee with the proximity that Savage is to him. And of course, Savage trying to help him keep that wall and Geisha closed. Oh dear, Mowgli's at it again. He's just trying to walk in by himself and be the hero. But it ends up, he's the villain. Ollie, is that must be what, the third, fourth time we've seen him do that? And just nobody's there Frag for the refrag. Out. Nobody is there to, to help him out and give him a hand just because he's not waiting for his teammate to do so. It's very unfortunate to see Wolves just toss it away now. A secret are in prime position, a minute left. Everybody alive for secret. Very little map control as well for Wolves. They've got themselves into Geisha, and that's really it. They've taken about 10% of the map. You know, that that's really all they have. Adrian's still got info with the Echo Cam. We will get shot, though, but they see who the Fermite is. He'll be a, a betting man to say that, yeah, he's probably going to have the Diffuser, so you know it's going to be a Kitchen Drop, and all Secret you need to do is wait for that Kitchen Drop to come in, use their utility, use their denial. You have the Echo, you have the C4s. It's only going to be a matter of time. Time, something that we are running out of here. 14 seconds on the clock. Shinka goes for the drop. Grubby takes him down. Second kill on the round. P4 is going to find himself one before he too is forced to make that drop. And with Ibu falling, that's the diffuser. And there's nothing left to find. Who better than Adrian to pick up that final kill? A rookie on this roster at the start of the stage. And he has proved himself alongside his teammates throughout stage one here of EUL. 
secret. They can hold their heads high. They're going to walk away with second place. Yeah, I'll credit the secret. They have been extremely consistent throughout this stage. I've been very impressed with them. I think they've just came leaps and bounds from where they were, uh, you know, last stage. Yeah, all credit to them. They've been a very exciting team, a team who probably have some of the best pocket plays in the league, bar none. I think that they've done it so yeah. many times. They're smart. Uh, just they keep you on your toes. Just so exciting to watch. Really, really have enjoyed them this season. They, they genuinely are an exciting team to watch. And I think part of it is the pocket plays. They're not afraid to try things. Mm. And they really go out there and, and they expose and they, and they put themselves into that yeah. firing line with some of those plays that they do. And they're bold and brave and they don't always work. But when they do, it's wonderful. Secret, you've been a pleasure to watch so far this stage. And hopefully we will get to watch you a little bit more come the Manchester Major. Demo, that's going to do it for us here tonight. We need to send it back over to the desk. They're going to wrap everything up and go through our final standards. Thank you very much, XR Troika and Demo for the cast. And yes, a beautiful day to watch Secret and the way that they're not afraid to try something watch, but something once. Much like our analyst, Freshman. Gentlemen, what a game that we saw. It could have been flipped on its head on Skyscraper. We were expecting a banger. We set it all up with the strategies and with the players. And I think we got a good one out of our day. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought that game genuinely was excellent. Two high quality teams. Now, it's skyscraper defense, and we said the defense yeah. was absolutely so important. But the other thing that we did say, or especially what they said on the cast, I think it was Demo who alluded to it, was that Secret were comfortable attacking this map against BDS. And ultimately, what did it come down to in terms of winning this map? Attacks. Yeah. Secret were able to pull two of them off. Now, both teams actually struggled with full clear attacks across this map, as most teams do, because you've got so much map to clear, the defenders can rotate so fast. What was the key differentiating factor for me? Secret were able to pull off two direct att attacks. One onto Barbecue Kitchen using the Monty, one onto the office using the Imaru and the uh, Glass. If you could just pull a direct attack out of your bag, those little pocket plays, those set pieces, in this game, quite literally was the difference between second place in the league and fourth place in the league. It was. And I mean, if we look at that office attack that you just mentioned, we're looking at small mistakes from Wolves that enables mm -hmm. that. Like, for yeah. example, the Warden peeking outside in a four versus five, into a glass. He might have not known it was a glass because, I mean, we only saw the smokes. But at the same time, why would you peek outside in a map where the hardest part of actually getting into the map is just getting in the first room? Yeah. You can get into the bathroom on the first floor. You can get into the little like the little mud room on the first floor by, by a master bedroom as well. But it's very hard to enter. So are you peeking outside when you're already down one man? That just gives away the round. And those small mistakes comes back to bite them. You, you were in a perfect position, basically stuck between two indestructible walls that yep. protects you. You're a warden. You're supposed to just hold sight and wait until that push. And then you are lost in that position. It's unfortunate. And there's those small things where in the moment, you can judge them now with, of, of course, hindsight. But in the moment itself, maybe that seemed like the best judgment. Yeah, and if he if he rinses the glass off that angle, obviously we're saying it's the best play as well. Yeah, but, he would have. Yeah, it's a very small criticism. Sure. Absolutely. But yeah, but it's what skyscraper comes down to because of how defender favorite it is. It's mm. all those small mistakes that the defenders make, all those small individual decisions. They need to be correct because losing that one extra attack, well, defense didn't go so well. Well, let's highlight one player from Team Secret. It is Savage. Calmer MVP of our match. If anything, Savage has been performing excellently through this stage. But what's him looking like in this? So club, yeah? Savage is an interesting character here because he's not only the one who's been top fragging this game, he's also one of the leadership personalities within this team. And seeing how he's been able to transform this, because in the end, all these changes come from the leadership figures within the team. What he's been able to build this stage he should be proud of himself for achieving because a team that goes into second place and does it very convincingly and they play very, very good siege with mastering both tempo, speed, all of that stuff and just playing different ways of attacking and defending, they have done something really good and I'm very impressed with them. Thank you very much, Fabian. And that is, of course, Team Secret, our victors from this match. And standing by is their very own coach. Let's be on Twister calling all the way. I guess I'm not even sure where Twister is. Twister, hello. How are you doing? Where are you, where are you calling in from now? 
<laughs> How are you, Mr. Lush? I'm back home. I'm on my laptop uh, camera. That's why it's a little ah. bit blur. But uh, just making sure that it's very, very hot here in Brazil right now. So ah. that's probably why. Understandable. Well, Twister, I don't think it's just the heat in Brazil that is doing the work here on the camera. You're in front of it after all. Anyways, congratulations on the win. Fresh, any details you would like to ask about? Yeah, I've got a, a little uh, quick question, Twister, or a couple for you, I would say. Um, first and foremost, um, what was the key difference for you today? Because obviously it was a high stakes game today going into Wolves. You knew you had to pull out all of the stops. So I guess, first of all, talk me through the map, why you chose to go to Skyscraper. And then what do you think was the key difference for your team in terms of get, achieving the victory? I do believe like uh, the key for us was the calm that we were able to keep through the game, being able to just uh, follow our game plan, being able to deal with the adversities and whatever Wolves were being able to bring to us. This is a big shout out for Savage and for all the players being able to adapt into the small stuff that were being showed up. I think it was... I don't know. I have nothing else to say than the players just followed the game plan. They were being able to adapt into the small stuff that Wolves brought and we grabbed the win, just playing better. Well, now the big challenge is going from best of one to best of three in playoffs. How do you feel? You know, are you ready for that? Do you think that there's anything that needs to be changed up already? You have more time than most other teams to work on things. Well, as uh, you guys were saying before as well, like uh, we are bringing a lot of different and new strats this season. So now that it's playoffs, it's time to change everything again and being, bring different stuff to surprise the other teams that we'll be playing against. But also, I do believe like the group uh, just deserved this big shout out. You know, I came here today because they are too humble to speak about that. But Savage is doing great as an IGL has been able to lead the team quite well. Adrian is outperforming pretty much everyone, being his rookie season. Joom, Groovy, and Miracle as well, keeping up the consistency into the comms, being able to bring the team into this high level. I couldn't ask for more from them. I'm just excited for the playoffs. I actually I actually owe you a little bit of an apology as well, Marlon, um, about Adrian, because we had a nice conversation in Brazil about him. Um, but actually, just talk us through that. So obviously, you've picked up Adrian. Um, how much, like I suppose, calling does he do behind Savage? Because obviously, Savage being the IGL, um, how does that dynamic work? And how has he evolved into that role? Well, we basically work into a two kind of calling system. Savage is the main one. He basically deals with everything inside of the game, everything that is needed. He's doing that, which I think it's crazy for one person to do. I never saw one person doing that uh, before. But uh, Adrian basically picks up everything that goes through. So once we need to organize something that's not being organized, once we need a countdown to do a push, once we need like a side idea, uh, he's being able to call. So I'm actually very impressed of how how much uh, good eye he has for the game since being his first season. You know, I just think like the only moment that he do his mistakes is once uh, he's actually afraid of doing the calls because his call is actually great. And was are that, actually great. Was that something, so when you picked him up, was that something that you expected that he had or is that something that you just kind of found out that he had as the the, I suppose the trials and the scrims went on. No, well, actually, I wasn't expecting that much. I was expecting a youngster that would be able to bring gun power and bring smartness and a good vibe for the team. And it was a good surprise because uh, he's been able to show that uh, he's more of a complete player than we ever thought about. We were into the uh, choice between him and another player that went for another team right now. And we basically decided to bet into a young player that has a lot to be developed uh, across the season. And that's so nice that it paid off and everyone has a good vibe here and he takes along with everyone so it's been great adrian is a great player and a great person just shows that investing in the right players and the up-and-comers in europe there's a lot that can be had on the other side from underdogs dark horses and now to second place in eu league that is a massive trajectory all the way up for team secret twister would like to end it and saying something to your fans out there Sure, we'd like to thank everyone that keeps cheering for us. We started the program of Team Secret at the right bottom, like almost going for relegation. And as every program to be successful, we need time, we need the correct people. And I do think we are in the moment of uh, that we are being able to build this up right now with the people that we like, with the system that we like. Mm -hmm. And just want to thank the fans and don't forget to buy the skins, guys, the bug skin and the new one that is coming up. Ooh, all right. Very much looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Twister. Congratulations again to Team Secret. We will see you next week for more in the playoffs. But 
With that said, now done, and we know that Secret are in this position, let us recap the standings with Fabian on the desk. Go ahead. So, yeah, we already know who's in the first place, and that's BDS. And looking at them, how they played the entire season, it's not a surprise. 20 points is what they got in all over this season. And then after that, we got Secret. Actually, I looked up. What is Secret's highest standing ever in European competition? Third place. And that is 2018, six years ago. Now they managed to get the second spot. After that, we got Into the Breach, and we've got Wolves on the third and fourth spot. Fnatic and G2 will finish with them into the playoffs. And just underneath that, we have Enz, Virtus Pro, and Wild at the bottom three that have to go to the LCQs. Yeah, they'll have to play through uh, LCQs. And of course, for even lower than that, they'll have to play through open qualifiers yeah. to get all the way to LCQs. It is a much longer road, but one we expect at least these teams being in the EUL caliber to actually be decently successful at, though. From our standings, we'll look at our bracket because playoffs start tomorrow. Jumping directly into best of threes and eliminations. Jack, please guide me through this because it seems confusing at first, but it's actually quite simple, is it not? Yeah, it's fairly simple. Is we've essentially got two halves of a of a different bracket here. So we've got Into the Breach will play against G2, and then Wolves against Fnatic. Those will be the games tomorrow. However, Into the Breach versus G2 will flow. The winner of that will play against Team Secret to potentially make the Manchester Major. Then on the bottom half of that bracket, Wolves will play Fnatic. The winner of that will then go and play against BDS. Obviously, BDS absolutely slapped mm -hmm. both Wolves and Fnatic in the regular stage. So that's what Fnatic got for winning at least one round today. And basically, the winner of those games in the middle of your screen will qualify as the first and second seed at the Major. If you lose in those semi-final games, you will have one more shot in the third place match to qualify for the major, and that will be next week. And that's why we were emphasizing being in the top two in EUL, because it means you have an extra life and you already skip one game. So it just means you need to win one best of three. Though at this level, winning a best of three can be much tougher than you might think just at the start of it. But also for the two teams that get eliminated in the very beginning of the bracket in the quarterfinal, it is not done for them because they'll be qualified directly into the last chance yep. qualifiers, will be played in a few weeks, and they will play there, and we'll see if they can make it because there will be one more spot for EU to play, but that will be into phase one, which is you know, our open group with everybody coming from all over the world. Whereas think about it you know, as legends and challengers. You got legends that are already the top in their region, whereas the challengers are coming in that barely made it through in last chance qualifiers, and they duke it out to get into the legend stage. But tomorrow, it's actually quite simple. Two games, but two best of three. So expect longer matches, fingers crossed. ITB into the breach versus G2 and Fnatic versus Wolves are quarterfinals. Winner of this game advances and there will be one win away from the Manchester Major. Fabian, a major achievement for these. G2 have also barely scraped by off of ITB. They get to face them for some sort of ironic retribution. Yeah, that game is going to be absolutely insane. That, that they, first of all, into the breach made it so that G2 made it through. And then also G2 haven't looked good. So they are very lucky they didn't have to play today because they can just watch that game and then watch through all of the stuff that they needed to. They could have changed as much as they wanted to the last week. Mm -hmm. And now they're making it through and they could have an entire new strat book for all we know. And into the beach Another one? can't... Well, first of all, maybe the first one because <laughs> it looked really messy this stage. But yeah, they could have changed everything that they want to. That's just how this game works because if you have a good enough team, anything can change in a second. Fnatic Wolves. Fnatic Wolves, yeah, that's a curious one as yeah. well because I think both teams hit form towards yeah. the back end of the stage. However, when they went head to head, Fnatic looked, it was that consulate game, do you remember? Fnatic awful. looked absolutely, <laughs> absolutely awful yeah. against Wolves. Um, and yeah, the Wolves obviously had a few a few skeletons today going up against Secret. So I think both teams obviously losing today as much as they are in, I suppose, the, the winner's bracket, the upper bracket, whatever it is. Um, there's definitely, I think that's the one in my mind that there's a few more question marks over. Mm -hmm. And it's, to be honest, both of the games are absolutely wide open. Because even the ITB G2 one, you could say ITB are the favorites on form and the fact they beat G2. But G2 come alive this time of year. They always this do. This time of the stage. Congratulations for making the matches. Yeah, that's for what I mean. G2. Right, they, they, yeah. hot take. <laughs> they won it. Hot take. G2 will make the major. No, I said it to you in the green room. Yeah, I think know. that if they make it through, they, they will find their own way to do it. Because it's like, you know what G2 are like? It's like, enough of this shit. Like, let's just focus. 
Let's focus up. It's playoffs. Let's win the best of threes and let's go to the major. I, I think what you meant was enough of this doo doo. Enough of this doo doo. No, that he's in wild. <laughs> He's already been eliminated from the yeah. winning. Fair enough. We guarantee it, don't we? Do we guarantee it? Yeah. Yeah, we guarantee it. Congrats, G2. You're making the major. Fair enough. Freshman, would they win the entire thing or would it be Talon? Oh, they're going to win the major too, yeah. <laughs> what? Talon second? Sorry, PSG yeah. Talon second. No, Misa said on the Korean broadcast, our goal for our first ever major appearance is going to be fourth place or third place. Uh, I don't know if about that, but uh, it's like it's confidence, but G2 will win it. Well. Milos, That's all I know. Milos just called you a legend because he said the teams that are in phase two are the legends. And Fresh, the there's only one person in the world who's won three hammers. I am already a legend. Rest, man. Why, are you jealous you... because you got to relegate the ones? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, gents. Let's cool it down here for a moment. I think I've been to more event finals than both of you combined. Combined? Have you won any? Let's... Doesn't matter. Combined, we've got three six invitationals and one EUL relegation. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, on that bombshell, thank you very much for watching today. It's been an absolute pleasure to be back here with the entire family at EUL. Thank you all for watching. We will see you tomorrow for playoffs. Until then, take care. We love you. Good night.